Yes, uh, second on the left. Well, um, I should be there about one o'clock, but the buses are very unpredictable on a Sunday. <laughs> All right, Mr. Burford, uh, I look forward to seeing you. Bye now. Hello, Hayley, what are you doing here? I thought I'd work on costumes where I had a bit more room. What are you doing here? I was just making a phone call. I can see that. You too? One of the volunteers. It's nothing important. So why didn't you ring him from the flat? No reason. Because you don't want me to know who you're talking to. Oh, don't be silly. Don't lie to me, Roy Cropper. I can read you like a book. All right, I don't want you to know who I'm talking to. Why? Because you'll think I'm overreacting. More to the point, you'll try and stop me doing something that I feel that I have to do. Is this something to do with Fred Elliott's little performance the other night? I can't stand by and allow him to hijack the event. And you can't go against a majority vote. You're a parliamentarian. The vote was rigged. He bribed people into siding with him. Anyway, it's not just who wins that I care about. It's the way he's turning this into a farce. So you're cooking up some little plan to nobble him, are you? You heard what he said. How do you want to die? He's playing mind games with you, Roy. What gets me is all this claptrap about pageantry and pomp. He's a butcher. All he cares about is blood and guts. Not so fast. Let's have a look. It's what you ordered. Just check in. What's this? Changing the sign again? Not before time. I say not before time. Up you go. Look, I've lost count of the names that have been over that door. You've been here a long time, Betty. Ah, oh, I suppose. Compared with some that we could mention, eh? <laughs> Excuse me, Fred. Can you come in tomorrow as well? Sorry, Kev, I can't. I'm involved at that reenactment on the Red Wreck. Oh, come on, they're hardly going to miss you. We're snowed under here. Well, we've already got me a costume, so I said I'll do it. Oh, so what are you going to do? Start stripping off in the middle of a battle? Fred Elliott has promised me an important role. Reckons I'll be commander of the cavalry. Well, I'll make you commander of the tired home. Come on. Give you triple time. Sorry, Kev. I can't force you to work if you don't want to work. Good morning. You're a bit chirpy for a man who has to work Sundays, aren't you? Yep, but tomorrow I'll be in a land far, far away. What's La Mangi going to, isn't it? Yeah, sun, sangry and a lot of golf. But don't worry, you'll be having as much fun as me. Yeah, I'm trying to control this rubble, you need. <laughs> You're not going to leave him in charge, are you? Where are you going on holiday? Well, what do you expect me to do? Give you each a key so you can come and go as you please? Just been here for five minutes. That shows you the confidence I've got in him. Less is a lot, doesn't it? So, come on, spill the beans. How did it go? Hey, hey, did you know Fred's had his name put over the door? Well, he is the licensee, Betty. Yeah, but, I mean, it doesn't seem two minutes since it was changed from Dougie to Eve. Well, so what? It doesn't affect us, does it? All this chopping and changing, oh, I can't be doing with it. Well? It was good, yeah. We had a nice time. Nice? Is that it? It's all you're getting. Oh, come on, you've got to give me more to go on than that. How did the evening rate on a scale of one to ten? Bit nine and a half. Oh, I knew it. You got a real glint in your eye. All right, it was brilliant. I mean, we had a fantastic night, and he's amazing. Oh, wow. I mean, just so different from Dev, who just sort of hides behind this aura of mystique. I mean, Joe's just dead straight. You know, a real, like, decent, down to earth bloke. <gasps> oh, Roy, can you get me some shoe polish while you're out? I thought I might smear it onto peasants' costumes mm. so they don't look too new. Are you open or not? No. Especially not to the enemy. Really? Now, see, we're only enemies when we get on battlefield. After that stunt you pulled the other night, I can hardly bring myself to speak to you. I would only throw it open the debate, let the people have a say. Oh, yes, you're all for democracy as long as folk do what you want. You'd make a good feudal lord. Well, all I can say is, I hope you'll take losing tomorrow with a bit more grace. I can't wait to wipe that smile off his face. It's bringing out a very aggressive side in you, is this reenactment. Well, it is a battle. So come on out with it. What are you planning? Shh. Walls have ears. No, they don't. We're shut. 
Well, all will become clear when I get back from Bolton. B Bolton? You're going all the way to Bolton? I've a dozen costumes here I won't finish in. I thought you might give me a hand. I'll well, we'll be back by three. I'll give you a hand then. Right, you're not going to do anything stupid, are you? Promise me. Sometimes, Hayley, you have to fight fire with fire. Mum, do I have to look after him all day? What, you add up all the hours I've looked after Bethany and ask yourself that question again? I've got an idea. Why don't I come shopping with you? You'll be very bored. We're looking at carpets and furniture all day. Can I get a carpet for my room? Oh, no, we're not looking for furniture for the house, love. It's for the show flat. What's the show flat? A flat that's done up with loads of nice furniture. It's meant to help me sell the other flats. And while we're out, Todd can help you plan Bethany's party. I didn't know she was having a party. It's her birthday. She's got to have a party. We'll invite the neighbours round and you can invite your friends. It'll be fun. See you later. Bye, kids. See ya. The neighbours. I'm sorry to ring you on a Sunday, only it is something of an emergency. You're lucky I can be of help, to tell you the truth. There's usually a lot of demand at bank holidays. Yes, well, when I saw your advert in Civil War Journal, I was in two minds whether to bother ringing or not. You're in luck here. I've just had a job lot returned. Group in Ormskirk. Reenact the Battle of Malpas every year only. Well, they've all gone down with a tummy bug. Oh, what bad luck. Here, just think if that had have happened to Brereton's men in 1644, eh? Could have changed the course of the whole war. I see you have a very thorough knowledge of the Civil War, Mr Burford. It's just something I've always been interested in, particularly on the weapons side. Here, speaking of which, would you like to see what I've got? Uh, you grab a seat, I'll bring them over. All oh, right. Hiya. Hi. Uh, pint of bitter and a large scotch, please. Mm. Good night last night, wasn't it? It was, yeah. I had a great time. Well, we can do it again soon. Yeah, I'd like that. So you're going to talk to me? Or are you just going to sit here and stare at your ex and her boyfriend? I'm not staring at anyone. And would you stop calling him her boyfriend? <laughs> what does it matter to you anyway? But let it go. Move on. I have moved. I moved. I just can't help feeling... Jealous? Concerned. She deserves better than him. Well, isn't that for her to decide? No. no not if uh, it means she's going to get hurt. <laughs> Look, Dev, even if you are just looking out for her, it's still none of your business. I know that. Look, whatever you say or do, it's just going to look like you're jealous and you can't let go. You know, you're right. You're right. And I think you should be the one to tell her she's going out with a crook. I mean, yeah, no, you forget it. Come on, look, look, I'm having no part in this. Look, come on, just a friendly word in a year. It's a poisonous word. Look, anyway, she, she guess you were behind it. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's not even like I want to get back with her. Okay, far from it. If anything, I just feel... Responsible. Uh, responsible. Will you not? So stay out of it. They're all replicas, completely safe. Where do you get them? Uh, I make them in my workshop. I'm a sheet metal worker by trade. Here, yeah, this is just a hobby. <laughs> very authentic, very heavy. I do have some real muskets as well, but uh, here, I think you said you didn't have a black powder licence. Sadly not. We didn't have time to get one. I mean, it's only a small skirmish we're reenacting. Right. I mean, I had thought that it would just be hand-to-hand -hand fighting we'd be engaged in, but no, well... One wants a pike, another wants a sword. And you thought you'd steal the show by pulling out one of these here little beauties? Well, no, it's not... Well, yes, there is one particular person I'd like to bring down a peg or two. In fact, I can't wait to see his face. Put your sword down, sir! Sorry, Anne, just getting carried away. Have a cannon in the garage here if you really want to make an impact. Cannon? Roaring Meg, she's called, fires 22 explosive grenades, each weighing £10. No, no, I'll, I'll just take the musket, thank you. How much do I owe you, by the way? Uh, it's £12 a day, plus uh, you're OK with the £200 deposit. I have to charge that, otherwise they just don't come back. Oh, yes, I quite understand. Uh, I take it you are familiar with the musketeer's drill? Uh, uh, no. The postures and procedures that show you've mastered your weapon. Here, I could uh, demonstrate it, if you like. Very kind. First, I'll show you how to charge your weapon. Charge your weapon. Right. First, remove your rod. Remove your rod. Right. Take your powder and your wadding. Powder and your wadding. Load. Load. And then, ram. Ram. But, I mean, what does that exactly mean? What do you think it means? Well, I just want to get everything crystal clear. You know, no room for misunderstanding. 
But I'll tell you what, if I'm on the golf course, the mobile goes and it's you, you're not doing your job properly. That's fine. So if I need to sack somebody, I just go ahead and do it, yeah? What, do you think that's likely? Well, I'll take it as a no, then, shall I? Well, no, I mean, it's just not the sort of thing you're going to do every day. True. But what if it's something that's obviously sackable? I mean, it doesn't cut much ice if all I can say is you'll be in trouble when Mr Baldwin gets back, does it? No. No, I don't suppose it does. You see, if those girls think I'm your puppet, they're just going to run rings. Yeah, OK, OK, you made your point. I know I can run this factory, Mike. It's just I have to do it on my own terms, that's all. OK, well, when you're in charge, you do what you think fit. I tell you what, I'll even let you sit in my chair. And you'll stand by me? Back us up? As long as you don't get any daft ideas, I am your boss. You remember that? Oh, yeah. All I'm saying is, you know... I know, you don't want to work under my shadow. Right. OK, fine, fair. Good. Well, uh... I'm glad we have this little chat. What do you reckon they're talking about? <sighs> well, they're scheming. I can tell. You think? Sure. Especially new boy. He'll be coming up with brilliant money-saving ideas, you know, like, uh, paying us less. Yeah. It's like having two bold wins, not one, isn't it? Yeah, but it will be one next week, won't it? When my lad off on his holidays. Hmm. Taking a bit of a rest there, really, and they leaving him in charge. He's only known him two minutes. Anything could happen. Oh, don't, Janice. Give me ideas. I do apologise. How, how stupid of me. What must you all be thinking? Just just uh, carry on with your shopping and nobody's going to come to any harm. It, it's not a real gun, it's a replica of a 17th century musket, you see. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking part in the in the Civil War reenactment of a skirmisher. I'm on the parliamentarian side. Stay calm, everybody, up there. You all right, Nick? Nobody do anything sudden. Put the weapon down, please. Yeah, I, I was just trying to explain that it's not a real gun, it's a replica. Just put the weapon down, eh? Oh, yeah. Now kneel down on the floor with your hands in the air. Is that really necessary? Do as I say. I'm arresting you on suspicion of attempted arm robbery. Arm robbery? I only came in for shoe polish. Cherry blossom, two tins, look in the basket. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Can I pay for the shoe polish? What do you want to talk to us about? I want to talk to you about the holiday. Oh, yeah, so this absolute gorgeous bikini in the catalogue. Can you order it for me? Sophie, don't put all that salt on of your dinner, love. Well, you'll have to do it today, unless you won't get it in time for half term. Well, there's no post today, it's Sunday. Can I have a new cosy as well? I want, I want, I want. That's all I ever hear in this family. It doesn't matter how I say this to you, because you're going to hate me anyway, so I might as well just come straight out with it. We can't go on holiday. You what? But you said you promised. I know what I said. And I hate breaking my promise. It's just that I thought I was going to get more money from the insurance company than I actually got. But the letter came the other day about the cheque. I saw you open it. I know, love, but I've got to pay bills with that money. <sighs> Can't you get the money from somewhere else? Like where? Look, I know it's not fair and I feel rotten about this, but... Maybe we could go away later on in the year if we afford it. Oh, yeah. 
Look, I wish there was something I could do, Rosie, but there isn't. We don't have the money, and that's that. I'm not going to a two-year-old's party, Sarah. Don't say that. You have to. Who's the DJ? And you heard? They try to get Noddy C to do a spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. I'm only joking. I'm thinking of inviting Aidan Critchley, actually. You're joking, aren't you? No, he told me he's got some decks and everything. Well, you two obviously don't want to come, so I might ask him. Aidan Critchley wouldn't be seen dead at a two-year-old's party. But might if I ask him? Brilliant. Got the Joker here, tried to hold up the Mini Mart at Violence Road. I did nothing of the sort, he's got it all wrong. Custody Sergeant will take your details and you'll be taken to an interview room. There is a perfectly simple explanation to all this. I'm taking part in a reenactment tomorrow on the Weatherfield Red Wreck. It is part of the Jubilee celebrations. Look, you have a poster for it on your wall. Oh, my, my daughter's going to that. She's in the Bessie Street twirling kazoo band. There we are. Even if all this is true, it doesn't explain what possessed you to go into a busy store and start waving a gun around like a lunatic. I wasn't waving it around. We've got witnesses at the shop who say you pointed it at them. It might have looked that way. In fact, I was merely rodding my charge. You what? Oh, it doesn't matter. I just didn't mean to cause any distress. So the poor old beggar looking down the barrel of this gun of yours, she's just overreacting, is she? Actually, it's a musket. A 17th century musket. I don't care if it's a flaming water pistol. If it's real enough to scare people, it can be used in an attempted robbery. It, it, it was a stupid thing to do. Stupid! I accept that and I apologise, but I didn't mean to cause any harm. That's for us to decide. I take it it'll be in safekeeping. What? Uh, the musket, only I'll need it back before tomorrow. It's like shopping with somebody who's just won the pools. Your credit card was going to melt. Nothing but the best, Gail. But £40 a square metre for carpet. How much? It is a sumptuous ribbed loop in heavy three-ply yarn. I want some of this in my bedroom. <laughs> yeah, well, start saving your pocket money now. By the time you're 18, you just might be able to afford it. I'm still not sure about this worktop. Oh, it? Oh, it'll be lovely. Oh, maybe we should have gone for the granite. No, too dark. What about half oak and half granite? Oh, very trendy. Have you heard these two? Ah, oh, at last, a well, smile. What if we had been sulking for hours? Mm. And that what do you expect worst. when you say you're going to invite another lad to Bethel's well, party? Too, right? I was only saying it to wind you up. You and Candice yeah. were getting on my nerves. You can't take a joke. Yeah. You're the one that can't take a joke. You fancy another lad and I'm supposed to find that funny? I don't fancy him. Yeah, you do. You think cos he acts dead mental that makes him dead cool? Well, at least he's not boring. And I am. You are being now, yeah? Oh, right. Well, in that case, I better go and be boring somewhere else, aren't I? Oh, um, Todd, no, you know I didn't mean that. Oh, come on, will you stop being so childish? Childish as well as boring. I don't know why you go out on me. <sighs> Hayley, it's me. I I'm at the police station. There's been a misunderstanding. Uh, don't worry. I'm sure as soon as somebody finds the time to actually investigate what I've told them, they'll, they'll let me right. go. Right, just, just start at the beginning and tell me exactly what's going on. Cheers. Hey, are you in a better mood than you were this morning? Well, to be honest, love, I, d I could do with a bit of a break. I go on the phone last night, see if I, I fancy going down there, you know, for the bank holiday. Oh, you should. I'm working. Well, we can manage. The rest will do you good, Betty. Well, I'll have a word with Fred later on, see what he says. Yeah. Oh, hey, but... Guess who I've just had on the phone? I give in. The brewery. The dray horse they were lending me has been taken poorly. Ah, oh, poor thing. Never mind, poor thing. Where am I going to find another horse now? You don't need a horse. I'm the Earl of Lindsay. I can't go into battle on foot. Uh, uh, I can get you an horse. A good one. Thoroughbred. You? <clears throat> Where from? Oh, you should have seen the faces, Kev. I can imagine. Must have both been looking forward to it. They weren't even angry. They just sat there looking dead disappointed. I'm all lousy, my mother, Kevin. I'm lousy. Hey, come on. Stop talking soft. Give them a couple of days, they'll forget all about it. <laughs> they, they won't. Especially Rosie. It's going to take her a long time to get over this. Well, it's sad if she does. Those kids do all right, Sal, despite what you say. Why didn't I just wait until the cheque had come through instead of telling them, instead of building up all their hopes? You weren't to know, Sal. 
Stop beating yourself up over this. It's not your fault. Blessed thing, I don't know what's wrong with it. Fred, shall I go and fetch Jack Duckworth? Maybe he'll know. No, no, I have to learn sooner or later. I don't suppose now's a good time to ask for time off, is it? Time off when? Tomorrow. No, 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 Betty, that's out of the question. We shall want all hands to the pubs tomorrow. Except for all that lot garavanting round the Red Wreck, making fools of themselves. Oh, first, fair, Betty, you can't drop me in it at the last minute. Don't worry, I'll be here. <sighs> Oh, dear. About time, too, if you don't mind me saying so. There's been a shooting. We're very busy. I realise that, but I've been sat there over three hours. Yeah, and you're going to be here a lot longer. You have no grounds for charging me. You can go if and when Sergeant Graham decides there are no charges to answer. When? Tomorrow morning. What? I've told you there's been a major shooting incident and your friend Mr Burford's nowhere to be found. This is preposterous. I demand that you interview me now. You can't keep me here all night. Oh, yes, we can. Everything done? Yep. Last few boxes been loaded onto the van. Oh, in that case, my chair awaits. Oh, and, uh, gonna need those. Oh, cheers. Uh, Mike. Huh? Uh, thanks for what you said at dinner time. I don't mention it. No, look, a lot of people would say you were taking a big gamble by putting me in charge. Would they? Yeah. I mean, I've only been here five minutes, and what with my track record... What I mean is, you've shown a lot of faith in me, and, well, I really appreciate it. Funny, but I don't see it as a gamble. No? Nah, you're not going to do anything dodgy. You wouldn't be that mad. <laughs> of course I won't. You'd be prime suspect if the petty cash was down 50p. And let's face it, there's a lot riding for you in the next two weeks, isn't there? Yeah, I suppose there is. And after I get back, if I found you'd done a bad job, I could sack you. Bad mouth you to everyone in the business, and you would never work again. See you in a fortnight. You could sort this out with a couple of phone calls if you had a mind to, but no, this smacks of police harassment to me. <laughs> Again, is Sergeant Graham free yet? Only I do have a lot to do today. Haven't we all? W with respect, I don't think you understand the urgency. Call waving a shotgun around in a supermarket seems quite simple to me. It was a replica gun. Mr. Cropper, we've just spent the night for Mel dealing with a shooting incident. Yeah, I, I realise that. When we're good and ready to deal with you, we will, and not before. But I've got a skirmish to fight this afternoon. Well, all the more reasons to keep you in then. So Ailey said she rang the police when he didn't turn up and they said they were going to keep him in overnight. It wasn't a real gun, was it? Oh, I don't know, Dad. I mean, she just told me gun, that's all. Well, how long could they keep him in there? Well, they can hold him for up to 24 hours before they charge him. What time was he arrested? Four o'clock. So if he's not out until then, that means he's going to miss everything. Yeah, well, it's only eight o'clock now. I've got six hours before the kick-off. What are we going to tell Fred? No, I don't think Ailey'd want you to tell Fred anything. I mean, he'd only start strutting around and gloating, though, wouldn't he? Yeah. So what are we going to do, then, if he's not released in time? Let's cross that bridge when we get to it, shall we? Hey, we ought to get a move on. Are we doing anything on Sunday? No, why? That looks like a few friends round. What, for lunch? Yeah. Be a bit crowded with old Ben's stuff. Well, we could have a barbecue in the backyard. That's an idea. Well, who should we invite them? We don't want too many. Look, love, can we uh, talk about this later? Because I've got to get little Ben sorted here. And we ought to get to the calf. Yeah, sorry. Is uh, Maxie's mum picking him up or what? No, I'm dropping him off. Oh, well, she's going to have a handful, isn't she? Looking after two babies all day. Yeah, she'll love it. Won't she? Yes, we will. Norman! Norman! Have you seen this mess in Les's yard? Oh, charming. It's going to be nice for the barbecue, isn't it? Uh, which, uh, which, which sash do you think goes best? Oh, a pink one, definitely. You, you don't think it's a touch effeminate? What, on you, Norris? Right. Hey, these necklines are a bit low, aren't they? 
It's the way they wore them. We have to be authentic. <laughs> First time I've heard you worry about that. No. We do want to go upsetting Roy. Oh, yeah. There's no other reason you want us flaunting around in these, is there? Get dressed and stop complaining. <laughs> hey, did that woman ring back, that uh, Mary somebody or other? Mary Rodge. That's her, yeah. yeah. She's the witch we're going to burn at the stake. Not anymore. She cried off. She what? Well, she rang when you popped out. Corns are playing her up. So what'll I do? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> uh, or me. Ah, that'll be Kirk with my horse. Uh -huh. While you lot are out in your fancy dress, I'm holding the fort. Do you know, I've never seen a grown man oh, like him before. Oh, oh, come on, Betty, he's had a hard time lately. Give him a break. What about my break? I wanted to go down and see my garden today. Oh, well, never mind, Betty. Just think you're making the supreme sacrifice for the Jubilee. The Queen would be proud of you. Mm. Hey, come and see what I've got here. Oh. oh. Anybody doesn't pull their way today, this is where they'll end up. Ah, but are they the genuine article? Mm. What's this mean here about whether they're genuine or not? They look real, don't they? Well, they, they should, should give Roy something to mm. think about. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> he had a very sly look on his face yesterday morning. I reckon he's got something up his sleeve. Probably found an old recipe for porridge, knowing him. <laughs> he's up to something, I say he's up to something. Mm. In fact, Norris... Why don't you go over and have a little snoop? What? Before I've got my tunic on? Reckon you're, you're checking on who kills who, that sort of thing. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can glean. Where's my rules of engagement? All I need now is my horse. Well, nothing like this happened when I ran the Historical Society. Well, I'm sure Roy will be devastated, Walter. Don't worry. Well, it's most irregular. I was wondering if there's anything you could do, Emma. Yeah, but without knowing all the details, if he's pointed a gun at someone, like you said, that's a very serious offence. I can't get involved, sorry. Did Haley know he'd gone to get a gun? <laughs> sorry, is it? It's it, it all right if I come in, you know, packs and all that. Is uh, Roy not about? He's out sorting a few last-minute things. Oh, he's got in it fine, isn't he? I mean, there won't be much open on a bank holiday. What do you want, Norris? Oh, I, I, I just, just wanted to run through the order of battle. Yeah, well, we did all that the other day, didn't we? Well, yeah, yes, yes, I know that. But, but, but feelings were running rather high at the time, you see. I, I just want to make sure we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, as it were. <coughs> Hello? Yes, I can ask his wife, Hayley, to do that. No, no, she'll, she'll come straight away. Is he all right? Oh, yeah, OK. Right, bye. <coughs> Is, is there a problem? Look, can we sort this out later, Norris? We've got a few other things to deal with first. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Uh, only about what time, is well, it? Because Fred will want to know. We'll ring you, Norris. Oh, right. Uh, thank you. Right. Bye. Well, go on, then. What happened? They want Haley to bring round some identification to prove who he is. What? Have they interviewed him yet? Didn't say. You've told Norris about Tom Jennings, I take it. What about him? Well, you know he can't come today. Oh, oh you're joking. No, his cauliflowers have got through to the regional finals. He's had to go off to Todmorden. Well, so who's going to take his place? Well, I can't fight. I'm too old these days. We haven't got any more men. We'll have to be a woman, then. Who's your fittest? Well, it's Emma, I suppose. Are you up to it, lass? Looks like I've got no choice, does it? So how did you know it were about Roy? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, he wasn't there for a start, and then Ken said on the phone, is he all right? Now, who else would he be talking about? Sounds like he's in hospital. Huh? That'd be too much to work for. Hey, Fred. So why didn't they tell you? I don't know. I, mean, I just assume they've got something to hide. Right, well, we've come to have a laugh at all you geeks. You can sling your hook. Ah, oh, Fred, you know what? I cannot wait to see you in a pair of tights. Well, you can wait outside. Come on, we're not open for another half hour. Oh, I say. I, uh, I do hope he's paying you to dress like that. So, what do you think? How's that for a pair of morale boosters, Norris? Very fetching. <laughs> Time's this thing start, then. Oh, you said you were working this afternoon. I don't remember saying that. Oh, it's all right, Karen. We'll look after him, won't we, Shell? Oh. So, um, have you worked out what I'm going to be doing today? Um, what exactly did Princess Matilda do? I don't know. I made her up. Well, you see, it's like I said, I, I, I don't think there were any princesses. And I, there was a queen, of course, married to Charles. What did she do? 
Well, she, she, she went to Holland with the crown jewels to pawn them for the war chest, but I can't remember anything else. Well, that's what we'll do. When I've had a prance on that horse, you can sit on it with a jewellery box and we'll announce who you are. No, I've never sat on a horse before. <laughs> Have you been a queen before? Uh, no. Do you want to be? Yeah, of course I do. Well, now's your chance. You'll be Bella Brawl. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what? Now then, how do we look? Watch out, Antonio Bandaris. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, why didn't you ask me to take part in this? Uh, you said you didn't want to. You said that they were all nerds, babe. Yeah, well, I can change my mind, can't I? No, you can't. You're too late. Well, actually, Fred, um, I think we might be able to squeeze her in. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, my trusty groom. Well, where is it? Uh, outside? Yeah, I've got me horse, haven't you? It's all been a terrible mistake. It always is. Well, why wouldn't it hit a fly? That's why you're being asked battles, is it? That's just a bit of harmless fun. Look, he will be out for this afternoon, won't he? It's hard to say. He spent nearly two months organising this event. It's out of my hands, I'm afraid. But you've got to let him out by four, haven't you? Depends. We'll apply for an extension if we have to. Look, couldn't you just let him out for the afternoon and then he could come back later? I don't know what planet you're on, Mrs Cropper, but a man was shot dead less than a mile from where your husband was brandishing a firearm. So till we know exactly what he was doing in that supermarket, we'll be keeping him here for as long as it takes. <laughs> What am I going to do without me horse? I did my best. You promised. It's because it's bank holiday. Why? Has he gone off to Blackpool for a couple of days? The bloke who owns it's gone away. You should have gone with him, you great turnip. Ta-da! Oh, you do look nice, yeah, love. Thanks. What do you think, Ashley? Fantastic. <laughs> Are you going to tell her, or shall I? Tell me what. There's no horse. Well, what am I going to do? He's going to have to think of something. Hey, I've heard it's all going down in here. Wow, look at Sam. This isn't a drop-in centre, you know. Hey, are you going to be taking that kit off later? Nobody's allowed in this pub till opening time, except them with a job for the king. Yeah, well, it is opening time. Anyway, you can give me a job if you like. I'd love to get togged up like all these. You can dream on, I say you can dream on. Anything I can do to help you with, Fred? No, thank you for asking, Sam. You look champion. In fact, that's where you could be. The King's Champion. Excellent. What's that, then? Listen to me, everyone. I hereby appoint Sam the King's Champion. Any feats of endeavour want doing, he's your man. Oh, hey. 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 King's hey. Champion. Hey. I thought I was your right-hand man. Yeah, Norris, you're my chief advisor. That's far more important. Now, how are we going to save face with Roy over this horse business? Well, do, do, do we need to if he's gone a well? I think he's pulling a fast one to make us feel more confident. Yeah, but what, what about the phone call? As soon as you got there, funny that, isn't it? Never trust a man who believes in Parliament. They're the craftiest a lot, them are. No, what we need is a spy in their camp. Woo! And the new blackies. Wow. <laughs> I don't look, baby. Well, uh, mm hmm. But, um, you look like you're dressed for a funeral. Oh, well, cheers, Steve. Well, why is nobody else dressed in black? Well, cos she's special. Special. Yeah, and if that's all you've got to say, then you might as well go back to work. I'll come and watch you later. What about if I went back you over there again and, and pretended I'd defected? No, that smell a rat. Uh, if Karen can get dressed up like that, then why can't I? Hey, you, 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 you bit Fred's told you. No, just a minute, Norris. We might be able to find a job for her after all. You've discussed you'll take over if he's not back, I assume. Uh, well, we've been putting it off, but, uh, you know, we've got less than three hours to go. Well, so we do it without Roy, then? Why, you can't cancel if you've got a quorum. <laughs> so we'd never live it down with Fred if we cancelled it now, would we? So, any volunteers? It has to be a man, does it? I would say so. Well, I've never done this before. I don't think any of us has. Of course, there is one of us here who's been in the real armed services. Oh, come on, yeah, in the Navy on a submarine. More than I've done. And me. Well done, Peter. Now, are you sure you don't want a solicitor present? 
As I've done nothing wrong, I see no need of one. Okay. We could get on with this as quickly as possible. You're the chap who kidnapped that young lad, aren't you? Well, that was a little more complicated than that. I thought your name was familiar. We were exonerated. Thanks, Brian. I don't see what that has to do with this present case. Now, you're doing a battle reenactment, yeah? It starts at two o'clock. And there'll be others there like you, I take it, with guns? Uh, we won't be using guns. We don't have black powder licences. But they'll have weapons of some kind? Oh, yes, but... Well, we better get a move on, then. If there's a load more like you roaming loose on the common, unless your story's good, we're going to have to cancel it. I feel like a right nana. Hey, don't be daft. You look great. Here, when do I get my sword? We have a little problem there. Why? Health and safety. Miners aren't allowed to carry blades at do's like this. Well, as long as I'm not having one of them wooden jobbies. Oh, I've something far better than that. Follow me into the back. Very good, Norris. Yeah, but I'm not sure about these cuffs. Where, where's Shelley? So, uh, what are you doing after the battle, then? Oh, I don't know. What about you? Well, I thought I might take in a nightclub or three. Oh, sounds interesting. Yeah. Enjoy yourself, won't you? Oh, no, whatever next. Not so loud till we get outside, there's a good lad. <laughs> Have you thought about what I said? Yeah. And? All right, then, you're on. For the umpteenth time, it was a replica. Most people in the queue didn't know that. Could have caused a heart attack, pointing a gun at someone. I didn't mean any harm. Then there's your own safety. People have been shot before now, wielding replica guns. We can't always tell. Yeah, yeah I, sp I suppose there is that. We get very upset when that happens. We get a lot of flack as well, quite rightly. People like you make our job extremely difficult, Mr Cropper. I can see that. Yes, I'm, I'm very sorry. Tape paused at 12.02. Cheers, Brian. Well, we've verified that you've organised the event. The gun's a replica, and you obtained it from a reputable source. It's here, and quite harmless after all. That's what we thought about Pump Action Purvis. Who? Chap we found a few years back at a football match with a starting pistol. Seemed a nice guy. Taught at a local Sunday school. We let him off with a warning. Next day, he went on the rampage with a real shotgun. Back shed was like an arsenal. What are you saying? I'm saying this investigation isn't over yet. Oh, it's going to be a long day, isn't it? Got some juice. Hiya. Hi. Are you off to the reenactment? Do we look like shadows? Oh, you should have told me you're meeting up. I could have come with you. How can you when you've got her to look after? Well, I could have arranged something. I think it's always a performance, isn't it? <laughs> Why are you chasing after him when you've already got Todd? I'm not chasing him, we're mates. Are you trying to kid? It's true. Oh, get real, Sarah. Hey, day. So why the sudden interest, then? I've been thinking for ages that it'd be a cool thing to do. Mm. I just never got round to sorting it. And why this side, not the other? Well, cos they're a pain, them cavaliers. Real posers. Be great to bring them down a peg or two. You do know that we lose? Yeah, but only cos Fred swung the belt. Yeah, I know. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, what's happening? We've come to see if Roy Cropper's got any more guns stashed away. What? No, <laughs> Emma? Hello, Colin. What are you doing here? Just a bit of bank holiday fun. You know Roy Cropper, then? Yeah, very well. So you can vouch for him? Salt of the earth. I trust him with my life. Then Ken kills me, Fred kills Ken, Peter kills Sam. What? Peter Barlow kills you. But I'm the king's champion. Yes, well, it doesn't make you immortal. They all die except me, Dad. Oh, come he gets away with it? Because he's the boss. Mm. 
Hey, up! You took your time. Never mind, that's a cup card outside the cafe. Is, is, is Roy in it? I didn't see you, but something's going off, though, that is for sure. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he which has no stomach for this fight, let them depart. Too late, love. We already have. <laughs> Thanks, okay. I told you there was something up. Haley's not shot him, has she? There was a shooting yesterday. It was on the news in Patapimbida. What's going on? Uh, nothing to worry about, Fred. Will Roy be there this afternoon? What? Well, just gonna have to wait and see, Fred. <laughs> Whatever's happened, they're putting a brave face on it. <clears throat> I will be getting the musket back, I take it. Only it's not mine, you see. We'll see it get back to its rightful owner, Mr. Cropper. I'm not intending to use it or anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, well, we'd better be going. I'm sorry to have troubled you. Bye. Come here. Now, have you sorted out that replacement horse for Maxine? Yes, sir. Yes, boss. <laughs> What's he got to do with it? Hey, just listen up. You'll like this. Enjoy yourself. Come on, Kevin. He's bank holiday. Thanks, mate. Don't forget what you've done today. No sweat. Wouldn't want to dress up like that bunch of wazzocks anyway. I, I do apologise. <laughs> Most unleader-like. <laughs> Better late than never. Nice to see you on board, Fizz. I didn't think you'd be interested. Well, it'd be a laugh, won't it? Well, that's not how I would describe it. Oh, come on. You know what she means, Roy. Everyone here is doing this for conscientious reasons. However, if you feel you have a contribution to make, by all means, join us. The bin men did come last Friday, didn't they? Well, they took mine. Just as great mounds of rubbish in the back of Leslie's yard. <laughs> Sounds surprised. No, it's spilling out into the ginnel, though. It's never been like that before. Oh, I expect Janice kept the place neat and tidy when she was there, but since she's left... Yeah, I wonder if I should have a word with him. I'd rather you than me. Uh, if I could have a quick word before we leave. As you all know... Circumstances have conspired to sabotage this event as I originally conceived it. Yeah, Fred Elliott, as you mean. What the public will see today is a Hollywood version of the Weatherfield skirmish. However, I hope that won't prevent us from acquitting ourselves with dignity. Some people might want to make spectacles of themselves. That's no reason why we should. So, let's fall in outside, shall we? Well, welcome. Welcome to today's extravaganza here at the old Red Wreck. <laughs> now, we got a show for you all this afternoon. Oh, look at them. Oh. Good afternoon. Strong fellas, them out there. Good afternoon. Shall we have a cup of tea? Oh, I'm dying. It'll be a long day. Yeah, I can yes. sit it. Stop sulking, Rosie. I don't like it any more than you do, but there's nothing we can do about it. Come on, the holiday in the summer. Just enjoy today. You've got your kazoo band to look forward to. Oh, yeah. Of war competition. It's a big heave from the Clarence Street sewage workers. Thank heaven they're pulling down wind. Hey, Sam's just told me I'm first to be killed. Yes, which you would have known if you'd been here on time. I had to work this morning. Nothing can do about it now. It's written in stone. But why me? You didn't join the course till late in the day, did you? So? So, last in, first out. Come on! Come on! Yay! So, got some special line-up for me, then, or what? <laughs> we'll have to think of something, won't we, Gina? Is that happening, Norris? <laughs> There's still no sign of him. I tell you, it's a trick. What, even with the police car? Emma's in Bobby's in she. She could have arranged that. It's cutting it fine, isn't it? I mean, we're on in five minutes. Oh, oh, getting a slight oh, edge now. Oh, 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 oh yes, indeed. These two are men are buckling. Are they? Oh, dear. Man down for the sewage workers. And it's a complete collapse. Down the pan they go. So what are we going to do if they don't come? 
We'll have to fight each other. How are we going to do that? Oh, wait, look, look! What did I tell you? Say, what did I tell you? He's got them well drilled, hasn't he? He's a sly one, he is. <laughs> the Earl of Lindsay, I presume. <laughs> Colonel Shackleton. You made it then. Yeah. I'm ready when you are. to change the order of battle. After Curly kills Les, I want Emma to kill Kirk. Why? They're the riffraff of this event. They're an embarrassment to both of us. The sooner we get shot, the better. Where's the horse? I decided to take your advice. Too dangerous. Permission granted. And a big thank you to the Fire Station Band. There they go, everyone a winner. <laughs> but now, ladies and gentlemen, our next event, a reenactment of a bloody skirmish. Yes. Which took place here 360 years ago between the Cavaliers and the Roundhead Rebels. The outcome you will see. I'm going sure. for the sit down. I suppose first, you wrote this. Well, I have to give him some hurt. A witch has been caught. And we all know what happened to witches. So uh, is someone going to get a duck? <laughs> That's right. Karen, how did you guess? <laughs> well, what's going on? Well, why do you think we dress you in black? Hey! <laughs> get off me! You dare to You want some special love? <laughs> did you know about this? <laughs> But it wasn't in the script. <laughs> it's a little appetizer. Get what warmed up. Hiya. Don't let me keep you. I hate to bore you. I didn't mean what I said yesterday. I'm sorry. So why did you say it? I just get frustrated. I want to go out and do crazy things like everybody else. But you remind me that I can't do that. I just flipped. So we have to mind what I say all the time, is that it? No. Just be you. The only person who really likes me for who I am. So I'm a forgiven. Of course you are. Mm. And the witch is now tied to the stake and ready for cooking. What a fun is it? That is not how they did it. They were tired to a stool and duck her in a pond. Just ignore it. No. <laughs> you take that look at me and I kill you. <laughs> it's only a bit of fun. Oh, just go along with it. We'll set you free in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll be shot to the skin. Do not claim him on that. Oh, come on, stand it. it. Stand back, stand back. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. Come on, Norris. It's stuck. Hey, up. The Witchfinder General is having trouble with the bucket. Run her through, Sam! Hey, we a sword, man! We've no time for this! Oh, no, you don't. Where's she going? <laughs> and an own goal for oh, the witch Back to your positions, you lot! The witch now! <laughs> How many more stunts is he going to pull? Well, look, two can play at this game, Roy. How do you mean? Well, look, if he's going to keep going off the script, then why don't we? We could refuse to die for a start. I am not stooping to his level. Do you know anything about this? No way, no. 
And next, a word from our sponsor. <coughs> Thank you, Archie. Lords, ladies and now? gentlemen, this is Fred Elliott speaking of Elliot and Son Master Butchers. To celebrate the this sponsor. proud day, He's not. I have created a selection of products which my two books of wenches will be distributed among you free of charge. Help yourselves to Jubilee sausages, King Charles pies, and Nesby chicken nuggets. These delights will be available at my shops all week at competitive prices. By delights, I mean the pies and not the wenches. <laughs> Drinks are available at the Beer Tent, courtesy of the Rovers Return Coronation Street, celebrating its 100 year anniversary. Thank you, have a nice day, and God bless Queen Elizabeth! I trust there'll be no more delays. No, I think that's it now. And can I ask you to stop calling us rebels? Well, that's what Fred said you are. Yes, well, he's wrong. Well, I'll, uh, I'll call you roundheads then, shall I? The correct term is parliamentarians. A bit of a mouthful. Well, rebels is better than roundheads. Right then, I'll call you that. Hello again, and forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, a... So, what did you get up to this morning? Ask yourself. Go on. Look, Roy is just a decent bloke and he's just trying to do his best. So you can get someone else to do your spying for you. Which side are you on then, Vera? What? We're my blue blood. We're Fred, of course. What blue blood? My great-grandfather was Edward VII. Mm. And mine was Kaiser Bill. No, it's true, I'm east. <laughs> Let's just watch the matinee, eh? I'm on the air, excuse me. Just... Right, I just need to talk to you. But can't it wait? No, right, cos when I joined your lot this morning, it was cos Fred asked me to spy on you. Ah. I'm really sorry. Well, I can't say that I'm surprised. Oh, no, but it was only cos he said I could get free drinks in Rovers. I just thought he'd be a laugh. Now I've seen how much it means to you, you know, and... I've told him. I mean, I've told him I'm not doing it. Yes, well, thank you for telling me. Well, what shall I do then? Shall I just go? Well, you could tell him that hiring a spy is the first authentic thing he's done for the entire campaign. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> not as good as them Goran Tuck. <laughs> hey, have you heard from him? Do you reckon you will? Who knows? Don't suppose so. I still can't believe it all happened. <laughs> I'm really sorry it didn't work out for you, you know. Yeah. Although it were never going anywhere, was it? Not really. You know what, that's what I think about me and Tyrone now. Looking back. Just... Well, we're just too young to get serious. This is it, you see. We need to have a bit of fun first, don't we? <laughs> hey, why don't we go out tonight and get totally wasted? Shall we? Yeah, we'll be in better shoes soon enough. <laughs> hey, are my ears burning? No. They better not be. And now, finally, the event you've all been waiting for. There she is, grab her! Right! What are you doing? Hey, we haven't started yet! What's happening now? We're starting a battle here! Into the stock! going on over here today? Release her! Oh, but only having a bit of fun. I said release her! See, she tricked us both. That is not why we are here. It's an appeal for clemency from the rebel leader. What did the crowd think? In the stocks or let her go? <laughs> You're not having much luck with democracy, are you, Roy? Hey, it's still time for you to change sides. <laughs> <laughs> did you uh, did you get to the star ballroom? You know, while you were in Blackpool. Uh, not quite. No. Uh, why was that the hip venue in the 1930s? I'll be back in a minute. You can smirk. You youngsters think that nobody else ever had any fun before you. We could show you a thing or two. I'm sure. Is that what you're giggling at? What? That I'm past it and I'm too old. Oh, we were just saying how uh, you know we want to enjoy ourselves while we can. 
Yeah, you're the right thing, lovey. You are only young ones. <laughs> hey, you do all right for yourself, though. I hope I'm in as good a nick as you at 80. Yeah, thanks, so. My time's been and gone, though, I reckon now. <laughs> How do you mean? Well, it's no when to move over, isn't it? You're not thinking of leaving here. I don't know what I'm thinking. I've been in a very, very funny mood just lately. Ignore me, love. And it's a summer's day in 1642. The Earl of Lindsay, General in Chief to the King, is travelling with his aunt which includes the king's nephew, the dashing Prince Rupert, and the king's champion, Mr. Samuel Kingston. And unknown to them, a band of rebels under the notorious Colonel Bloodbath Shackleton is lying in wait. Stand aside, Sarah. Submit to the rule of Parliament, and you shall not be hurt. Fie upon you, name. We shall not surrender to the infidel. Have at him, men. <laughs> Have us. Have all. Show no quarter. Down. Give us on, Fred. I'm fighting. See we, yeah? Not we, Excalibur. I might hurt someone. Yeah, we can't just give the king's champion that like one. Come along, Prince Rupert. Enter his gut, stick it in, twist it and pull it out. This is all going pear-shaped for the King's men. But the Earl of Lindsay is entering the fray now. Ah, that's why you wanted two of your men to die first, so that you could jump in and turn everything round. Will you stop whinging for five minutes? Where are they going? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know, Mum. So where is everyone better? They're all at this reenactment thing. Um, can I tempt you to a jubilee sausage? A what? Well, they are 17th century authentic recipe. Oh, and the price is authentic. How do you mean? Well, they would have been what? Eight meat in them days, wouldn't they? A pound each, or three for 250. Uh, I'll stick to what pot, thanks. Oh. I've already lost half my workforce to this civil war, so I think I've done my bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> Another one. The Cavaliers are asking all the questions here. Ah, you never went so time has come. Die, Barlet. <laughs> but down goes another Cavalier. Another round that bites the dust. The Earl of Lindsay's entry into the fray is certainly paying dividends. Oh, crouch down, I can't get on. If I crouch down any further, I'll fall over. Give me too high, I can't get on. What's the problem? Come here. Ow! Oh. 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 Ow! What was that for? Lunge at me, I'll do it for real. Lunge at me. Yes! Yes! What? You know what? A two second in commands going at the hammer of tongues now. Oh, that's better. Prince Rupert, nephew to the king. It's coffee. 
There's just the two leaders left to snug it out alone now. Why don't you let me out? No, no but wait. Stop. Watch this. <laughs> it's the king's missus, Queen Henrietta Maria. The queen is escaping from Holland, where she hopes to pawn the crown jewel to raise a few bob for the war effort. What on earth is this? This is a complete farce! Call it what you will, the punters are loving it, I say they're loving it. For your shrilled up version of history, they've gone to sleep hours ago. Now then. <coughs> now die! And Colonel Shackleton has been stabbed! But well, go on, then, you dorsey beggar, die! No. I won't. That's not in the script. Well, neither was the witch dunking. Or Faze, or Maxine, or any of it. I'll give you one last chance. Ah, oh! <laughs> but it looks like Colonel Shackleton has got a bit more fight left in him. <laughs> this is out of order. Call it a blow for truth. If, if you stop, if, if you stop this now, there'll be no recrimination. It's dead. Pardon? That's what they say in the movies, isn't it? That's the kind of gutter expression you're going for. Uh, yeah, now calm down. Tell this, Roy. Right, calm down. Right. Calm down. Yes. Come on, everybody in. Come on. If you really say, oh, I hope so. I like a bit of fisticuffs. Les! Get over here! What's going on? Come on! The only one that is left. You got one! Well, get out there and start handing them out again. Uh, as we bring proceedings to a close, uh, your last chance now to some more. Why? Right, Harry, will you let me out of here, please? I've been here all day. Thank you. So what's been going on? Well, it's all gone to pot. I know I've been cheating. <laughs> well, who's been cheating? Well, it's Fred. He's taken over. Really? What do you mean, Pad, David? You sow the wind, you reap the whirlwind. You ruin my reputation, you have. Good. Oh, oh, my arm! The Civil War skirmish is now over. Will all combatants please retire? Somebody's going to get hurt. Come on. Oh, right. Stop it. Come on. Don't push me. Hey, watch it. Get your hands off me. Are you with me like that? Come on, lads, that's enough. Leave it. He started it. No, he Leave didn't. It. You're what started this, lads. No, we didn't. Now, 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 gentlemen, please. You're the biggest traitor of the lot. Oh. Hey! Hey! Oh, this is more like it. This is an urgent call for security. Well, that were a total disgrace. Oh, I don't know. If we get entertainment like that, roll on the next Jubilee. Right, well, see you later then. Red wreck. Ace, everyone lost the rag. 
Salford University. I thought you were going to go down south. No, I'll go whatever the right course is. There's some good ones around here, so might have to leave home now. Sweet. And it's got now to do with what to be near Sarah, of course. Hey, look, what if you're not with her then? I mean, it's 15 months away. Mm, it's got nothing to do with Sarah. Yeah, well, when you do go, you'll meet loads of new people. I mean, it's time for breaking out, not saddling yourself with the past. Yeah, I'll make me own mind up, thank you. Here, why do you have to knock me over, you moron? I couldn't help it. How's your hand, Sam? Oh, it's all right, babe. It's just a bit sprained, that's all. Oh. I've never seen a pork pie do so much damage. Well, it happened when he hit the deck. You know, I'd like to know exactly whose idea it was to dress me as a witch. Never mind these petty squabbles. We've been humiliated today by a rabble. The question is, what do we do about it? Never seen such a total disaster. He changed everything we agreed on. And invented stuff of his own. He's unbelievable, that bloke, isn't he? I mean, all those weeks of planning, it's a travesty. You've got to have it out with him, Roy. Yeah, you can't let him get away with that. All those cheap stunts. You don't think you provoked him, refusing to die? I think he was very restrained under the circumstances. Yeah, I'd have gone off on one ages before that. I don't like violence, but I'd be after his blood if I were you. I'm as boiling mad as everybody else. I'll go and do something about it then, Roy. Never going to live this down. Don't be such a baby, Fred. It was only a game of soldiers, wasn't it? You weren't there, Betty. You were more than that. He'll dine out on this for years. <laughs> Folk throwing pies at us. Think what that'll do for business. People will come in shock just to have a laugh at you. And they'll be took serious again. Oh, unless you do something. They'll be spreading lies already about what's happened. Yeah, his version of events. And people will say another man of your word. He's got to be taught a lesson. Or he'll walk all over you in the future. Nobody get away with it if they double-crossed me. He saw that this was going to be your finest hour, so he humiliated you. You can't then get away with that, Fred. You're right. I do think we ought to stay calm. Oh. But while he's sat in the rover saying everything that happens, Roy's fault. Yeah, and believing every word of it. I mean, all the care you took with the detail and it brings on a pantomime horse. Yeah, and he's going to blame you for that. Yes, it won't go down well with the historical society. And what did a fizz and carrot? That ducking, how pathetic was that? And what about that commentary? What a farce. Talk about rewriting history. And all that self-promotion. How did we let it get into this mess, eh? But as leader, I have to accept responsibility. I didn't stand up to him enough. Not anymore. Roy, I really think you should let this go now. I'm afraid I can't do that, Haley. Well, I want nothing to do with it. So be it. I was just coming to see you. Really? Wondered if you fancied coming out on Wednesday. It's Bethany's birthday party. All oh, right. Why? Uh, me and some mates were off out. Wondered if you fancied coming. I didn't think you'd want me to. Why not? After this afternoon. Well, I just wanted to get rid of Candy. She's a pain. So you can't come? Not really. Well, suit yourself. Apology. I owe you what? Go on, Roy. You've made me a lapping stock in this town. You did that yourself today without my help. You just couldn't bear to think that I'd made a better fist of it than you. If I'd have wanted a pantomime, I would have hired comedians. This is supposed to be history. Nobody's interested in history, not your sort, any road. The true version, you mean? All people want on a Jubilee Monday is a bit of fun. Now we're giving them that until you stuck your oar in. I worked for two months to get this right. You could have worked for two years. It wouldn't have made any difference. It were a disaster before I stepped in. You made a mockery of it. You made a mockery out of me. That's all you care about, isn't it? Your image. Your profit. Your loud, fat self-importance. I'd rather be a showman than an anorak. <gasps> you push him where you're not wanted. You shove people around. You cheat. You bribe. How what? You're vindictive. 
when you don't get your own way. You will take all that back. People can see through you in five minutes. And then you wonder why your wives leave you. At least there were real women. Nobody in their right minds would go near a weirdo like you. Oh, God. hey. Right. Oh, 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 dear. Oh, you should have got a real one, Roy. You're authentic in all the wrong places. <laughs> Never mind what they say, Roy. Forget them, Roy. Forget Come on, I'm going to go. Oh, dear. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> go on, Roy. Roy, calm down. Roy, calm down. Oh, I'll quit now if I were you. Come on, Roy, leave it. Do that again. I'm born in here. <laughs> Not quite Excalibur now. You wouldn't. Apologise. Never. Roy. Roy, leave him. Roy. Roy! You've won. Leave him. You're going to kill me. <laughs> Probably very small. <laughs> Roy, um, I thought I might pop into town this dinner time by Becky's birthday presents. What should we get, do you think? Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, really. Roy, you've got to stop brooding. <coughs> this reenactment's over and done with now. Just forget about it. Hey, Roy, is it right what I've just heard about you and Fred having a duel in the street? <laughs> Yeah? And Roy won? I'm not going to be able to forget about it, am I? I tell you, I wish I'd gone now. <laughs> Sounds dead good. <laughs> oh, it was. It was a laugh, mate. Especially seeing him visit them stocks. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I reckon the best bit of where they strap you to that steak. <laughs> it's just a pity they didn't manage to drown you. <laughs> See you later. And stop worrying. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, Mr. Gotcha, I've just come in. I'm glad to see somebody knows what day it is. The bank holiday's over, in case you've forgotten. So let's get cracking, eh? Oh, Betty, you should have been there. Right, well, you should have been in my garden, you mean, instead of looking after an empty pub. Two grown men making fools of themselves with a, a sword and a stick. Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. You are my fault. <laughs> it was that Roy Cropper slapping me with his gloves. It were a challenge with that. I had to respond. What, by pulling out a sword? Don't you think it was a tad over the top? <laughs> over the top? What about him? Coming at me like a wild beast brandishing his pike. Oh, I say. Man's a lunatic. Was locking up, I say locking up. And what were you two playing at? Strutting about, advertising my words in the middle of a free-for-all? I wanted good publicity, not bad. Never mind, Fred. You can always put an advert in your shop window. Cheetah's pies. Half price. <laughs> it weren't me that were cheating. That were Roy Cropper and all refusing to die. <laughs> He's only mad because Roy won, you know. He did not win. I lost me footing, that's all. <laughs> you lost face, you mean? <laughs> Thought I might call the shop today, see when they can deliver the furniture. Sooner we get that flat done, the sooner we can show people round. Hope they like my taste. And why shouldn't they? It's immaculate. Mm. <laughs> Bye bye, birthday girl. You'll be back in time for the party. Oh, I wouldn't miss it for the world. I'll see ya. I don't see why we have to have a party. It's not as if Beth's bothered. Oh, that's nice. Your own daughter's birthday and you don't want to celebrate it. Oh, no, it's not that. It's just it's the holidays and I've not done anything and there's only a couple of days left and, well, David's... Well, maybe you can do something at the weekend, eh? But anyway, remember to take those sausage rolls out of the freezer and boil some rice. We can make the salad when we come back tonight. <laughs> Who's going to have it? Someone have to pay a couple of quid for it. Don't you look so bonnet. Hey, are you married, Mr Carter? This? Why? You asking? <laughs> nah. No one would have me. I'd have you any day. Hey, and I wouldn't need a ring on my finger, either. Hey, you! Go on, he's already sporting fire. Oh, well, he's used to me. Come on, I've seen the way you've been chatting up that Gina. 
right. Nothing gets past you, Lord, does it? Mm, not much, no. So is it serious? Do I ask you questions about your love lives? You can if you want. Me and her are free, if you're interested. But these two, sadly, married. Hey, if I want him to know my business, then I'll tell you all right. Yeah, but Karen, she only got married for a bit. <laughs> Jason, have you got any spare cash on you? Is that right, love? <laughs> hey, you only got married for a bit. What's it to you? Yeah, just being friendly. Yeah, well, don't, all right. These lot might want to suck up to you, but I really couldn't care less. As far as I'm concerned, you know, but paid help. You know, like the rest of us. Well, I think it's time we got back to work. You're going to push him too far, lady. Yeah, well, we'll see, eh? Hi, Kev. Hello, Sam. Where the flame hell you been? Hospital. Why, what's happened? Well, the battle got a bit rough, and he ended up as one of the wounded. Only he's a bit more wounded than I thought. They reckon it's broken. Great. I'd give Tyrone a day off because he'd come in bank holiday Monday. You turned up in that state. How am I supposed to get through this lot? Well, I could pass you things. It's a garage I'm running, not a flaming operating theatre. You may as well go home, you know, used to me like that. Maybe I should go on holiday then. Oh, yeah. You go off, sunning yourself in Ibiza, while I nearly kill myself trying to do both our jobs, eh? Well, I might as well if I'm not going to be doing anything else. Well, just don't expect to be paid for it, that's all I'm saying. Well, that's not fair. No, and it wasn't fair you going off leaving me in the lurch to play soldiers. Well, you've got it in for me, haven't you? First you let Tyrone go off on holiday and not me, and now you're docking me pay. Well, that's the deal. Take it or leave it. Well, in that case, I reckon I'll leave it. You can stuff your job. Oh, Roy! Right. Roy! Right. Hey, Listen, have you thought any more um, about Bethany's presence? Only I'm just about to go into town. Uh, not really, no. Oh, right. I just better think of someone myself, then. Are you still worrying about that business with Fred? No, 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 no. So, are we going to stop here all day, or are you going to go and talk to him? I can't. Do you not know where the pub door is? I've got to get back and relieve Toya. <laughs> well, you do realise that his shop is next door to the cafe. What are you going to do? Duck down behind the counter every time he comes past? Rita? Birthday cake candles. It's Becky's birthday today. I can't find last year's. Oh, of course. She'll be two now, won't she? Oh, how time flies. <laughs> yeah, come on, we've got some somewhere. Is Sarah feeling better? Sorry? Well, I saw her last week when she was off school. She said she was feeling poorly. Was she indeed? Oh, yeah. Oh, but I think it's dead mean of Kevin, man. <laughs> I know, you've had a bit of a time of it, haven't you, mate? I mean, uh, getting floored by a pie, getting drenched in nice. <laughs> oh, leave him alone. You know, I reckon it's all that Fred Elliott's fault. If it weren't for him and his stupid battle, none of this would have happened. And I wouldn't have got stuck in them stocks. <laughs> Do you know what? I've got a good mind to sue him for assault. Don't you think it's about time you got this side of the bar? Good point. And I can get myself another drink and I don't have to put over your lemon lips. Baby, can you uh, get me another drink? You'll have a job on. Dinner time's nearly over. Yeah, well, yours might be, but I fancy an extended one, so I'll uh, see you guys later. Come on, Fizz. No, Fred. Not so bad. Ah. Only I, uh, heard you came a crop yesterday. Chef! <laughs> 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 Dad, come with me, we'll get you on that terrace. Oh, look, there it. he is now. Why don't you have a word with him? No, I think we should wait a bit. Why, that rubbish isn't going to shift by itself. Norman, one of the reasons you got elected was because of your stance on environmental issues, or does that not count on your own doorstep? Of course it does, but so does public relations, and there's nothing worse than having a row with your neighbour. So what are you saying? We should just ignore it? No, we just give him a chance. Give him a chance to do it by himself first, before we go wading in there. to do this. It's your flipping party. Here, just play with this. 
Hi, Mum. I haven't done the rice yet because Beth's been a pain. I called in on Rita at lunchtime. She said you were in the cabin last Wednesday claiming to be ill when you should have been at school. No one ever. She must have been confused. I called into the cabin on the way to the creche, but that's it. Maybe she overheard me saying that Beth was off colour or something. And is that what you told Ken as well? Because I called in on him afterwards and he confirmed that you'd missed a couple of lessons last week. So, who's going to be ill next? David? Look, I don't know what he's on about. Yes, I did miss a couple of lessons, but that's because of the first of the day and I never get back in time with them because the buses are rubbish. Look, Mum, if you don't believe me, phone the school, ask them to check the that's register. Not good. Well, I just might do that. Yeah, maybe you should. I had to walk back twice from the crash last week and I did ask Richard for a lift, remember? But, of course, he was too busy with your precious partnership. Don't you dare try and shift the blame onto us. Bethany's your responsibility, not ours. If you can't get to school on time, then you just start getting up earlier. I asked Ken to give me the work you'd missed. You don't have to do it today because of Bethany's party, but tomorrow you start catching up. Mummy, it's the holidays! Yes, and you're studying for your GCSEs. It's not a time to lag behind. <gasps> Don't you dare give me that look. You've only got yourself to blame. Hey, Karen, where do you think you're going? Uh, for a pint and then home. Oh, no, you're not. You owe me 45 minutes, love. You better get back on your machine. And you can get on your bike, cos I'm going. It's either that or you can't. You wouldn't dare. You just try me. Your first day's boss, how did it go? Well, I've got to tell you, it had its moments, but not bad considering. Mm. So, do you fancy going for a meal tonight? Oh, well, I'd love to, but I can't. Unless Betty could... No chance. I'm working. Right. What about tomorrow night? Oh, I've got to see a client. Some of Mike set up before he went. Oh, it's all right. We'll sort some out next week. OK, definitely. OK. Right, please, Betty. Right. Yeah, you're the uh, bloke that's standing in for Mike, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. Mm. My wife works there. Karen, she's called. Well, we've met, yeah. Ah, uh, giving you a hard time, is she? <laughs> well, you got no to handle, is she? Show her who's boss, you know what I mean? Well, I'll certainly bear that in mind, mate. <laughs> Where's Karen, anyway? Oh, uh, Mr Carter kept her in for detention. Yeah, so she could make up for a long dinner time spent with you. <laughs> Another pint of bitter, please, love. Right. Oi, for all the use you are around here, you might as well go back to your shop. Oh, give it here, woman. Here, yeah, then. Shut you up. Oh. Hey, here he is, our hero. <laughs> Take over, Betty. Hey, you're going to have to face him sooner or later, you know. And I'd rather do it with later, if it's all the same to you. Hey, did you see that? I reckon he's scared of you, though. Mm. Well, she says she's just been late, but not if she's been truanting. Well, maybe she's telling the truth. She did ask me for a lift a few times. I mean, maybe I should have made more time. Don't start feeling guilty. It's exactly what she wants. Oh, Nat, doesn't she look a picture? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, gorgeous girl. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hey. Look, I know your party's not so late, but I was wondering if you fancy coming out for a bit. Trouble you're in? No way. Anyway, people will be arriving soon. What trouble? She caught me bunking off. Rita being gobby, wasn't it? You kidding? Oh, please, can't you stay for the party? It's going to be minging stuck with this lot. I know, and that's why I'm not going to stay. Oh, go on. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, but I'm meeting Eddie and that, so... And you'll be all right. Todd's here, so... See you later. Hiya. <laughs> oh, hiya, Les. I was hoping I'd find you. Do you know, you're not the first married woman to say that. It's about your yard. Look, we've noticed you've got a lot of stuff in there and we're wondering... I know. And people not these terraces. I'd rather have a yard than a cellar any day, me. Yeah, at least with a cellar it's out of sight, though, isn't it? Yeah, but not very hygienic. I mean, you wouldn't want all that stuff inside your house, would you? But what I want to know is, are you going to get rid of it? Why? Is there something there that suck your fancy? That old table isn't bad, you know. All it needs is a lick of paint. Oh, my heck. What happened to you? 
Well, you know when I said I'd sprain my arm? Well, I haven't. I've, I've broken it. I've lost my job as well. You're joking. Come here, you can buy us a pint and tell us all about it. I'll catch you later then, yeah? Yeah, OK, hey. And don't worry. I'm not in any hurry about getting rid. So I'm sure we can sort some out. See ya. Thanks, love. Come on, you. I've not finished my pint, you. I said, come on. Oh, long time no see. Enjoyed your holidays, have you? Fred, this poor lad's lost his job on account of his arm. You could give him a bit of bar work, couldn't you? Why should I? Because he did it fighting for your honour. He were the king's champion. You owe him one. I owe him nout. He were about as much use on that field as a vegetarian meatball, and he'd be as much use in here at all. One arm bandits are one thing, one arm barmen are another. What kind of loyalty is that? When the lad risked his life for you. You know, I'm glad Roy Crawford surrounds you. It serves you right. In fact, lend us a fiver, Sam. I'll buy the man a drink. What you having, Roy? I'm fine, thank you. You know, that great big lump of lad deserved everything he got. In fact, you should have run him through. Oh. I'm just going to take these round. Where's my You're hitting me down, though. Anybody like um, No, I'm no, thanks, no. I mean, it's like living next door to a tip. Can't be healthy, can oh, it? Oh, no, Emma, love. Look, you're wasting your time. I'm... Now I've got to spend the rest of the holiday working. I hate her. You can't blame her, though. I mean, why did you bunk off anyway? I suppose you just wanted to be with that aiding critch lad. No, of course not. I just wanted to have some fun for a change, that's all. What? Hanging around street corners all day, hoping you won't get spotted. Yeah, dead exciting. You won't get into sit form like that. Well, maybe I don't want to. I spend all my spare time looking after Bethany. I don't want to spend what spare time I've got studying. It's hard spending the rest of your life in a doll queue, you know? <laughs> I'm going to go to the shop and get some more ice cream for Beth. I'll come here. Don't bother, I'll go by myself. He's passed away. I bought him these little boots. They're dead cute. Can't even walk yet. What's he want boots for? That's what I said. Oh, men, they don't understand, do they? Well, you've worn the Killick card out already. <laughs> I won't mind. We'll grow out of them in a couple of weeks. We've got some lovely outfits in. You should go down. You might get some ideas. All right, Todd. Yeah, fine. Where's Sarah? She's uh, gone to the shops to get some more ice cream. There's plenty in the freezer. Oh, she knows that. You're right. What's she up to now? At least there's one good thing, though. What's that? Yeah, I got away beef now, I suppose. Hey, I might even stay there for a while. I've got a mate out there who works in a beach bar. Probably get me a job or something. <laughs> Why not? Hey, just think of all them gorgeous tan birds they'll be able to pull, eh, Roy? I wish I could come with you. Hey, Shell, don't you think this man deserves a medal for what he did? I don't know about that. I mean, Fred's been in since. Any road? You switched sides, on you? Well, can you blame me? I reckon Fred had it coming to him, flouncing around in them ruffles and feathers, making out he was somebody. But you showed him, Roy, didn't you, lad? Hey. Right, I've had enough. I'm off. Three days in a row I have worked and not a word of thanks. Yeah, you're right. I'll tell you something else I've decided as well. It's time that I retired. Quite right. What? You go home, get an early night, very sensible. Right. You're the winner. That's what you are. And to think. All along, I had you down as a loser. Just goes to show, doesn't it? On the contrary, what I did the other day should confirm your original opinion. You are? <laughs> Fred. <coughs> I want to apologise. Pardon? What are you apologising to him for? It should be the other way round. Button it, Les. But it... I said button it. I shouldn't have done what I did. I, I behaved in a petty and infantile manner. You did that, not to say dangerous. Right. You do really. Aye, well, I suppose we both got a bit carried away. I, I shouldn't have said what I said either, you know, about your wife's yes, leaving. Yes, yes, right. And I'm sorry for saying what I did say about you, you and Ailey. Apology accepted. Yours and all. <coughs> 
Are you sure she said she went to the shop? Yeah. Well, maybe she's gone over to see Roy and Hayley to thank them for the present. Maybe. I'll ring Candy, see if she's with her. Come on, my darling, it's all right. Mummy will be back soon. If this is just some excuse to get her out of being here, I'll kill her. Would anyone like another drink? Uh, no, no thanks. Uh, anyway, I think it's time we were off. Yeah, Ben's getting a bit tired. Um, yeah, actually, we better get off as well. Yeah. I'm so sorry about Wes. Oh, you're all right. right. Have have coat, it's coat's yeah. in the pram, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's just a good idea. Candice must have a mobile switched off. Oh, Tom, you go and have a look for her. I mean, you have more idea where she hangs out. Yeah, new shows out with And when she gets home, she's grounded permanently. Listen, um, I'm sorry about what I said earlier on. No, I, I'm sorry for the way I've been behaving recently. It don't matter. No, it does. It does. You, you, were, you were quite right. Uh, you know, it's, it's like Abraham Lincoln once said, uh, if you want to test a man's character, give him power. Well, I failed that test miserably, didn't I? Oh, I wouldn't say that. See, I allowed being chairman of the Historical Society to go to my head. I, I was determined to prove to them what I could achieve, and, and I wasn't about to let anyone stand in my way. I quite frightened myself, really. Anyway... I've apologised to Fred. Well, I think that was really big of you. Well, to be honest, what, what really clinched it was realising that I'd earned the respect of Les Battersby. That was quite a sobering thought. Oh, oh. I, uh, I've been everywhere, but I can't find her, so I think I'll go on if that's all right. Thanks, Todd. Yeah. Thank you, How can she do this to poor little Catherine? Maybe she hasn't. What do you mean? Well, what if something's happened to her? Oh, it won't have. We don't know that, do we? You remember Gary Adams? We weren't expecting that till it happened. Oh, do you know, she's got a point. Maybe we should phone the police. It's too soon for the police to be worried about well, it. Well, I think we should go through her emails. I mean, how do we know that she hasn't arranged to meet some other weirdo oh, on the I really Stop don't it. think she's done anything like that, Gail. Oh, Sarah, thank oh. heavens. You all right? Um, yeah, I'm fine. Well, what happened? Todd said that you went to the shop. I just met a couple of friends. I got talking. I, I lost track of time. I'm sorry. You're sorry? Do you realise you've completely ruined Bethany's party? Not to say everyone worried sick about you. This poor little child has been so upset. She's been wondering where you were, Sarah. I've said I'm sorry. Well, it's not good enough. I don't know what's got into you lately, Sarah. But I don't like it. I mean, you seem to think you can take off whenever you feel like it and totally disregard all your responsibilities. Your mother's right. First school, now this. Oh, I went out for a bit. So what? I spent the rest of the day preparing for this party and I didn't even flip in one one. It wasn't for you. It was for Bethany. And it's a good job somebody was thinking about her because you clearly weren't. Yeah, well, you can't have it both ways. First you tell me she's my responsibility. The next, you want to take over? Well, it's just not on. Well, what's not on is you being so selfish. Selfish? I've spent the entire holidays watching my friends go out and have a great time while I'm stuck in here looking after her. Even you have more fun than me. I have to watch your plans for the future. What clothes are you going to buy for the wedding? What furniture for the show flat? What have I got to look forward to? Nothing. I'm 15 and I feel like my life's flipping over. Beth got some nice cards. Surprised you're interested. Of course I'm interested. Oh, just not interested enough to stay for your daughter's birthday. Mum, how many times? I told you, I just lost track of the time. Right. Bethany understand that, does she? Mum, please, I feel bad enough already. Good, because I felt bad at the party. I felt bad when people were asking me where you were, and I felt bad when your daughter was looking for a mummy and you were nowhere to be found. I'll get it. If that's one of the so-called mates, you can tell them she's busy. What? You can do the work Ken set you. And when you finish that, you can look after Bethany. Hiya. Is Sarah in? She is, but it's uh, really not a good time. I just need to talk to her, you know. I, I, I know, but um, there's a queue of people want to talk to her at the moment, so can you call back later? I suppose I've got no choice, have I? That was Todd. So he popped back later. Someone else you owe an explanation to. How do you think he felt sat here on his own? Mum, I've said I'm sorry, all right? <clears throat> yeah. You always are, aren't you? Who 
hope the weather gets better for this barbecue. Yeah, we should think about getting the food in. What do you reckon? I'll do the salad, you do the meat. Oh, leave it to me. Norman Watts, king of the charcoal. If you say so. Anyway, before we do anything, we should go around and have another word with Les. We can't have people around if it's stinking like the council tip out there. No, I'd put you off your sausages, wouldn't it? Yeah, exactly. We'll go around later and sort him out. What do you mean, sort him out? Well, we're just telling him we want it clearing up and we want him to do it now. There's no point in tiptoeing around him. What? Well, it's just that we ought to be careful. Les can be very volatile. Norman, we're going around to have a friendly, neighbourly chat. I'm sure Les will be reasonable. And what if he isn't? We'll make him. Oh, morning, Betty. Morning, love. How do, Betty? I trust you're feeling a tad more refreshed this morning. I slept well, yes, if that's what you're asking. Good, good. It's just that Shelley were telling me that you've been none too happy of late. No, I haven't been very happy. Like I told her the other day, you know. I'm retiring. <laughs> retiring? Gosh, yeah, gosh, yeah. I mean it, Fred. You always do. Oh, don't worry about that. It's a little game we play. She says she's leaving, and I say we'll be very sorry to see her go. Well, you're right. How many times have you heard Betty say she's had it with this place? Every day when we're busy. She's like a pressure cooker. She lets off steam. She bangs a few pots and pans about, and when that doesn't work, she threatens to quit. The worst thing you could do is take her seriously. All right. More than all right, mate. Just have a new tattoo done. I never knew you was getting one of them. Yeah, well, I got the idea in Blackpool. Just had to work out what design. Give us a look, then. Hang on, where is it? We don't want you dropping your cacks, eh? Don't be done. Smart, isn't it? Oui. How much did that set you back? 40 quid. But it's worth every penny when it comes to pulling the birds. Oh, you reckon, do you? Of course. See, it's all part of my new image. I'm gonna find myself a new pad, I know, you know, somewhere to build up my kit. Your mum's kit, you're out, aren't you? <laughs> no, it's just not what you want, though, is it, when you take a bit of stuff home? I want to have somewhere where I can wine and dine them, you know. Now, my mum asking me if I clean my flaming tea. You know. <laughs> I hope you're not thinking of begging for your old job back. Kev wouldn't have me back even if I wanted to. Any road, or he told Vic I'll be leaving. Good. Because you're on to bigger and better things. A beefer. A beefer! Son, see? I'm plenty of the other. Yeah, maybe less. No, maybe about it. I envy you, son. In a couple of days, all this will be a memory. I'll see you later. See ya. After you. No, no, please, you must go first. No, no, I insist. Oh, well, thank you. That's very kind, considering... Uh... Thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry. Hiya. You all right? <sighs> yeah, I'm fine. Look, um, I know things are difficult at the moment, but um, if I ever you felt you needed to talk to someone, I'd like to think that you felt you could talk to me. What's the point in talking? It doesn't do anything, does it? Well, what would you like people to do? I'd like them to understand me, stop having a go at me all the time. I'm trying, I'm trying to do my best, but it is hard. I know. I can't do anything, I can't go anywhere without upsetting everyone. I only went to the arcade. Everyone does it. My mates always go. But when I do it, it feels like I've committed a crime. Well, uh, maybe it wasn't a very good time to choose to go walk about. Even you don't understand. David's got a better life than I do. I don't know, maybe... Maybe you and me should chat to your mum and try explaining how you're feeling. What's the point? Well, because if she agrees... Perhaps we could look after Bethany for a day or two this weekend, you know? Give you a bit of space. Really? You think so? Well, I can't promise anything, but that's probably what you're needing, isn't it? Bit of a breather. Oh, Richard, honestly, if you could do anything, that would be brilliant. And there's two pounds and fifty. Thanks, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Priestley, and have a wonderful time. Yes, bye. 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 Oh. 
Oh, well, she didn't even give me a tipper. I'll take that. Excuse me, madam. Now, come on, that's no way to talk about our clientele. Mm, she's always giving me a tip. Mind you, I do give an excellent shampoo. Well, I'm sure you both do to all our clients. Honestly, you girls, you don't have to go on. Yeah, but it's the tips that make all the difference, isn't it? That's what they told me at college when I started. They said apprentice hairdressers always get rubbish pay, but the tips... Uh, th th excuse me, you know who you're talking to here, madam? I mean, you've never had any complaints about the wages, have you, Matsy? I'm not getting involved. Me and Joss have just come to say hello, haven't come we? Come on, now, I've always offered a very competitive wage, haven't I? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll uh, get a coffee there, ready. Yeah, you see, now, it's not my fault if you can't control your spending, my darling. Yeah, but that's my whole point, I do. It's just that once I've paid my bills and my food and my travel, it's... Travel? Tra uh, Cost you a lot to go up and down them stairs, does it? Audrey, all I'm saying is that come the end of the week, I've never got anything left. Well, now, welcome to the modern world, lover. Hey, I hope you're not angling for a raise here. No, but... Good. Was it all right if my rent's a bit late this week? Blimey, let's. What? Uh, oh, yeah, I've not had a chance to have a tidy round this morning. Uh, you know what it's like. Yeah, sort of. So, what was it you wanted? Uh, nothing, nothing, really. We just wanted a friendly, neighbourly chat, didn't we? Oh, right, well, uh, sit down, then. Uh, right, uh, well, the thing is, uh, Les, well, Emma, Emma noticed it first. It's, it's your backyard. It's becoming a little bit of a problem. What do you mean, problem? Well, I, I know you're a busy man, difficult keeping on top of things, but... Les, uh, your backyard's a tip. It's really beginning to stink out there. Hey, you don't mince your words, do you, love? Well, I'm sorry, but I've got a baby to think of. I'm not going to risk his health... Risk his health? What are you on about? It's only a load of old cans. No, it's not, Les. It's disgusting. It's becoming a health hazard. Well, Amy, now, do you get some sort of kick out of being a busybody or what? Uh, maybe we should uh, sort of start... Les, I've asked you in a really reasonable way. You like the neighbours from hell, you two? A counsellor and a copper. Right, I think we should make a move, eh? What gives you the right to come marching in my house, telling me how to live my life? Well, I think he's got a Norman, point. sit down. Let's get one thing straight, Les. Either you sort this out now, or I'm going to be breathing down your neck until you do. It's up to you, mate. So, have you got anything in mind for the weekend? Uh, no, I don't think so. Why? Do you have to work? No, no. I'm not till I have to go away on Sunday. So I was thinking, actually, maybe we could look after Beth for a few hours, or... Even a day or two. Give Sarah a bit of a breather. Oh, you two have got this all worked out between you, haven't you? It's not a case of having worked anything out. I just thought maybe she deserves a break. Deserves a break? Well, well I thought to deserve something, you had to earn it. Gail. No, I'm sorry. I don't see how playing truant and walking out of your own daughter's birthday should give you time off for good behaviour. See, I told you this was a waste of time. What? You thought you could use Richard to get round me, is that right? It certainly wasn't anything like that. Good. Because as far as I'm concerned, she's lucky to get the support she does. You're definitely going. Can't we talk you out of it? My mind's made up, Rita. I've rung our Gordon. I'm going to spend some time with him and his family, you know, while there's still time. Oh, there's years left in you yet, Betty. Mm. And anyway, you can't retire. Where am I going to get my dinner? Mm. Oh. Betty! Our part over here, love. What's your like, eh? Oh. Slave driver to the end. Look, I'm sorry about me rent, Audrey. Yes, well... Look, love it, I know what it's like when you live on your own. It's hard to make ends meet. Yeah. Made a big difference when Bobby was there, so I could split all the bills with her. Well, why don't you try and find yourself another flatmate? I mean, you know, that would take the pressure off a bit. Uh, did I hear right, sis? You're looking for a flatmate? Might be. Well, look no further. This little red devil's looking for a nest. Ooh, is that real? Too right. I'll scab over in a couple of days. Oh, charming. But anyway, I want to move out of mum and dad's. So what do you reckon, me and you? Kirk, I had to put up with years of you when I had to live with you. Why would I put myself through that again? Through what? Weren't that bad. When you weren't borrowing me money, you were nicking me stuff. And when you weren't nicking me stuff, you were leaving your dirty, skanky underpants everywhere. Oh. She loves me really, Audrey. I can tell, yes. <laughs> hey, has Fred organised a leaving do for Betty? Hey, you're joking, aren't you? You won't even accept she's leaving. I mean, between me and you, since Eve left, he's been too busy worrying about this daffery enactment than what goes on behind that bar. Now then, ladies, smile the long faces. We're just contemplating a future without Hot Pot. Yes, Fred, you didn't tell us Betty's going. But she's not going. How many times? She's part of the furniture. Yeah, well, maybe that's the problem. How do you mean? 
Well, when you've worked somewhere for so long, folk don't really see you anymore, do they? Start taking you for granted. Betty, come here. What's the matter? Now, these ladies are labouring under the misapprehension that you are leaving. Now, I've told them that you're going to do now to the sort. I am leaving. Yes, but no, you're not. Not leaving, leaving for good. But you're not. You can't, Betty. You're, you're an institution. You're the, the lifeblood of this place. Tell her, Rita. I'm also a very senior citizen who wants to put her feet up. Now, what can I do? What, uh, shorter hours, longer breaks. Tell you what, I'll buy you a, a brand new dishwasher. Look, you can buy me whatever you like, love. But this time tomorrow, I'll be serving my last hot pot. And there's nothing you can do or say to make me change my mind. Right? <laughs> Please, please, please say yeah. But to what? To moving in with me. Oh, come on, it'd be great. Oh, what's brought all this on? Tell you, I've just had a total nightmare. I told Audrey that I can't pay me rent. So now I've got a Kirk trying to move in with me. All oh, right, I get it. Well, I'm bottom of your list, am I? No, will you wait? Don't be daft. Oh, come on, it'd be wicked. What do you reckon? Well, yeah, it could be a laugh. But, well, I'll have to talk to my mum first. We've not been in that flat long and... Well, I'll talk to her, all right? Honestly, the way you were crawling round Les, I told you he's a pussycat. Well, he wasn't a pussycat when he head-butted me. Les nutted you? Yeah, well, it was a few years back when he just moved in. I went round to tell him to keep the noise down. He told me where to stick it. I was seeing stars for days. Oh, Norman, no wonder you were nervous. I feel awful now. Why? Because I just thought you were being a wuss. Sorry, yeah. Can you have a quick word? Yeah, of course. Um, I'd better be getting back to work anyway. Remember, talk to your mum. Yeah, I will. Are you all packed then? Les has told you then. Yeah. Ibiza. Very nice. Look, can I can I talk to you? Uh, how near? Uh, I don't want to see anyone. You know, goodbyes and all that. Well, I can't really. I'm working. Look, hang on. Um, I'll have a word with Roy. See if I can knock off early. Hey, Fred. I don't know why you're looking so upset, love. It's me that's leaving. Aye. And I'm the one that drove you away. It's not much of a legacy, is it? Longest serving barmaid in Thistia Rovers. And I'm the fool that let her go. Well, I had to retire at some point, Fred. Oh, well, I, I was just so wound up in this blessed reenactment. I curse myself, Betty, I do. Grown man prancing about like a schoolboy and letting things that really matter slip away. Yeah, but I can see why it's happened. Look, I mean, you were upset, you know. You needed something to take your mind off, you know. Oh, you can say a name, Betty. I won't fall apart. But you're right. I wanted somebody else to think about. Somebody other than Eve and everything else that's been going on with my life recently. Listen, Fred Elliot, I've only got a few more hours left in this pub. I don't want to waste them propping up your ego, love. You're right. This will be your finest hour. We shall rise to the occasion, and we shall make your departure unforgettable. Oh, no. No, no, no fuss, love. Otherwise, I might go through that door before you know it. <laughs> hey, Betty, my love. What'll I do without you? Well, the same as you did with. I mean, you might have to do a bit more washing up, but I think you'll come, love. But you're doing the right thing. I mean, what is it they say? Yeah, it's a big world out there. Yeah, I know it makes sense when you say it like that, but listen to you. Can I write to you when I get settled? Sam, you're going to Ibiza. You're going to be too busy raving to worry about writing to me. Hey, yeah. Oh, Sam, how's your arm? Oh, yeah, yeah, cheers, Ailey. It's on the men, thanks. Oh, that's good. I suppose we should be thankful there weren't any more serious injuries on there, yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, Roy's been a bit weird, though. You know, just a bit distant. I'll see. Oh, I'd better go and find out what that's about, then. I'll see you later. <laughs> see ya. 
What? Haley, asking me how I am. It's nice. The people here are nice. Look, I'm rubbish about saying how I feel. You know that better than anyone, so I'm going to leave now, OK? OK. Hey, look, I won't forget you, you know that. Yeah, you too. So, got anything planned for this evening? Go on, Ram's Well, uh, look, I know it's not my business who you go out with. Yeah, not much. Yeah, but it is my business to see that you're happy and you're not, are you? Yeah, I am. I know I don't know Sarah as well as you do, but it seems to me that all she thinks about is herself. Not you, not me. She's not... just going through a rough time, that's all. Yeah, so you say. Somebody that young with kids, you know, there's always going to be complications. Ma'am, I do know that. I'm not stupid. Hey, I know you're not stupid, Todd. Sometimes I wonder what I did to deserve such a lovely, bright lad. Ma'am. Yeah, I just want what's best for you, that's all. Roy, are you sure you're all right? Only Toya mentioned that you've been a bit quiet. Well, I have been feeling a little peculiar. How do you mean? Well, the other day, I stood over Fred Elliot, the most powerful emotions surging through me. These experiences, they change us, Hayley. They change the way we perceive ourselves. Until that reenactment, I hadn't realised that I had such violent feelings within me. And now I can't help thinking about it. I keep thinking about it. I believe it is a very common symptom of post-traumatic stress disorder. What is love? Uh, flashbacks. I mean, many ex-military suffer the same problem. Roy, you do remember that you were only pretending to be a soldier, don't you? Oh, yes, but the, but the feelings engendered are, are very real. We just got a bit emotionally involved, that's all. Well, no, 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 I just think it's something we need to be aware of for next year. No, no, no. What? There will be no next year, Roy. Oh, right, well, probably right. Well, we're off. Keep an ear out for Beth, won't you? What do you think I'm going to do? Anyway, uh, we won't be long. We're just going for a quick drink. Stay as long as you like. You can trust me if that's what you're worried about. I can I? Because to be honest, Sarah, from the way you've been behaving lately, I don't know whether I know you, let alone trust you. Oh, hi, Todd, come in. Hiya. Oh, hiya, are you all right? Yes, yeah, I suppose so. Right, we're off. See you two later. Hi. I am so glad you're here. You will not believe what a cow my mum's being. Yeah. See, I know Betty says no fuss. But we can't let an event like this go unmarked. What do you think, Roy? Oh, I, I agree, Fred. No, no, yes, absolutely. Yes, I mean, it's extraordinary when you think about it, isn't it? 33 years she's 33 worked here, years. on and off. Well, we could have a staff whip round, you know, regular staff. Oh, no, no. I think we can rise to a bit more than that, Shelley. I were thinking, what about a surprise party? Oh, no, she's not going to like that. Oh, well, I oh. think it's a wonderful idea. I just wonder if we have enough time to organise it. Still, I'm sure between me and Ken, we can come up with a decent guest list. Bring in as many of the old faces as possible, have excellent laws and such like, and you've heard a number of people that she's talked about <laughs> over the she's years. She's a living piece of history. Really. Yes, well, I don't think we'll bother about the history bit, if you don't mind. Hey, <laughs> what's going on here? Oh, we're planning your party, Betty. How do you fancy a naked man jumping out your cake? Lovely. <laughs> Double bluff, she'll yeah. never guess. Do you want another can? You're all right. So, do you want to watch a video? I've got that like, Jeepers Creepers off Candice. Mm, no time. What do you want to do then? Don't know. Talk. So, you're going to tell me? Tell you what? What happened at Best Party? Where'd you go? Oh, don't you start. You're as bad as my mum. I don't get it. I thought you were going for ice cream or something. Next thing I know, I'm in a room full of people I hardly know. People I don't even want to spend my afternoon with. 
I'm sorry, all right? So why'd you leave me? I don't know. I didn't mean to. It was just all doing my head in with the party and everything, and then I bumped into Candice and Aidy. Aidy? Surprise, surprise. I thought he'd have something to do with it. And what do you mean by that? You just can't keep away from him, can you? Yes, I can. No, you can't. Why don't you just come out and say it, eh? You fancy him, you've been seeing him behind me back. No, of course I'm not. Why would I even mention him if I've been seeing him? I don't know, cos you think I'm soft and I'm stupid. I'm just going to put up with it. Oh, Todd, will you stop being so stupid? You know, I should have just listened to my mam. She sussed you straight away. You don't care about me. You use me when you need someone to keep you company or look after Beth. Your mum said that? Yeah. And she's right, isn't she? See ya. Where are you going? Away from you! And you can tell ladies, welcome to you. You wait finished. Todd! Not a word out of place, mind. We can keep our mouths shut, Fred. Tight as a line, Fred. Tight as a line. Morning. Morning. Oh, hello, Betty, love. Welcome to your last day at work. Oh, thanks very much, love. Just hope I'm not going to cry. No, not until you pull your last spine. You can do what you want then. Before that, it's business as usual. We don't any emotional traumas on the boss's time. She's not emotional, are you, Betty? Well, not as a rule, no. Tough as nails, aren't you? You've only to look at her. Betty's nobody's fool, but she's not tough. I used to be called winsome. Did you? By whom? Oh, nobody you knew. Well, I think it suits you. Do you, love? Oh, I'm really going to miss you, Betty. Oh, it's lovely of you to say so. If they're going to miss you, because they're going to have to do your work. Yeah, oh. we won't. We can't take Betty's place. Oh. And we're not going to even try. Oh, isn't that lovely? Very nice. You don't have to stay in all day, you know. Oh, I can go to the park with Bethany. And we can play on the kiddie swings and the bright red seesaw. I spent many a long hour with you there. Not when you were 15. Oh. Let's not have all that again. Things are as they are, and we both know how we feel on the subject. I'm not trying to have an argument. Good, cos you're not going to get one. Right, I want to do some housework this afternoon, so why don't you ring Todd and see if he wants to go out somewhere? I'll mind Bethany. She won't get any fresh air. Then I'll put her in the garden with Barney. You can't. She'll start chewing the grass again. If she can find a patch that Barney hasn't chewed, she'll be very lucky. I just don't want you thinking I've abandoned her. Oh, all right, then please yourself. You can stay in a mope or you can go out and mope. I don't care. Let me know when I get back from Rita's. I'll go out. Thought you might. When was the last time we had this out? Must have been last summer. Oh, I can still smell Les. Smell is rubbish, you mean? It's the same thing. Do you know what? It's getting worse. It's going to put people off the food. I'll tell you what, why don't I nip down to Freshco's and get a couple of those indoor barbecues? They're really very good. Oh, so we can all sit in the kitchen, prisoners of stench. It's not my idea of a barbecue. Well, he did promise you'd shift it. Yeah, well, he hasn't. Well, it's early yet. It's 11 o'clock. That's early for Les. Did he say he'd shift it today? Yeah, and he's working tomorrow. Right, I'm going to go around there and tell him I want it shifting now. Give yourself half an hour, eh? Spare yourself the sight of, of Les in his grubby vest. Do you know, it might be an idea if he dumped himself on the tip as well as his rubbish. It's a matter of getting in touch with all the Rovers Pass landlords. Well, Jack and Vera are handy enough. I mean, they'll come to the party whether anybody else does or not. Well, you'll have Natalie's number or you can get that from, from uh, Kevin. Has anybody thought of Billy Walker? Yes, but I've no idea where he is. Well, I have an old address. Whether it's any use or not. OK, I'll give that a try, and I've left messages with Bette Gilroy. Hi, Matt. Oh, lovely. Oh, Hello. Nice. Ken's just filling us in about the arrangements for the surprise party. Oh. Now, if anybody would like to help, Fred and I will be more than grateful. But it needs to be organised today. But Betty's behind the bar, so it's got to be done from my house. Well, I'll give you hands. Yeah, I'll do what I can. Yeah. Well, I can't, I'm afraid, because Norman and Emma have invited me to their barbecue. Are you all right, Emily? Oh, yeah, just a bit of a headache. Oh, right. right, well, we've got enough people to be getting on with. Anyway, I'll get back to you all later. <laughs> OK, well, you mind the shop for a minute. I'll just go and get Billy Walker's address. Yeah, OK, yeah, right, yeah, well. Really nice oh, 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 oh. Shall we invite Joe from the factory for a pint? Hmm. There'll be someone different to talk to, right? Why, are you bored of me? No, you know, it's uh, fascinating as ever. I, uh, I just want to smell out, that's all. I think he's all right, but I can't stand him. Well, I think she's a good judge of character. 
Is he? Mm -hmm. You might like him if you get to know him. Oh, no, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. What's up with him? Touch of jealousy. What, a Virginia? Yeah, they took her out once. Yeah, but, you know. What? Oh, babe. All right. Well, Deb doesn't think that he's good enough for her. Why? Jailbird, isn't he? Flew straight from strange ways to Underworld. Uh, you talking about Joe Carter? <laughs> Nothing gets past you, does it? What was he in jail for? I can't remember. How long did he serve? I'm not sure. So, uh, who told you that he'd been in jail anyway? <sighs> Mike Baldwin. He told Dev, and he told him to keep it quiet. Yeah, all right, I'm not going to say anything. Oh, honest. Oh, you better not, I mean it. Baby, who am I going to tell? Grab yourself a can or there's wine if you prefer. Uh, I think you'll have to wait for food, though. Uh, yeah, well, we've just got a fire going, you know, it's been a little bit slow. Yeah, I think the charcoal was damp. Must have left it against the wall. Is it the damp I can smell? No, it's the rubbish in Les Bass's biz yard. Well, there must be a lot of it. I mean, you know, I don't think he's up to this bin since Janice left him. Well, what's he got in there? It smells like unfit meat. Well, I don't want Joshua breathing in days. He's only got small lungs. He's very delicate. Take him inside, Max. There's plenty of room for two caricots. Look, the smell, it'll go in a bit. Less as he shift it in a minute. You said that an hour ago. Look, you're going to have to go down there and tell him. Why don't we have something to eat first? No, I think I took him inside. He doesn't like it out here. Well, sure she was asleep. Yeah, a mother knows how a baby feels. Anyway, you've not brought Ben out. Yeah. She's very protective. She's right, though. I haven't brought Ben out here. Well, let's give him more time. He's had enough time already. Barbecue. I know. We've got food here. I bet you have. And we're about to start cooking it, so I'm just warning you. You don't have to warn me. I don't want to tell him twice. I'll put my shirt on and I'll come straight through. <sighs> oh, great. And the food, the drink, and the plastic plates will be stored in my house so they can be rushed into the rovers at the last minute. I'll supply the alcohol naturally. Naturally? But we're not having much luck with past landlords and landladies. Oh. No. No, no, I left a message on Natalie's answer phone. Bet Gilroy didn't answer. And Billy Walker vacated that address she gave me years ago. Destination unknown. Has anybody contacted Gordon? She's going to see him any road. So it'll be even more of a surprise if he turns up first. That's not a bad idea. I've got his number. I'll get onto it right oh, away. Good. Keep us informed, will you? Absolutely, yeah. Hello, Hello Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. Hello. 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 Don't think I'm following you. You've got it all wrong about me and Aidan Critchley. So what? I'm not going out with him. You're not going out with me either. We're just friends. I've got loads of friends. Yeah, and I see him knocking at your door in relays. Anything else to tell me? I just thought you'd want to know the truth. No, I've got more important things on my mind. Like what? Like a refill for me pen. Well, I think they're over there. I'm looking for a magazine. They're over there. Right, well, I'll see you around then. Don't count on it. Oh, come here. What? Are you spying on us? No, I just saw you going into Deb's. Look, uh, I think there's something you should know. What about Deb? About Joe Carter. Oh, I don't want to listen to any gossip. Yeah, this isn't gossip. I mean, this is gospel truth. Oh, I love gospel truth. That's the best sort of gossip. Come on, tell us. Do we really need to hear it? Is it you got your own suspicions, haven't you? No. Oh, take the notice of Ailish. Let's see the best in people. Come on, dish the dirt. Joe Carter has been in jail. Jail? Has he? That's brilliant. Mm. And he's only just got out. What do you mean, only just? I mean, last month he's paying his debt to society. This month he's lording it over you and me. Does Mr Baldwin now? Yeah, of course he does. You see, that's what he thinks of his workforce. Put some crim in charge of us. If he's been released, he's no longer a criminal. Excuse me, most criminals re-offend. What did he do? Murder or something? I mean, they get out in a couple of years, murderers, don't they? That is sensationalist nonsense. They only ever get released on parole and they can be locked up again at any moment. You're not half miserable today. I've been in prison, Fizz. Yeah, but you didn't do out. Well, for all you know, he might not have done out either. And what he did? Beat people up, robbed them. I mean, he looks like a hard case. Well, he's been all right with me. Yeah, but you suck up to him. I do not. Uh, yes, you do. So you're a yes man, Hayley. I like to stick up for myself. You fly off the handle. You can be very bad-tempered. Uh, what do you expect? And I've got some guy giving me orders that should be locked up. Well, I don't like to say this, Karen. What? But haven't you and Steve been locked up? More than once. Yeah, you mate. Yeah, it's really nice. Hey! 
A bit underdone, this cure like that. Can I get another one? Help yourself. Cheers. That isn't very hygienic. I'm not chucking it in your place, am I? Well, I live in the next house. It's going in my direction. I'm a good neighbour, me. I'm saving my friends, Emma and Curly, the chore of clearing up. You should all take your rubbish home with you. Hey, I'll have one of them with you, Curly, while you're at it, lad. Ah, cheers. Les, we've got a bin for the rubbish. Yeah, well, so have I. Then why is it all over your backyard? Because the bin's not big enough. Your place is a mess. I tell you what, I bet you're glad you don't live this side of the street, aren't you? If I had muck like that next door to me, it'd put it to council. Yeah, well, I might just do that. I've got Rosie and Sophie to think about. Hey! Get off my back now! All right! Ah! Ashley! Ashley! What's the matter? There's something in there. It ran across the floor in front of me. What a mouse, you mean? No, much bigger than that. It had a great big long tail. Oh. No, don't tell me. I thought he was going to run all over Joshua. Just had to pick him up and bring him out. It's all right, Max. Go and have a look and see what it is. He needn't bother. We know what it is. Talk about my backyard. You dirty so-and-sos. What do you mean, Les? You're much worse. Your place must be filthy. That house is infested. You've got rats. <laughs> It came from over there and went that way. Oh, it's yours, Les. It came out your backyard. Did you see it? No. What are you on about, then? Look, my house isn't dirty, Les, and it doesn't stink. Did it have my address on its back? It might as well have done. No one accuses me of harbouring vermin. I'm stating the obvious, Les. It's obvious that that rat lives here. I bet you've got a load more. When do you get time to clean this place? You know, at work all day. That's enough, Les. Anyone can see the state of your backyard. Have you seen any rats in there? We would if we came and looked. Yeah, well, you'll have to get a search warrant, cos I'm not letting you back in without one. Thanks for the barbecue, Curly. But I won't eat any more of your food. I don't think it's safe. You'd better get out of here. My pleasure. Oh, Betty. It's your last day. Yeah. After 33 years. <sighs> I weren't even alive 33 years ago. Oh, neither was I. Oh, time flies, you know, when you're enjoying yourself. Till I think it's time I went, you know. Well, I'll be sorry to see you leave. Yeah, me too. I'll miss you better. Oh, oh thanks for saying that. Isn't that lovely, Fred? It is, and no less than you deserve. Oh. Hey, I'll buy you a drink later. I don't want you getting tipsy too soon. <laughs> I'll look forward to that. <laughs> Fred? Wow! Um, you and Betty's leaving, and um, you're not here very much. I'm really more than a few minutes away. Yep, yeah, you don't spend much time behind the counter, do you? I'm behind my butcher's counter. I can be reached in an emergency. Yep, yeah, but you need a manager on the premises, Fred. Oh, you're putting yourself forward, are you? Yes! Well, don't bother, I say, don't bother. I own this place, I run it, I'm more than capable. One chief, many Indians. That's my motto. Let's go, Candy, she's stuck here, we're not. My mum will be back in a minute. I can go out then. You'll have the kid in tow. No, I won't. Anyway, I'm not waiting. Well, where are you thinking of going? Bowling. I'll come. We're leaving now. Well, I can follow you. I know where the bowling alley is. Are you sure? You can't see it from the crash. Look, I'll meet you at the top of the street. I need to have a word with Sarah. I'll give you five minutes. You fancy him, don't you? No, I don't. Yes, you do. You've got a desperate look about you. I'm desperate to get out of here. Yeah, well, don't shove him where you're not wanted. You don't own him. Well, I don't need to, cos he's not my type. I get on better with older men. Yeah, grandad's pensioners, you mean. Aidy's in our class, Sarah. He's good for a boring Sunday afternoon, but that's about it. Candies, you don't know what a boring Sunday afternoon is. Whatever. Fred. I know what you're going to say. Shelley's already sounded me out. Fred, I've got loads more experience than Gina. Oh, you're going to break the manager's position again, are we? Yeah, as if you didn't know. Uh, uh, well, I hadn't planned to put anyone in that position, so it's up to you to prove that I need a manager. Well, you definitely need one. Yeah, one who knows what she's doing. Yeah, and one who's full of energy with fresh ideas. Yeah, and one who's not green round the gills. Yeah, and not setting away. But please, please, please. Look, Fred, we need a manager. You agreed on this? Yes! Fine. One vacancy, two barmaids. 
fight it out. Anyway, Ailey said being in prison was no big deal. It's not. Yeah, like I believe you. You were steeped at time. Yeah, when he was a kid, Janice. I think it's a little bit different now, don't you? So you've reformed him, have you? Uh, Steve got done from Robin. Most kids at that age get done for stuff like that. When you're in prison at Joe Carter's age, well, now that is for something serious. Who do you think you are, Karen? You're Steve. Went to big, strong, grown-up prison. Not boys still. Just like Les. I even think Dennis did time. I tell you, women like us, we've just got to take what we can get. Yeah, well, I don't. <clears throat> got a little bit of self-respect. Self-delusion, you mean? No one kind, honest and gorgeous is going to bother with yours. If you see an half-decent bloke walking up the street, you've just got to grab him. Yeah, well, Gina grabbed your car soon enough, didn't she? I mean, he still had the arrows on his shirt. Then again, that's the type of girl she is. Yeah, the same as us. And it's not likely to change. Take no notice. We all know what he's like. Yeah, well, even so, uh, Ashley and I have to leave. You've hardly eaten anything. I, Josh wants to go home. Maxine, there's no firm in here. Yeah, I know, I know that. What was that? Some rats! Oh, no. No. not another one! Oh, I don't believe it. Well, I do. They live in colonies. They're never alone. Yeah, Ash, I think we've got to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see ya. Yeah. Bye, you Anna. Know, thank you. Bye. You can't blame them. They have a baby. So do we, Emily. Look, you don't think there's any more, dear? I hope not. The rat walked out the house, down the yard, and through a hole in the wall into Leslie's. <sighs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll cripple him. No, before any of us do anything, I think we should search this house. Why? We know where these rats are coming from, but we don't know where they're going to. Hey, you'll tell me if I'm getting in your way, wouldn't you, Mum? Tell you, you've been in my way for the last 20 years. That's what kids are for. Oh, I play loud music. Not as loud as Les has. Have my mates round. I like your mates. And then, you know, sometimes I need my peace and quiet when I'm going to do my studying and that. I wouldn't want to stop you from being sociable. Well, all right, fair enough. If you want me out of the house, I'll just, um, I'll come here. I mean, what better place than Rovers? Well, what if it's shut? What, you mean in the morning? Well, I'll just go and see Ryan Ailey. I mean, it's only a price of a cuppa, isn't it? Hey, are you still coming with me tomorrow night? What? Yeah, to Betty's party. Me and you together, huh? Knock him dead. Oh, yeah. So who told you? It doesn't matter. So? You knew he'd been in jail, then? I tried to warn you. You're pathetic. Why? Because I don't like the idea of you being led on? Well, unless it's by you. I don't like the idea of you being hurt. Do you know what? You've got a nerve. I'm going to let Shelley serve you, cos I'm going on my break. You deserved that. But it was worth it. Whoever whispered in her ear has my thanks. It wasn't me. Well, I thought you might let something slip. Dr Gina. OK, well, let's not launch an investigation into it. Let's just say that he's not good enough for her, and now she knows it. Hey, check her out. <laughs> Come on. Wait for me! Run! I can't! Move yourself! You're too fat! Oh, wait! Candice! I'm gonna oh, break you! You're mad. You're well rid. Oh, it's not Candice she's running after. The length of that skirt! Ma'am, all girls wear that sort of stuff. Yeah, well, just look at her track record. She's going nowhere, Todd. You are. Mm. Do you want me to get you? Oh, no, no, I'll wait. I'll just... I can't bring myself to tell her. I'm just going to be wanting my rent soon, yeah. And my mum ain't living on her own. Yeah, I understand. It's all right. Ladies! Gentlemen, your attention, please. A piece of history is unfolding before your very eyes. Everybody's favourite barmaid, Mrs Betty Williams, is pulling her last pint at the Rovers returning. I'm not, you know. I'm mid-shift. No, that's what you think. No, no. <laughs> now, we can't let this moment go unacknowledged. Mm, right. <laughs> mm, yes, well, you said you didn't want to fuss. You told me that yourself. So the least I can do is let you have the rest of the afternoon off. Yeah. Well, thank you, friend, but no, I'll stay. No, no, no. You leave that to the younger generation. You can start planning your retirement. <sighs> now, come into the back and you can draw your last ever wages. <laughs> now, come on, friends, patrons, 
drinkers, let's hear it for Betty. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's lovely. The end of an era. Yeah. Yeah, well, I suppose it is, yeah. Mm, right. Thank you. That's it. We've looked everywhere now. There are no rats in this house. Just the big one next door. You've got to get on to him, Curly. Well, I suppose I should get on to him, but I can't face Mr Battersby at the moment. One headache at a time's enough. Well, you go and rest. We'll see you later. Thank you. I want you back. All right, thank you. Bye. Bye. See, see you. Ya. Bye. Well, look on the bright side, eh? Maybe they'll stay in his yard from now on. <sighs> no chance. Norman. What? I don't believe this. Get out! Get out! Right, that's it. I'll give you five minutes to galvanise yourself, and if you don't do something, then I will. 33 years. Over. All finished. <laughs> See, I'm sorry, Betty. What we one thing and another, I've added it up all wrong. Your wages, your overtime, your bonuses, your holiday entitled. But you'll have to come back tomorrow. Send it, Fred. Let somebody drop it off. No, no. You come back in as a customer. That's all I am now, isn't it? And we shall be very glad to see you. Oh, Betty. We'll miss you, won't we? We will, yeah. Oh, but you'll not be far away. Well, it's not the same as working here, is it? Who's looking after that bar? Nobody wants anything. They'll have money out at till. Get back in there. <gasps> See you then, Betty. Okay. See ya. Bye. All finished. Yes, love. They were nice, though, weren't it? Yeah. Do you think I should have had a party? No, it were your decision. Now, can you see yourself out? I'm needed. You're needed, are you? <sighs> Wish I was. We've seen three rats today, Les. Well, you know the reason why, don't you? I've got a six-month-old baby. Hey! Them rats are in your house, not mine. They've come from here. Oh, aye. Come on, show me. Where? Where, eh? There's a nest in this yard. And you're going to clean it up? Oh, aye, in your dreams. Yes, you are, cos if your rats come anywhere near my son... I'm they like... are not my rats. They are your rats, so don't poke your nose in. I'll do more than that. Oh, aye, what are you going to do? Raid the place? I'll have you in court. Oh, Push you off, I'm not bothered by you. There it is. That's where they're coming from. Look, look there. Where? You're seeing things, you are. You are. There's, there's nothing there. Listen, you! You sort it out, or else! Or else what? Or else! Forget police procedure. I'll do something to you that hurts. Oh, I... Are you threatening me? Yes, I am. I think he's got the message. Have you, Les? Have you got the message? Oh, go home and brush your... Yes. Leave him, leave him! He's been told. I'll leave you this time, Les, but I'm coming back. And if this place is still a tip, no one's going to stop me sorting you out. Not Norman, not anyone. You got that. Those rats have got to go. Yes, I know that already. Yeah, which for a start means all that rubbish in next door's yard's got to be shifted. Emma, you don't have to convince me. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah, well, get on with it then. Me? Yes, you, because Les Battersby will sit on his backside till the rats eat the settee from underneath him. Get onto the council this morning. Who will it be for that sort of thing, environmental health? Now, wait a minute. It sounds a bit like informing on your next-door neighbour, does it? Yeah, but our next-door neighbour should have got the rat catchers in himself, and has he? No. Will he? No. Not if I know the idle beggar. Yeah, all right. Hiya. All right, Les. Hiya. Uh, I just wanted to let you know about our furry friends. They're not our furry friends, Les. They're rotten, stinking vermin. That's why I'm here, to put your minds at rest. I'm tackling the problem this very day. No danger. Les is on the job. It's as good as sorted. Good lad. I'm glad to hear it. Right, that's all I came to tell you, so I'll be off. Oh! And by the way, Curly. What? You make a wonderful mother. <laughs> Right, see, what, what I want to know about Joe Carter is this. No, what, what, why has Baldwin took him on when he's been in Nick? Maybe they're all pals. No. They don't seem like old pals when you're talking and that. Mm. Not to me, anyway. I bet Baldwin's his dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, cos from what you hear, he's put himself about a bit in his time, Baldwin. Fizz, don't be such a daft beggar. <laughs> no, but straight, though. How come Baldwin's took you on? Cos he probably don't know he's been in Nick. No, he does, though, according to Dev. So what baffles me, why would he let him anywhere near his pay cash? Well, I'd like to know what he's been in prison for. So ask him, then. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you're too scared, so I will. Yo. Morning, ladies. Morning. Ladies? Who's he calling ladies? He didn't mean you, Karen. You're with the rest of us. <laughs> Do you reckon it's true, then, about Joe being in prison? I suppose it must be. I know one thing for sure. They've really enjoyed me getting the bad news. Yeah, but have you talked to Joe about it? No, I'm not going to either. I don't even want to see him. Mm -hmm. Do you really mean that? Yeah, I do. I mean, he wasn't honest with me, was he? I'm, I'm not going to get involved with men who weren't honest with me. Not again. <laughs> you should be so lucky. By the time you find out the line, you're in over your head, love. Well, I've heard I'm laying on food, you know, which means that the stumble come will take advantage. So that's what we're laying on. No need to come out. Crisps? A few bowls on bar, not too full. They'll only go soggy. And peanuts? Salted mind. Get some thirsty, get some soap in. Aren't we doing any sandwiches? Well, they'll have had the tea, won't they? I might pop over to the shop and uh, bring over some dinky pies that our Ashley hasn't got rid of. Hang on, shh. Turn out. Betty Love, what brings you here? Oh, Shanks, it's Bonnie, what do you think? You told me to come in and collect me wages. Did I? Yes. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, I've not had time, love. Look, how much time do you need to get what I've got coming? It's not as if I'm wheeling it off in a barrow, is it, on your wages? Yes, well, yes, but it all takes time, you know. Oh. <laughs> you know, it, well, it's got to be worked out, has not it? it? Yeah. Over time and deductions yeah. and that. I've been run off my feet. Have you? Yes. Mm. See, listen, would you bear with me till later? Say, half past five this after? I suppose I'll have to do. <laughs> Publicans. I've shot them. Oh, hello. Got it finished then? Uh, just about, oh, yes. Uh, it took me and Peter hours. Oh, well, yeah. Not bad, I suppose. Well, that's fame praise. We're very proud of it. Yes. Oh, oh, um, up in I think it's going to rain. Well, well, I just wanted to know that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, morning, Betty. Morning, morning Betty. Morning, morning. 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 OK. Aidy! How come you're not in school today? I didn't feel like it today. How come you're not? I have to take Bethany to the clinic. Oh, uh, well, I'm going into town now. You want to come? Yeah, great. Um, if Bethany can come. No, come on, you can't take a little kid place I fancy going. Well, there's no one to mind her and I can't just leave her. Well, forget it then. See ya. Oh, by the way, I finished with Todd. Yeah? See you around. You're looking particularly pleased with yourself today, oh. Norris. Thank you. Am I, Rita? Oh, that's highly perceptive of you. I do have reason to be somewhat elated. You've come into money. No, oh, even better than that. I have been accepted as a volunteer for the Commonwealth Games. That's better than coming into money. Well, to me it is, yes. Oh. I mean, they're, they're very selective, you know. I mean, you have to be a committed team player with a positive attitude and a strong desire to have fun. Even so, you got through? Uh, Please, don't be flippant, Rita. I'm thrilled. I mean, for two whole weeks, I shall be at the centre of a great event. Eh? Rubbing shoulders with the elite, distinguished visitors, VIPs from all over the Commonwealth. <laughs> Mind you, in private, I still refer to it as the Empire. <laughs> hey, you could be drummed out for that. Uh, Hang on a minute. What about your job here? I think if you check the files, you will find I booked the relevant two weeks ages ago. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, when I first applied, I shall be using my holiday entitlement. Well, you be careful. How do you mean? Don't let them have you for a mug. I mean, if they give you a job pulling javelins out of that turf, you watch your back. That's all I'm saying. All right, look, come on. It's an easy way of doing this, all right? You're lining up so it's just over the edge of your last step. All right? That's it through. Got it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you've forgotten how to use a sewing machine, have you, Karen? No. And uh, neither of you, by the looks of it. So go on, what did you learn on? Is it uh, sewing mailbags? Or do they not do that now? You what? Hey, it's three o'clock. It's not knocking off time. So come on, let's get some work done. So I just thought it'd be nice to give orders instead of taking them all the time. So you work, Karen. That includes you. 
right between the eyes. Hey, what's he look on his face? Just give it a rest, Karen. Yeah. And like he says, get some flaming work done instead of leaving it to the rest of us. Hey. <laughs> You've been shooting your mouth off. What? Oh, you word. It doesn't say much working out. My machinists know I've been inside, and you were the only one round here who knew that. Well, no, Baldwin knows. It was him who told me. Hmm. Mike's in Spain. Yeah, so? Doesn't mean he couldn't let one or two people in on your recent uh, experiences. But, yeah, I did mention it to a cousin of mine. He must have let it slip. Still, didn't think you were the type to be embarrassed so easily. Who's embarrassed? I'm here to make sure you know that I know who put the knife in. Well, the way I see it, maybe some people are entitled to know the facts. People like Gina, for instance. OK, sunshine. Now I know exactly where I stand with you. Mm. But do you know exactly where you stand with Gina? Oh, <coughs> oh. Jack and the Scotch Vera. Here. Strain your face. It's party time, innit? Yeah, I'm not moved. The times I've heard our Jack say that at bedtime. <laughs> You've got to force yourself. That's what I tell our Jack. Will you give all of it? I fucking believe in you. Ah, oh, medium, yeah. Sherry, oh. Emily. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers. Shouldn't you send a taxi for Betty? No, no. I should take the surprise away. Well, how can you be sure she'll come? Oh, yes. She has to come to get her wages. I've enticed her, you see. It's the only way. One thing I've learned in my life. You cannot get a pig to run after an empty swill bucket. <laughs> Gordon! Good to see you! You too, Caroline. <laughs> oh, it's good to be here, Ken. Isn't it, Caroline? At long last. It's taken us six and a half hours to get here from Wimbledon. The motorway was beyond belief. Still, we got here in the end. Well, Betty's going to be so thrilled to see you both. Oh, wouldn't have missed it for the world, would we? We wouldn't have dared. Well, let's have a drink, eh? Hang on, hang on, this is on me. You'll be Betty's lad, I take it. That's right. And this is my wife, Caroline. Oh, and she's lovely. Uh, Red Elliot landlord. Your mother's been a Trojan here. She's been a grenadier. It won't be the same pub without her. I say, it won't be the same pub. Ah, good stuff makes a good pub. Dedicated cellar man, happy smiling bar stuff. Some more than others. Now, see, put that wallet away. Your money's no good in here. Well, not for your first drink, any road. All right, ladies, thanks very much. I'll see you tomorrow morning, all right? Yeah, you up. Unless we go off the wall in the middle of the night. <laughs> Something on your mind, Karen? Something you want to say? No, just wondering. You know, no law against being curious now, is there? And what is it you want to know? I want to know what you were in for. I mean, go on, was it something sad, like whipping knickers off washing lines or... Uh... Pack it in, Karen. Yeah, give it a rest. So? Gonna tell us. Shall I tell you why she's interested? Cos her husband's been inside. Twice, actually. Thieving. That were the first time. Shut up, Janice. And then the second time. What were that for? Oh, ah, yeah. Conspiring to pervert the course of justice. That were it. Right, just keep your nose out. Oh, come on, Karen. If you can ask him, why can't I ask you? I mean, what do you want? Something nice and juicy to chat about over your tea. What is it? All right, all right, come on, that's enough. Let's all go home. Tomorrow, let's get a good start. We've got an order to get out, OK? Can he not fight his own battles? Karen? There's something I'd better tell yeah. you. No, it's not what you want to know. It's what you need to know. You have been bone idle today. Now, any more of it, any more disruption, and you'll have cause to regret it. All right. I hope you understand me. Oh, it's yeah. the least we can do, give your yeah. mum a bit of believe in do. I mean, she's been here for 30 odd years, hasn't she? Yeah, it will be. Bye, Gina. You think you'll stop here that long? How about you? I can't imagine being that old. Bye, so like but you will. <laughs> oh, yes, it's very pleasant. Oh. All right, if you're into tennis, huh? Yeah, me and our Jack thought about moving down south at one time, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael's real, though. Yeah. Right. But then we thought, well, we're all right as we are. Well, do you see, Caroline, if, if you live near a decent chippy, then why shift? Why, indeed. Right. Betty's on her way. She's just coming down the street. Oh, right. Gordon, Gordon, Caroline, you sit at the table, we'll stand in front, and then she won't spot you right away. I'm very surprised for her. Shh. Shh. 
<laughs> Evening. <laughs> What's up? What's everybody looking at me for? Surprise, surprise, Betty! It's a party for you! <laughs> oh, oh. And look who's here! Hello, oh, Mum! <laughs> Lovely seeing you. Oh, I'm that flustered. I didn't expect any of this. Give it a kiss. Oh, that is wonderful. Oh, God. <laughs> You're a dark horse, you, Norris. This Commonwealth Games stuff. Do you know, I never would have believed it. Oh, I've always been public-spirited, Rita. I mean, for instance, I never fail to rebuke antisocial dog owners. Eh? Uh -huh. You know, pavement fouling. I always speak to the person responsible if I see them doing that. Yes, but I didn't have you down for the sporty type. Oh, well, it's true. I've, I've never gone in for your field events, uh, and I've never been one to hurl myself around muddy football pitches, but some sports I do pursue actively. Ooh. I wish I could say the same for Emily, but try as I might, I can't persuade her to join me. What sort of sports have you been suggesting to her? Ping pong. I offered to buy a ping pong table so we could set it up in front room, but she, you know, she was extremely negative about it. And when I suggested the possibility of a small trampoline for the backyard, she wouldn't even discuss it. Let's go to Betty's farewell do. I think we both could do with a drink. Uh, well, I would have expected a better turnout than this, to be honest. Well, it's early doors yet, Peter. This place will be packed later on. Yeah, well, if all the people have eaten Betty's hot pot over the years, we're laid end to end. Uh, the police will be in and he'll never get his licence back. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, she's going to miss this place, you know, Betty. Mind you, don't blame her for going. Catch me working at 80. Oh, I don't know, Vera. I think that's one thing that's kept her going, hasn't it? I mean, she, she's carried on working, she's stayed fit and healthy. Yeah, well, a lot of truth in that. See, Kenneth knows about these things. I mean, take you, my little swamp dog. The last thing I want to see is you turning into some kind of vegetable because you go and give up work. But I am still working at Roy's Cafe. Well, yes, yes, but an hour here, an hour there, that isn't proper, is it? Whereas I know that they're taking girls on at the bottle factory. No, at my age, they're not. Well, you won't know till you inquire, will you? I mean, you don't look your age. They'd be glad to take somebody on like you. Oh, I know what your game is. Yeah, you would like me going out, slaving away while you're still in bed. And then when I come back knackered, you'd be off supping ale, spending my wages. Right, well, there's my round, shall it? when you've got a minute. Okay, nice. I'll, uh... Oh, Rita, good timing, I'm in the chair. What are you having? I hope this isn't interfering with any of your plans. I mean, you know, coming all this way. Of course it hasn't. As soon as we heard they were having a send-off for you, we said we had to be there, didn't we? Oh, yes. Well, it's been a wonderful surprise seeing you both. Now then, you're stopping at my house tonight. I'm not having you wasting your money in any hotel. Oh, no, we're stopping with you. Oh. And listen, what do you think of coming back to Wimbledon? Yeah, of course. I mean, well, you know how I love to visit you. I don't mean just to visit you. I mean for keeps. You've lived on your own long enough. Come and live with us. <laughs> see, see, see. Oh, here's Mummy now, look. Hello, Mummy. Hello, Mummy's home. Hiya. Who's a lovely boy? Eh? Has he been okay for you? Yeah, he's been fine. And he's not slept much, which means we might be all right tonight. Oh, great, because I've had a pig of a day. What about uh, next door's yard? Has he shifted that rubbish yet? Dunno, we've not been out all day. Oh, well, let's go and have a look, because I suspect... Les batters up his idea of a third job and my idea of two very different things. Oh, I don't believe this. Norman! Yeah? It's still the same tip if he hasn't touched it. So look. Oh, there's rubbish down there that wasn't there this morning. He swore he was going to get rid of it. Well, maybe, maybe he's been tied up at work all day. Yeah, and maybe he hasn't. It's not good enough. I'm not standing for it. Emma! Emma, calm down! No, I won't calm down. He needs telling, and if you won't do it, then I will. Hello, Flower. How are you diddling? Les, you said you were going to shift this muck heap and get rid of the rats. I know, I know. It's all in hand. No, it's not in hand, Les. It's still in your backyard now. Shift it. If we just shift it, what happens? The rats run out. And where do they go? Your yard. Somebody's yard, anyway. You see, I'm trying to be a good neighbour. You could have fooled me. And I want to get rid of the problem. I don't want to shift it onto somebody else. That means 
kill the rats. And this is how we do it. Ta-da! A cat? Not any old mug, eh? This is Rossi, lent to me by a pal of mine. This cat is your champion. He is the rat catcher's rat catcher. Aren't you, Rossi? Yes, we're all fine. David did his dad's for a couple of days. Mm. Sarah's given Bethany a tea. Mm. What about you? You behaving yourself? <laughs> of course I trust you. I miss you too. Anyway, hope it all goes well. Yeah, I look forward to that too. You know I do. Bye. Richard sends his love to you and Bethany. Oh, sure. You know, I don't think you know how lucky we are to have Richard. And I don't mean just me. I mean all the family. There's not everybody that would take us all on and try to build a future for us, including you. Yes, I know. Richard's OK. He's more than OK. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go and get ready for Betty's do. Oh, by the way, uh, I'm taking Sally for a night out tomorrow night, try and cheer her up. She's had a bit of a rough time lately. Mm, I know the feeling. And David's still at his dad's, so you'll be on your own. You'll be OK, won't you? Of course I will. I'm not a little kid, you know. Yeah, all right. There's no need to jump on me for everything I say. I was only meaning that if you wanted some company, I'd ask Emily to come mm, in for a couple right, of... Yes, thanks. OK. I'll go and get changed. Hey, Bethany, might have a little party, eh? Invite Aidy round. What do you think? He's nice, isn't he, Aidy? said this morning, get onto the council. I know, I know. Yeah, and would you? No, right, no more faffing, Norman. Phone the rat catchers and get them round here. I can't ring them now, can I? Not at this time. They've all gone home, there's no one in the office. Oh, Christian. What do you propose doing, then? Well, I don't know. Uh, hey, what about, what about the hall between our yard and Les's yard? What about it? Well, we could block it up. Block it up? Yeah, block it up to stop the rats coming from his yard to our yard. I've got some cement somewhere. Norman, if you block up that particular hole, what's to stop the rats walking out of Les's gate, down the ginnel, through our gate and into our yard? Or running up the wall and over the top, for that matter? Well, if you're going to put it like that, I suppose you're right. Norman, we need the rats to be killed. We need the vermin control men, so will you get on to it? All right. I'll ring them. First thing in the morning. So what do you think, Emily, eh? My Gordon and his wife have asked me to go down and live with them in London. I see. Yeah. Now, are you going to? Well, it's a big move at my age, isn't it? I mean, I've always lived round here, but... Uh, well, I've been a bit lonely on my own, anyway. Well, well, you know what it's like, don't you? Yes, I do. I know to take a chance to get in another lodge just for company. Now I've given up my job here, you know. Well, it's nice to be wanted, Betty. I'm so glad yes. they've asked. Well, when all said and done, you know, your own flesh and blood, I mean, it means more than anything. So, when it's coming up, the game starts, you're going to be a steward, eh? That sort of thing, I imagine, yes. In the background, rubbing shoulders with all the athletes. Mm, quite possibly. So, listen, if you get half a chance and you get anywhere near them synchronised swimmers, you know, you know the, the birds in, in, in the cosies that cover all about in the water, you, if you get involved near the baths, then give us a shout and give you help. Just, what exactly are you saying? I'd just like to study this sport in close quarters, you see. And I, I could get autographs off the girls, couldn't I? I've got a pen that writes underwater. Let's find it out in the bath. I couldn't believe it when you invited your mother out of the blue like that. Seemed like a good idea to me. I mean, she's over 80, Caroline. She's in good health. And she likes her independence, I'm sure. Look out. Don't, 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 There's plenty of food, you know. <laughs> Not your hot pot, Mum. No, I made me last hot pot. Well, in this place, anyway. Yeah. If I you fancy it, I mean, just speak up. If you know I love cooking, and I'd be glad to give a helping hand, you know, for Caroline. Help with the cleaning and all that. Because, oh. <laughs> well, what you said before, you know, I'd love to live with you. Thank you very, very much. Oh, that's great, Mum. Oh. What about all your old friends? Won't you miss them? Oh, well, there's only those here, but... No, at my time of life, love, all your friends have passed on. Mm. I'm 
going to Weatherfield Cock, pub called the Rover's Return, Coronation Street, if you know it. Keep the change, Cock. Nobody gave us a send off, did they? No, I'm sorry for that. What's it? Because they didn't really understand. But it's correct. Give that girl a coconut. Well, this is a nice surprise. I had no idea you were coming. I left messages here and there, but I didn't know if you got them. I did. Thanks, Ken. Hey, hey, Bet. Oh, Betty. glad to see you. Mm. I'm glad you could come. You know, it wouldn't have been the same. Would I miss out on your send-off, not for a gold clock? I didn't know anything about this, do. It was all a surprise. Well, I wanted to jump out of a big cardboard cake, but they taught me how to. <laughs> you daffy. <laughs> it's uh, Mrs Gilroy, isn't it? The one and only. Used to be good pals with her, didn't you? At one time, yes. She used to manage this place, and she wanted me to lend her a lot of money so she could buy it off the brewery. I wouldn't. That was seven years ago, and she cleared off, and we haven't spoken since. Right. Thank you very much. There you are, Bat. Ah, oh, thanks, Ken. Jack, Vera, you both looking good, Nick? Not three bad, lover. Considering. <laughs> and Emily, you haven't changed a bit. Ooh, we are all older, Bat. <coughs> Wash your mouth out, woman. <laughs> I think he's getting sleepy. Shall I put him to bed? No, he's not sleeping here tonight. Hey? What do you mean? Well, it's very plain, isn't it? I don't want Ben sleeping in this house tonight. <sighs> oh, come on, Emma. I know that you're fed up with Les because he wouldn't pull his finger out, and all right. I should have rang the council straight away, like you said, but... Yes, you should. And I will do. First thing in the morning. Yeah, and in the meantime, we've got rats in the house. I've only got three, and one of them went out the back. Well, what about all the ones that we haven't seen yet? And anyway, it only takes one. To do what? They carry disease, Norman. They're known to bite babies. If you think I'm going to risk Ben... What are you doing? I'm phoning Maggie Black. Who? She's an ex-policewoman. She's, uh, she's a housewife and a mother now. You've met her. Maggie? Ah, yeah, it's Emma. Yeah, same as ever. Plodding on. L listen, Maggie, would it be all right if Ben and me came to stay with you for a few days? Do everybody a drink, love. I expect you know what they're all sucking. And when you get to mine, it's a gin and tonic. And you and your mates have a drink yourselves. Oh, thanks. My pleasure. I served me time behind this bar. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. So how long are you going to be here then, Bet? Oh, a few days, maybe. <laughs> so where are you living then these days? Brighton, Vera, and not just the days, nights as well. Lively town. Yeah. Still at it, are you? Oh, why? Whatever it might be, Vera, I'm still at it or thereabouts. Well, I've treated you well, I take it. Never better, Ken. Yourself? Yeah, I'm back teaching. Oh, it's more of a jungle than ever. I'm still trying to figure out how long it's been since you cleared off. Seven years, Jack. And without a word of a lie, there's hardly a day gone by when I've not thought about you. Yeah. All right. Whenever my feet hurt or a Brighton seagull does the dirty on my frock, I think to myself, never mind. Could be worse. You could be stuck behind that bar with Jack Duckworth skiving under your feet or somewhere down in the cellar. <laughs> He's still doing it. Oh, yeah, you know Fred, don't you, Fred Elliot? Well, I'm sure I remember the face. Let me see. Didn't you used to have that butcher's shop far end of Rosamond Street, right? Right. I've rather more than that these days. Two or three businesses on the go, including this place. Rovers is mine now. Oh, is that right, Fred? Well, you're welcome to it. 25 years I spent to the side of that bar pulling pints and pleasing punters. I wouldn't do it again. In fact, I'd sooner bag our smoke and sell it door to door. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you spoken to Betty? No, I haven't. Not yet. I thought not. Hey, Rita. Life's too short. Well, if it comes to that, she hasn't <laughs> spoken to me either. So that's six or one. Look, I know you fell out because of money. She doesn't think you've done so badly since you left, has she? I mean, she, she says she's doing very nicely. She said something else as well. You know, the vicar didn't lend her that money to buy this place, you know. 
her and Vicky are great pals now. So why shouldn't you be? Let's just forget it, eh? I mean, this is your farewell do. Let's not spoil it. Right. So, is it right what Emily says, that you move in south to live with Gordon and his wife? Yeah, well, they asked me and I had a little think about it and said, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> so you'll be selling your house? Yeah. <sighs> Am I doing the right thing, Rita? Nay, Betty, there's only you knows that. Well, I know my Gordon wants me, but I'm not too sure about his wife. I mean, I wouldn't want to cause any bother between her and my Gordon, you know. They'd not have asked you, you know, if they didn't want you. No, that's you right. Perhaps I'm being a bit silly, eh? You had no right to invite her without consulting me. We've talked about it often enough. Oh, yes. You've talked about inviting her. And I've said I'd think about it. Well, I've asked her now. I can't unask her, can I? I hear from Raquel now and again. She's doing all right. You know, with a French chap, a little chateau and a kiddies. A bit curly, how's he doing? Oh, he's fine. Got married again. He's got a lovely little boy. Married to a policewoman. A policewoman, eh? Never mind who wears the trousers in their house. Who's in charge of the truncheon? <laughs> I wish you weren't going. So do I. But I'm doing the right thing for Ben. Look, Maggie's number's on a bit of paper by the phone and uh, it's only a couple of miles away, you know. I know, but I'll miss you. Well, I'll be back tomorrow. Great. Yeah, so I can check up on the progress on the rat front. So there better be some. Now, make sure everybody's got a drink, right? Because I'm going to be doing this stuff about Betty in a bit. Uh... Audrey! <laughs> G and T, is it? Oh yes, please, Fred. Thank you. Oh, good heavens! It's Beth. Well, hello, stranger. What a surprise! Oh, Audrey, you're looking very prosperous and well maintained. If you don't mind me saying so, love. Oh, well, thank you very much. You don't look in bad nick yourself. You're still smoking, I see. Audrey, I'm still everything, love. <laughs> Grab hold of that. Oh, <laughs> can I have a bit of wash, please? <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> now, you all know why we are gathered here. To say a fond farewell to Betty. I've only really known her for a couple of years. I've only had the honour to be her employer for a few months. Yet yeah, there's a lot I could say. <laughs> yeah, there's folk here who are a lot better equipped than me. First time I've ever heard a fellow admit to that. There's a man here who's known her far longer than anybody here, I dare say. Mr. Kenneth Barlow. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Ken. Well, uh, <clears throat> I have to say this is a sad moment. We're taking our leave of a lady who's stood for all that we love about this pub for more than 30 years. Betty. Yeah. Dear, dear Betty. Oh. <laughs> Landlords and landladies have come and gone. In fact, one's come back here now. Good to see you back, Bet. And there's some telegrams from others that I'll read out Ooh, later. Lovely. But Betty has always been here through thick and thin. She has. Always with a smile of welcome. Always with a kind word when you needed a bit of comfort. Oh. When we're down, she gives us sympathy, and when we're hungry, she feeds us hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But now she's going. I'm, I'm sad, Betty. Oh, I'm really sad. And I know that all your friends here are, too. Yeah. We'll miss you. Yeah. And we'll never forget you. No. And we hope that you won't forget us. I won't. Right. If you'd like to come forward, we've got a little present for you. Oh, yeah. Something that um, we hope will help you to keep in touch. Oh, you shouldn't have love. It's one of those mobile things. <laughs> you know, I've been thinking about getting one of these. And there's 50 pounds worth of free calls, so there's no excuse for not ringing. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, everybody. It's very, very kind of you. It's just what I need. I think I'd just better tell you that, um, well, I'm not just leaving the Rovers. I'll be leaving Weatherfield soon. Oh. Well, because... My son, Gordon, and his wife, Caroline, have asked me to go and live down south with them in Wimbledon. Good on you, Gordon, lad. <laughs> well, can I just say something? I, um, I wouldn't have missed it, any of it, 
Forgive me. Oh, for she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. For she's a jolly good fellow. I was very sorry to hear about Alf. Oh, thank you. He was good to me. He let me have that corner shop flat when I was really on the floor. I thought the world of him. He was a lovely man. Yeah. Well, he was certainly the best man I ever knew. I'm just sad I didn't meet him sooner, that's all. Still, better late than never at all, huh? I need to talk to you. Shall I? You serve this customer. Gina. Listen to me. I'll part a bit of please, love. I lost a good man and all. Didn't have nearly enough time with him. I met him in Tenerife. Bruce, he was called. He had this boat. Forty-foot yacht, it was. And life was pretty good for a while. Well, he went and died. No consideration at all, have they, man? Oh, Bert, I'm sorry. Listen, I know what you're feeling. I know you do. Else I'd not have told you. Well, I best get us both another drink before I start to get maudlin. Right, I'm off to the Rovers to Betty Williams leaving. Do? They'll call me if you need anything, will I'll they? be fine. Those will be sat in front of the telly most of the night. Just let me remind you to make sure that you sort out any schoolwork that you should have done during the break. Oh, will you stop nagging me? Hey, that's not nagging. Oh, yes, it is. Right, I'm off before we fall out again. See ya. Good night, sweetheart. Hi, idiot Sarah. Are we give us a ring back when you get this message? I need to talk to you. Well, especially if you fancy a little party tomorrow night. OK, bye. He left you some money, did he, Bruce? Just his boat, which I sold. And I got this nice little bar in Brighton. Good class of trade. And then again, it's near young Vicky. Well, you're doing very well by the sounds of it. No complaints, Audrey. Any men in your life? Oh, aye. More to the point, there's life in me men. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hello, Bert. Oh, hello, Rita. It's been a long time. It has. You keep him well? Not bad, really. You're looking well. Touch wood. Do you see anything of Alec these days? I've not seen anything of Alec since I divorced him. Oh, and by the way, it's Lynch again now. Not Gilroy anymore. I got shut of his name when I got shut of him. Hey, Gil. Who's the old slapper there, you mum? <laughs> Lynch. She used to be a landlady here. And if I were you, I wouldn't let her hear you calling her an old slacker. Gina, I need to have a word with you. Now, come on, it's not too much to ask, is it? I'm working. Anywhere. There's too many people around. All right. Fred. Yes, Joseph? I need to ask a little favour of you. Can you spare Gina for five minutes? I need a quick word. Ah, right, go on, then. Five minutes, Gina, mine, no more. Come on, we can talk outside. I'm only doing this so you don't make a scene in there in front of everybody. Hey, I've got no intentions of embarrassing you. I just want to get things straight between us. Look, it's obvious you've been told the news about me that I've just come out of prison. Yeah, yeah, I think I was about the last person to hear about it, which is what really hurt. Look, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. Yeah, I thought you'd been honest with me. I left the prison bit out, otherwise I was. Yeah, pretty important bit to leave out, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Especially when we're supposed to be straight with one another. Look, there's only one reason I didn't tell you. I thought it would put you off me. I thought I'd have no chance with you. I didn't want that to happen. So what are you in prison for? Oh. It was nothing sensational. 
I didn't bash anybody or anything like that. I worked for this firm in the rag trade, and the management, well, we were working this fiddle. It was to do with VAT on fabric, and I were part of it. When it got caught out, I was the one that carried the can. Now, I am not proud of it, and it's all behind me. There's never going to be anything like that again. And I did want to tell you, Gina, you know, when I felt sure enough of you. So how do I know you're telling me the truth now? I don't know how to make you believe it, but it's true. And I'm sorry. I, I really am. Are you still doing a bit down in the cellar, Jack? Oh, I still keep in the ale suite. Finding spider better this side of the London Union. How do you like this new landlord? Well, he's only had it since New Year. Put his wife in to manage it for him. It's cleared off, left him. Fancy. No Betty's leaving him at all. What's he going to do without her up? I don't know. See, he doesn't understand the bison's trade, you see. No, not like we do. No. Hey, uh, you know, Jack and Vera had the Rovers for a while. Oh. <laughs> You're pulling my leg now, aren't you? Yeah. What's so amazing about that? Why shouldn't we? And they're not just managers now, are they? No, we were coming to a few bobs, so we bought the place. Let me guess. You sucked all fail yourself, Jack. <laughs> well, that's partly why it went wrong, yeah. No, it isn't. <laughs> because you were mucking about with the flaming books. Me? Mucking about with the boat? Yes, that's what I just said, didn't it? It'd be a joint effort, I dare say. Well, you couldn't make a go of this place. So there's no point sniggering at me and our Jack. Hey, come on, calm down, Vera. Well, she's no need to mock her, cos if the truth were known, it were her flaming, scheming husband that got this place off us in first place. Aye, it was Alec. Screwed us both rotten. Well, that gives you and me something in common. Guy, I had to talk to you. I mean, you know what people are like round here, don't you? Yeah. Oh, veggie stuff. Hiya. Evening. I mean, you can imagine the wild tales the like of which Karen there's got to come out with, can't you? So is that it? I best get back to work before Fred starts bellowing for me. Well, yeah, in a minute. Look, can we not go back to square one? Just start again. It's what I want to do. I hope you do too. Are you sure you've told me everything? Yeah, the bones of it. You know, like you, Gina. You know, I want to go on seeing you. I mean, I wouldn't be here now if I wasn't true, would I? Hey. Nah. Hiya. I hope there's some ale left in there. Yeah, plenty. Ooh, let me at it. I'll tell you what. Let me take you out one night. A nice meal somewhere, or, you know, whatever you fancy. Well, I work most nights, don't I? I'm free on Sunday. All right, then. Sunday. I'm about to go over in a minute and have a word. Come with me, I'll introduce you. Do I have to? Yes. So, are you off then? Yeah, listen. I'm gonna make a Gina. Oh. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Yeah, she's all right. Yes. I don't believe what I've just seen. What are you smiling at this child? Mm. What are you gonna let him flan away his way back into your affections? What's Dev, wrong it with... is none of your business. And I'm not interested in what you think. So you better get that into your head. Just look at Les. You can tell he fancies the old type. Why are you jealous? Oh, you're joking. <laughs> if anyone fancies Les, they can have him. Mm. Tell you what, he's not a great lot of talent in here tonight. No. Hey, do you fancy going to a club? Because I do. Well, mind you, I've got no money. Neither have I. <laughs> well, don't look at me. Oh, come on, let's go and get some chips. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh, Steve. Oh, I bet. It's better to see you here. That's Vicky, she isn't it? Still happily married this time round. Well, well, I'm glad for her. So am I. You haven't met Karen, have you? Karen, this is Bet. I am. You married this fella, did you? Yeah. Best of luck, Flower. I'll need it with him. Right, come on, Steve. I told you I didn't want to meet her. Hiya, I'm Les. You tell me your bet. I didn't lie to you. I like a bet, because I'm a gambling man. So, Les, you're a gambling man, are you? Oh, I. How do you fancy losing your shirt? Not to mention your trousers. Well, I'm game if you are. My place is just down the street. No, Les. Your place is under a stone. Why don't you crawl back under it while we're still friends? 
Oh, right, grumpies, Rose. You've had your chance. <laughs> Betty, will you have a brandy with me? Oh, no, thanks, Fred. I'm feeling a bit weary. I think we should make tracks, if that suits you, Caroline. That's fine. Oh. Before you do, though, one thing, Betty. Will you come and pour your last pipe for me? This really is the last, isn't it? Hey, Maria, I'll tell you what, right? Me and you, let's go to that new club in town on Friday. Hey, can I come? It's just fine by me. Great. Right. I'll tell you why. I feel like getting a fella. What, does that mean you're over Dennis? No. I just feel like getting a fella. Right, so supposing that you meet someone you fancy, you know, when you bring him back to our place. Well, what am I going to do? Just sit out on the landing twiddling my thumbs? Yeah. Or you could spend the night with Les. <laughs> I don't fancy either prospect. No, see, the trouble with that place of yours, Mum, is it's not really big enough for two, is it? I mean, Maria's got more room. In fact, we were thinking about maybe going halves with it, weren't we? Yeah. Well, you see, it suit me. Someone paying half the rent with me, innit? Yeah. Well, it's, it's fine by me, tell you. Whatever you fancy. Are you sure? Yeah, positive. Well, both need our own space, don't we? And a fella to put in it. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, it's an historic moment, is this? <laughs> Roy Cropper should be here. <laughs> there we go. Oh. Oh. Who's going to stop this? It is yours to bestow, Betty. If you can't manage it yourself. <laughs> what, me stopping pints? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Jack, here. It's yours. Treat it as a little leaving present, love. Oh, Betty. I'll drink to your health and your happiness. By gum, we've had some times here, love, haven't we? Well, that. <laughs> I'm going before I drop. Go on, then. Come on, Okay, love. Come and see us, will you? Oh, yeah, it'll be a couple of days before I head for foreign parts, love. Bye bye, bye bye, Thanks for being here for me, love. Well, yeah. See you again. Yeah, bye bye. I've missed you, Betty. I'm only just realising how much. Thanks. We have some good times, eh? More good than bad. Don't worry, we'll look after her. Take care. Oh, my goodness, look at the time. It's getting so late. Oh, now, where are you stopping, by the way? Hey, thanks for reminding me, Audrey. Do you know I've not booked in anywhere yet? I'd better ring one of them hotels in town. Come on, you don't need to stop at a hotel. I've got bags of room in my house, rattling about like a pea in a drum, me. I don't want to put on you, Audrey. You are not. I'll be glad of the company. Hey, tell you what, we'll open a bottle of gin and pull people to pieces. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Oh, dear, well, I can't drive. I'll have to phone a car. Audrey, are you sure I'm not putting on you? You are not. Tell you the truth, Bess. It can be really lonely when you're on your own, especially when you're used to having a fella, eh? Don't I, Fleming? Don't let that dog out. What are you doing there? What time is it? It's gone eight. Why didn't you go to bed? I fell asleep. Oh, let's get some air in here. Oh. That's better. <coughs> so, I'll put the kettle on. Right? Oh. Oh, dear. Hey, have I told you? I would tell you he's moving in without Maria. Oh, she's a nice girl. Yeah. I tell you, I hope they have a lot of fun together. I certainly intend to, now I've got that flat to myself. <laughs> I thought I might go blonde. Platinum. Oh, I like your other way it is. <laughs> Thanks. You know what they said, though, Ella? Blondes have a lot more fun. I did go platinum once. 94. And did you have more fun then? Not really, no. <laughs> we'll come round to mine tonight, Aid. My lot are all out, it'll just be me and Bethany. Oh, I can't this afternoon. Now I've got double English, I don't miss it. Well, I'll see.
see you in full then, won't I? <laughs> I really do not feel like this today. <laughs> when do you ever feel like it, Karen? What's that meant to mean? Just, you never seem to be happy when you're here. OK. Sound like one of them magazines, let's all be happy in our work. I'm not going to be happy, am I? Because it's work, innit? I'm happy at work. Are you, love? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be happy when we're all inside and I can hear the buzz of them sewing machines. After you, love. It's only me. What are you doing here? I forgot my cravat. Actually, that's not true. It's in my locker at work. I just wanted to say I'm sorry for rushing off last night. It's all right. What a terrible night. Maggie's little girl's teething. You can't imagine what the noise is like. She kept waking Ben up and he was in with me and he kept kicking me. Where is he? Maggie's looking after him. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, Norman, but I meant what I said last night. I can't have him here with those rats on the loose. Yeah, I know that, darling, but... Oh, my toast. 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 Look at the time. Mrs Baines will be stood outside waiting for a pension as wash and blow. Can't one of your girls open up? Well, one's just had a baby and the other used to work in a boarding kennel. Oh. Now, here's my spare keys, lover. And don't bother about the alarm, cos I only put that on at night when I'm on my own. Thanks. I don't think I'll be popping out. Shall I get us something for our tea? Oh, I've got some salad in the fridge. Salad? Mm. I was thinking more fish and chips. Uh, yeah, well, look, I'll worry about that when I get back. And, oh, sh Mrs Bain should be rattling that doorknob. Hey, Audrey, I'm sorry for stopping so long in the bathroom. Oh, you're all right. It's just that I'm not used to visitors, you know. Oh, how long did you say you'd be stopping? Oh, not long, love. Week, two weeks, top. Two weeks? Oh. Well, you got something nice planned. Just a bit of business in Manchester, you know. Really? What sort of business? Well, there's a club I've got my eye on. <gasps> Just a bit of business. Hey, it's like old times, this, isn't it? I've not shared since Corner Shop Flat with Irma Barlow. Oh. Did you know Irma? Was she one of Ken's wives? No. At least I don't think she was. Oh. No, I've got to go. I'll see you later. You certainly will, boo-boo. Oh, you... <laughs> We've got to be united on this. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. I've just said, yeah. We've no cleaner, no landlady, a cellar man with a dodgy art, and now Betty's got no-one to do the grub. It's just you, me, and a landlord who's more suited running a three-ring circus. Well, I'm nobody's clown. So what should we do? We do what all women do when they're not happy. You mean we nag him? Got it in one. Yeah? Mr Battersby? Yeah? Yeah, Kev Harris, Environmental Services, Pest Control. Oh, yeah. I'm here about your rodent infestation. I'm not infested. Yes, you are. She was talking to me. Go around the back. His backyard's full of rubbish. It's the same inside. Go and have a look for yourself. Filthy vermin. Do you mind? I meant the rats. Mind you, now I come to think of it. I keep telling you, I have not got any rats. Well, maybe now you're here, we'll get to see some action. Well, What's rats, going on there, then? Good. Some Kill sort of all. argument. Oh, there speaks the copper. I'm surprised you've not got your riot gear on and stormed my house. Oh, I'd need more than riot gear to go into your house. Can you smell that? I've got a baby. I've had to move him out to a friend's because of his smell and his rats. I do not smell. What's going on? This woman's from Pest Control. Environmental Health. I have not got rats. Rats? Ooh. Oh, you should see them in the backyard. I know you don't own your house, Les, but you could at least take a bit of pride in where you live. Hey, there's no need to talk to him like that. There's every need. I've got a baby to think of. And what? Complain then, have you? Got the rat catcher. In. Environmental Health. The backyard's a tip. It's not easy, you know. A bloke on his own. Oh, well, that's down to you, isn't it? You're the one who walked out on him. Emma. Hey! I am not taking that from you, lady, whether you're in your uniform or not. What's the point? I'm going to work. Ah, uh, go on, then. Run away. She's upset. Right. I'd best get started. I'll have a look round inside first. You can brew up. White. Three sugars. I don't smell. Do I? Well, uh, well, like I said, it's, uh, it's no problem. OK. Bye, then. I don't believe it. What? What's to do? That were Ian Richardson wondering why I hadn't called him back from the other day. Well, did you not call him? I told you to. Yeah, and I forgot. Damn. 
what? He's doubled the order. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? He wants it all in by Monday dinner time. That's twice as much in the same time, Hayley. Well, we can't do it. You did tell him we couldn't do it. No, I didn't. This is a factory. You don't say no to the customer. You say yes. In any case, why the hell didn't you remind me to call him back? We could have had an extra two days. Well, I thought you had formed him. Just get back out there and start sewing, will you? Oh, great. Mike comes back on Monday. That is great. Just great. Bicycle Thank you. clips. Thank you. What? Bicycle clips. Where are they? We, we had two pairs in the May stock take. I thought, oh, here they are. Are you going to ask <coughs> him or shall I? There's Battersby's got rats. The pest control van's outside. They're pumping chemicals everywhere. Those rats will be jumping about. I'm not taking any chances. Oi, 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 are you forgetting something? What? £2.50 bicycle clips. I'll bring it in later. I'm still on my break. Oh. <laughs> well, did you enjoy it last night? Betty's party. Well, I think we give her a good send-off. It was interesting to see Bet again. Interesting, yes. Hi. Oh, what a morning I'm having. Oh, indulge yourself too much last night? Well, I didn't think I had till I woke up and found Bet Gilbert asleep on my sofa. Oh, no, of course. Bet Lynch now, isn't it? On your sofa? Yeah, apparently. I insisted she stayed with me, not a hotel. Oh, well, that was kind of you. Uh, Emily, no, foolish more like. Uh, she says she's stopping two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. My sitting room already smells like a working men's club. After two weeks, it'll have yellow ceilings. Well, I thought she was just here to see Betty. Uh, apparently not, no. Uh, she's got some business in Manchester. Well, what sort of business? I mean, the last I heard, she was living down south. Well, it's something to do with the club. I mean, that is all I know. Ooh, probably be seeing more of her then. Oh. Rita? Well, it was bad enough last night trying to make small talk, but I thought I wouldn't be seeing her again. When she left, you weren't on very good terms, were you? We were not. Oh, come on. Well, don't worry about it. Just keep your head down. She'll be gone soon enough. Oh, I'm afraid I can't do that, Audrey. I've never been one to dodge an issue. What's she doing today? Uh, sitting on my sofa with her feet up watching TV, I suppose. Right. Well, I'll call round later, after I've closed this place up. Would you like me to keep out of the way? Well, if you wouldn't mind. I don't think it's going to be that pleasurable a visit. Hey, get a move on, will you? All right, well, I'll rush out of it. No need to push. I want to nip and see you later. I'm a bit see shaken you. earlier. You. Are you going to go to the Rovers later? Well, if it's a choice between looking at you or the wallpaper in my flat, then, yeah, I suppose I probably will. Oh. I, uh, I wanted to apologise. Yeah. Yeah, I was out of order. I'm sorry. So, uh, are we still mates, then? Come on, then. <laughs> I'm glad you said something. I hate atmospheres. Yeah, so do I. Although some people around here are keen to create them. Karen, she'll soon settle down, take the notice. And don't worry about that order. I'll make sure there's no slacking. Thanks. Just doing my job. I'm really glad you've come. I said I would, didn't I? Is your home gone? Yeah, they've all gone. Good. So, what do you want to do? I bought a video. Series 7, The Contenders. Have you seen it? No. It'll blow you away. Cool. So, do you want a drink? Have you got any orange juice? Yeah, but Richard's got some beers in the fridge. Don't think he'd notice if you had one. Don't touch the stuff. My dad drinks it. I'm more of a spirits man. Ooh, vodka. I'll get some glasses. And the orange juice. Where's what's her name? Bethany. She's asleep. Then let the good times commence. Right, I'm coming. Keep your flaming hair on. Rita, Audrey's not in. No, I know. Actually, I've come to see you. Well, you best come in then. We're nearly out of 
microtonics. Shelley, will you nip down to her cellar and... And uh, lad in my tights on a barrel like last time, or get cobwebs in my hair like the time before. Eh? Fred, do I look like a burnt me bra? What are you going on about? I'm a great believer in there being men's work and being women's work. Now, cellars are for men. I only asked you to get some tonics. Yeah, and this morning you asked me to make sandwiches and clean the windows. Look, we don't mind helping out a bit, cos we know you're in a hole, but we want you to promise us that you'll get these vacancies sorted. This place is too busy for just the two of us. I'm here, aren't I? Fred, do you know how to make a Bloody Mary? And how much lemonade do you put in a lager top? Now, we've been thinking, and we reckon we can run the place between us. No danger. But you do need to sort the catering out, and we need a pair of hands behind these pumps. Actually, and while you're advertising, find us a thick young bloke that sell a work. One with a nice bum. Yeah, and a nice smile. Mm. Good! So, that's sorted. I tell you what, just this once, I'll go and get them tonics. Oh, silly me. There's some here, shall I? I must have not seen them. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Aunt. You've been dead rotten. You knew I wanted Bobby's old boo. No, well, you can't have it. It's why he's moving in, isn't you? It's not fair. I ain't living at home. Mum started doing line dancing again. Has she? I can't stand the music. She's got a tape of this fella going on and on. It's do si -do this and do si -do that. <laughs> well, just move out, get a flat somewhere. I don't want to live on my own. Yeah, but then you'd only have to get on with yourself then, wouldn't you? Well, I suppose I don't get on with myself. There you go, Mum. All right, thanks, so. Uh, can I join you? Oh, certainly. certainly. Has Rita gone to mine? Uh, yes. How was she? Uh, purposeful. My mother used to have the same look in her eye when she took shoddy clothing back to the shops. Oh, dear. I hope they make it up. I'm sure Rita will offer Bet the olive branch. Mm. Let's just hope Bet doesn't break it in half, shall we? We didn't get much chance to speak last night. That's because we were avoiding each other. Silly, really. We were friends a long time. We were, yes. Well, I'm glad you're not pretending we still are. No. You kicked me in the teeth when I needed you most. We're not friends. That's not fair. Ain't it? No, it isn't. And you know it isn't. I didn't say anything last night because it was a party. Anyway, I thought you were just passing through. Oh, I am. Not stopping round here. Audrey said you stay in a fortnight. Yeah, that's about right. As soon as I can, I'm off. Well, I didn't want to feel I had to avoid you. So, you're divorced now? Yeah. Alex probably shacked up with some desperate old hoofer now. Or a singer. Actually, Alec and I were quite... Yes, he told me. Said he was going through a nostalgic period. So it was either you... Or a woman who had a performing sea lion act. Turns out you got number one billing. We're still good friends. Lucky you. We're still good enemies. You're very bitter, aren't you? <laughs> I've got good cause. I thought me and Alec were going to stand shoulder to shoulder for the rest of our naturals. But then again, I thought you and me were best mates. Turned out I was wrong on both counts. Oh, so that's it. I refuse to spend my savings buying you a pub. Us a pub. A partnership, remember? And not just any old pub. The Rovers. You knew how much that place meant to me. It was a lot of money. I wasn't sure we'd make a success of it. I would have done. I'd have made it pay. Is that what you've been doing these last seven years? Running a pub? Running a couple? Made a success of them and all. That's not a marble. Good. I'm pleased for you. Are you? Yeah, of course I am. I'm glad everything's going all right for you. You deserve it. Are you being funny? No. I mean it. You've been through a lot in your life, and now you're comfortable. Happy? Always smiling. Good. I'm glad. Next time I'll bring Blow, Johnny Depp. Wow. Oh, I liked him in um, Sleepy Hollow. Oh, yeah. Cool air. I had mine jet black after that for ages. I remember. Hey, who's this? <laughs> Edward Cezanne. <laughs> Correct. Do you know what we should do? 
like that. You should pierce your eyebrow. Really? Oh yeah. You look neoclassical. It would so go with your eyes. Your eyes are your best feature. You have to decorate them. Is that why you had yours pierced? It's more of a statement. So how about it? How about what? Your eyebrow. I could use a needle. And I could put my ring in it. I've got a spare one at home. Your ring? Yeah. Yeah, OK. Hey, you! Councillor Busybody! What is it? Environmental health has just left. Oh, that's brilliant. And have they dealt with the problem? They reckon so. Oh, come on. Gina, have a pint for Leslie, please. Yeah, look. What's that for? For making my day, mate. It's fed up living at home, aren't you? Not still living with your mum, are you? Yeah. Well, you need to get out, get a place your own. Either that or uh, check up with a girl with no sense. <laughs> uh, no. I'm taking love. I'm not. <laughs> don't worry, I'm only joking. You're not my type, love. I like a bloke who could put up a fight. <laughs> Got an idea, though. Why don't you have a chat to Les? You might find you could do each other a favour. What sort of favour? He's a bit down, isn't he? And he's got a room going empty. Oh, oh I. Don't talk to him now, eh? Another time. Cheers, I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah, so, so am I. So listen, Is grab it? your stuff, oh, grab Ben, <laughs> and get home. Yeah, but you won't. Shh. Don't make me laugh. I could stab you in the eye. Well, don't. I need my eyes. Now, stop it. Are you ready? Is it going to hurt? A bit, but it won't last long. You ready? Yeah. Then hold very still. What are you doing? Mum! Who are you? Sarah, what are you doing? Uh, this is Aid. He's um, a friend. We were just... Yeah, I can see what you were doing. Where's Bethany? She's upstairs. He was only going to pierce my eyebrow. He was what? You made me bend it. You've been drinking. She's 15. And so am I. Get out. Mum! I'll talk to you later. You! Get out of my house. Oh, we were only having a laugh. I said, I'll talk to you later. When he's gone and you've sobered up. I'd best go. Tomorrow? Yeah. Good night, Mrs Platt. Thank you for your hospitality. I'm surprised you've not ended up in a place like this. I can see you with a bay window. Still over at shop. I like it. Any aftershave on your dressing table? No. You? It was my birthday last month. Go on, have a guess how old. Oh, I couldn't. Go on. 65. 62. Oh. Anyway, it was on my birthday I decided to give up men. Not that that means much. I gave up smoking on New Year's Day. How long did you last? Fifteen seconds. I'd half a packet left. I was running them under the tap one at a time. I lit the third one up and that was that. People like you and me, we don't change. Me and you? I wouldn't say we were that alike. Yeah, of course we are. We're from the same mould. Maybe a long time ago. People do change. I have not. No, you've not, have you? How do you mean? I've worked hard for what I got. Whereas you just seem to drift along, and normally it involves some fella pulling your strings. <laughs> you still think you're a cut above, don't you? You don't fool me, lady. I've known you too long. You've only got that shot because Len died. That was my business. And his cash. It's all right, I'm only saying. You've been lucky. I've been lucky. You probably did me a favour not buying the Rovers, because if you had, I'd probably still be stuck behind that bar. I thought the Rovers meant the world to you. That's before I'd seen something of the real world. Don't get me wrong, I'll always be fond of the old place. But now I can see it for what it is. It's just a tatty little backstreet pub. And you can put on all the airs and graces you like. You still only run a toffee shop. I'm not listening to any more of this. What are you doing? I'm only saying. I know, I've heard what you're only saying. If it's that tatty and grotty, 
Why have you come back? Oh, don't tell me. It'll be some romanticised story, whereas the truth probably involves a fella and a pile of debts. I was a fool to come round here to think I might try and salvage something. Yes, I've changed, Bet, and so have you. You've turned into a hard, petty woman, and I feel sorry for you. Do us all a favour. Get lost and take that vulgar ring with you. Morning. Hi. Now, I didn't know whether to shout you or what. Did you have a nice time with Rita? I've had nicer times having my teeth drilled. Why? What happened? I was fully prepared to let bygones be bygones, determined to. But would she? No. Would she, Eckers like? She couldn't wait to let me know where I'd gone wrong and why I'd lost all my friends. Which, all right, might be true. You just don't necessarily want somebody pointing it out, do you? Yeah, well, I suppose she can be a bit blunt. Blunt? No. That's not what Rita is. I'll tell you what Rita is, shall I? Rita's jealous. She's jealous I've made something in my life. Well, all she's managed to do is get up at six every morning and sort through a load of dirty old newspapers. Anybody else, she'd feel sorry for her. Look, I've got to get on. Now, help yourself to everything. I'll see you later. Audrey, do you know if Mike Baldwin's back? Uh, I've no idea. No. I thought I might try and find him. Be nice to have a chat to somebody who's not looking down their nose at me. Bet, do you mind if I mention somewhat? Oh, mention away. Love Rita did. Mike's been through rather a difficult time. And you think I'm going to make things worse? No, I just thought you'd want to know. Well, don't worry. I'm not going to be lecturing him on how he deserves everything that's landed on him. They can get that from Rita. Bye, Beth. I'll see you tonight. Hang on a minute. I want a word. Mum, I've already said that. I'm sorry. Yes, I know you have. But what I want to know is, have you learnt from this? Are you going to start showing a bit more responsibility? Yes. Especially when Bethany's involved. She won't. She was upstairs asleep. I mean, what if she'd have needed attending to? You couldn't have done it. State you were in. Come here. What? Come here. Give us a hug. I know things aren't easy for you. I'm going to give you all the help I can. But you've got to try as well, OK? I will. Mm. How's your head? Mm, I've got a bit of a headache. Mm, a bit. Here. Take that. Go on. And we'll start again, shall we? Clean sheet. I won't even mention aid or eyebrows or anything, OK? In fact, you don't deserve this, but you can take it easy today. I've got days off, so I'll look after Bethany. Oh, thank you. That is great. But remember, we have a deal. Yes, Mum, thank you. Mwah. Bye bye, Bethany. Say bye bye. Bye bye, love. Hey, come on, ladies, let's get going. We want a good day today, all right? Oh, we don't do it. Yeah, we do. Hey, don't mean we're going to get one. All right, all Would right. Would you like me on a machine, Mr. Yes, Carter? I do, please, Hayley, thanks. Would you like me on your knee, Mr. Carter? All right, can we get these machines moving now, please? We've got an order to get out by Monday dinner time. Well, we didn't have a lot of choice since you weren't here, did we? Oh, I am sorry. It's just, uh, old fella won't let me out of the bed. You know what it's like. Yeah, he knows what it's like, all right. Both see you again, eh, Karen? No, you don't have to boast. What are you doing, eh? Are you, See you, me and Ailey now. And I bet we're the only two around here that do. <laughs> so, uh, can we get on now, please? We want to get this all of crap before the end of the day. So, eyes down, all right? darling with your house. Oh. <laughs> now, listen, how would you and the kids like to come for your dinner this Sunday? I've been meaning to ask you for a week or two. Oh, yeah, that'd be lovely, thanks. Uh, I better warn you, I might still have Bet Lynch lodging with me. Thought she was only stopping one night. So did I. Oh, well, it'd be nice to see you. Come on, you. Oh, no, you're God. not having that. Oh. Let's go do some other God shopping. Bless. See you <laughs> soon. Bye-bye, <laughs> love. Bye-bye. Uh, so, Gather, uh, you paid my lodger a visit. Yes, and if it's another seven years before the next one, that'll be soon enough. Really? Do you know, I'd have thought you'd have enjoyed talking over old times, Rita. Well, I might have, if she still wasn't living in them, still thinking she's Queen Bee, everybody's let her down. Or happen it's not everybody, happen it's just me in particular. Let her down in what way? Oh, well, you better ask her that. 
She'll be only too delighted to give you chapter and verse. Not all true, but then again, she was never one to let that spoil a good story. Not bad. You're still around, then? I thought you were just here for the night. Well, that's what I thought and all, but no, I'm stopping at Audrey's for a bit. Oh, I'm sure she'd be glad of the company. And what about you? Have you got any company? Or do you prefer your own these days? Oh, I have a gentleman lodger. Norris, who works at the cabin. A gentleman lodger? I think I'd be disappointed if I found I'd landed one of them. Still, Atme, you and me are a bit different in that respect. I think we might be. Just a little. <laughs> Are you looking for Mr. Battersby? Worse. You heard to know if he's in? Well, I think he might have answered if he was. Well, I'll try on the back. I would have thought if he's not in at front, he won't be in at back either. Well, I'll try again later, then. Relative of Einstein's, is he? Distant. You're telling me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> nice seeing you again. And you, Evelyn. Oh, hi, Dad. Huh? Been getting Rita's side of the story? Just paying what I owe. She like that. We'll read her. Yeah. What do you want to do, Ayla? Show us up. There's still so much to do. Yep, and you can do it on their time, not ours. Hey, hey, get a load of this. That's Joe's mum. Nah. She used to work at the Rovers. Is Mike Baldwin about? No, he's not. Uh, why? What do you want him for? Um, I don't think that's any of our business. Uh, sure up, Hayley. Hiya. Oh, yeah. Can I help? Somebody looking for you. <laughs> I was looking for Mike Baldwin, actually. Well, I'm afraid he's not here at the moment. I'm running things till he gets back. <laughs> yeah, uh, trying to. No, it's just that Mike's an old pal of mine. I thought it might be nice to have a chat. No, I. <laughs> old pal. <laughs> yeah, we know what that means. <laughs> Never mind, I can see you've got a lot on your hands. I'll leave you to it. I feel sorry for you lot, though. Why is that? It must be terrible working for a boss as good-looking as this. Whatever he asks you to do, you just won't be able to say no, will you? <laughs> I, know I. I know I couldn't have. See you. I'll uh, tell Mike you're cold. Yeah, and if you don't, we will. OK. Five minutes, you lot, then back to work. We've still got a lot to do, haven't we? Is Jack not in today? Only I am shifting crates and seeing to the cellar, and I'm getting filthy. Jack? Yeah, I don't know. Shelley! Thought you were doing it, Roster. Yeah, yeah, she's supposed to be. Yeah, and I am doing it, but Jack keeps telling me I've got it wrong. Don't blame me. Oh, well, great. I'll be a cellar man and a cleaner then, shall I? Well, I'm doing all the catering. Oh, what? What, lifting slices of bread? That must be really hard. I'm doing all the shopping in the morning. Don't be forgetting that. Well, I'll tell you what, then we'll swap then, shall we? And you can run up and down them cellar steps again. Ladies, ladies, come on. We should be all be pulling together, not calling one another. See, it's just because you're not used to it, that's all. Once you get into a swing of things, you'll enjoy having a bit more to do to widen your horizons. 4.46, please, thanks. I think I prefer Kentra at that end. Yeah, me too. But uh, I'm told it maximises shelf space. Hey, I think Alf managed to fill most of that himself, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he did. So did you used to work here? No, love. I did most other things here, but not work. Sunita has the flat upstairs. You don't? Yeah. Oh, I don't tell you how many years I lived up there. Honest? Aye. Doing my nails, washing my tights, listening to that door going as they filed in and out. That's why I like it. You're never lonely on top of a shop, are you? Well, you can tell yourself that. And then at night, I'd dream some big, strong man had sweep me off to a life of luxury in Alderley Edge. Hey, I have them dreams. So did they come true? Well, bits of them. Yeah, not all men are big and strong. Very seldom. Mm. And instead of a life of luxury, you get a weekend in Southport. Oh, well, I'd settle for that. I hope you don't, and certainly not at your age. You don't start settling for second best till you get like me and her. Oh. How is Ken, by the way? <laughs> He's all right. Well, I never thought I'd say it. I'll be glad when Baldwin's back. Yeah, at least he don't go on and on it all the time. It's not really Joel's fault, is it? Do you know, I think you fancy him. Uh, yes, so do I, the way you keep sticking up for him. No, I mean, he must feel like he's on trial. Mr Baldwin's away, he's put him in charge. He's got to get this order out. Yeah, he'll be used to that then, won't he? <laughs> Being on trial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he will, yeah. <laughs> we've got to get this order out. Yeah, we've got to do the work. Uh, no, no, we haven't, if we don't want to. Depends how much overtime you're after. Yeah, but he hasn't mentioned overtime, has he? Fizz. If he wants it all ready for Monday, and when we finish tonight, if there's still loads to do, 
He's going to be mentioning all the time, isn't he? He'll be on his hands and knees, Nicholas. Audrey. Oh, hey, hey. Now, how are you? Uh, fed up with this place. Why? I try to make things easier by doing a bit of delegating, letting the staff do some of the running. And will they not? After a fashion. It's the way they make out it's all a terrible burden. Listening to mornings worse than doing it myself. Hi, <laughs> Alice. Can I get you a drink? If you like, I. I can we have two pints here, love? Certainly, love. Uh, I'm looking for lodgings. And here you might have a room going. Yeah, might have. How much? Say, uh, 40 pounds a week. That's all right. Plus, your share of the telephone bill and that stuff. Fair enough. Plus, chipping in towards the food and whatnots. Well, can I look at the room before I make my mind up? <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> oh, yeah, do you want to drink out? No, I'm all right, cheers. I'm just checking. It's still all right for me to move my stuff into yours this after. Oh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, I'll take my keys for oh, now. Cheers. So we'll get your own. Only I want to do it while my mum's at work. And she's not going to come in and get all upset on me. Hmm. She'll see you later. Right, so uh, are we saying we want overtime or we don't? I could do with a bit. Yeah, me and Al. We can't deliberately go slow in order for him to offer us more overtime. Why not? Of course we can. Yeah, look, I'm uh, not doing no more tonight, though, cos Fred night's up in night, innit? No, no, we won't tonight. But we're going tomorrow, Saturday. Four hours. And what's that, time and a half? Yeah. Oh, great. Now, never mind time and a half. We can do so much better than that. I'd ask you to come in, but, well, I think my mum's back. Oh, I want to avoid her. Oh, she's all right, really. Anyway, I'm going down to the precinct and get a burger or something. Are you coming? Yeah, all right. Will you wait a minute? I'll be back in a sec. Oh, hello, Sarah. How's Bethany? I haven't seen her for a while. Yeah, she's fine, thanks. Hi, Mum. Oh, good. Right, I'm going to go out for an hour, OK? No, I'm sorry, but it isn't OK. What, Mum, you said... They've run from the medical centre. They're short-staffed and they want me to do the evening surgery. I'm sorry. You're going to have to take over looking after Bethany as from now, OK? You can do what you like in there. Put stuff on the walls, out. What? Pin-ups and that? Pin-ups, ah, you can put up as many of them as you like. Then there's the kitchen, uh, tally, all mod cons. Oh, hello. Can I have a word? No way of stopping you, is there? That woman from pest control came around again this afternoon, the one from the council. Yeah, yeah, it's all in hand, I've told you. You've not to worry about. That's not what she said. She said it's as bad a case of infestation as she's seen in a long time. She couldn't say how many rats there might be out there. Uh, it's just a bit of a problem there's been. There's nought to worry about. No, it's a very serious problem, and a lot of us are extremely worried about it. Anyway, she had a look around and she said the poison had been taken, she was going to lay some more down. What, er, uh, so you've got rats, have you? No! Yes, he has. There's a whole family of them out in the backyard. Well, thanks. Oh, that's fantastic. I like a bit of ratting. You do? Oh, I. Not like blasting a few rats of a Sunday morning. Gives you an appetite for your dinner. And you've come to the right place, lad. You've chosen well. See? I've got a big game hunter moving in with me. We'll deal with them. You moving in? Yep. I'm Leslie's new lodger. OK, ladies. You can stop now, please. I, uh, just wanted to have a word before you went home. Um, how many of you be interested in coming back, doing a few hours overtime tonight? Tonight? No, we've uh, been working our socks off all day. OK, OK. Tomorrow, then? Oh, not Saturday. Uh, they'll kill me if I work on a Saturday. Yeah, and some of us have got to get shopping in. You should have told us sooner. Yeah. Well, I would have asked sooner if I'd known, wouldn't I? It's only because we didn't get done what we were supposed to do today that we're going to have to do some overtime. Yeah, all right. Look, um, about Sunday? What do you reckon, girls? Yeah, well, I suppose Sunday's just a waste of time anyway. Mm, I could manage Sunday. Really? Yeah, yeah, I suppose Sunday'd be OK. Right then, uh, Sunday. Nine o'clock start? Nine o'clock. Sunday. Thanks for that, I appreciate it. Right, yeah, Joe, that will be double time, though, won't it? Double? Yeah. 
See, we always get double time on a Sunday. Plus, we're doing you a favour, because it is you that's got to get the order out. OK. You win. Sunday. Because we're tired. I can see you then. Nice one, Gaza. Play the blinder. Yeah, I think you uh, got me a drink. All of you. Hello. Uh, oh, hello, you. Have you another. Too. Well, that's very kind of you. Uh, half a bit of red wine and whatever Rita's having, please. Hi. Oh, Beth's going to be joining us. She came in the shop earlier and I made a promise. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Actually, I'd better say no to that drink. I've suddenly remembered I've got something to do. Oh, oh right, so it's just a half bit and the red wine. I didn't then. know we had so much care. stuff. I know, I've never known anyone to have so many books. <laughs> oh, well, they're just for uni. Don't mean I spend all my time reading them. <laughs> uh, can we have our usuals, please, Tina? Yeah, love, I'll bring it over. Oh, and I need to have a word with Matt. Just make sure she's OK about being left on her own. We never would have got away with that had it been Baldwin. Yeah, well, shouldn't have gone an older, should he? It's his own fault. <laughs> you know, I had a dream about Joel last night. Me and him on a desert island, and I was giving him double time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not missing me yet, then? Well, not when I'm in here, no. But I will do. When I get back and that flat's all empty. Well, I'm not far off. No, I know that. Why? Where have you moved to? Over the hairdressers with Maria. That's all right. It's all around the corner. Oi, you see her all the time. Well, I'll still miss her. And me. I'll see you later. Yeah. Are you? I thought you were saying that you'd be glad when she were out of your way. Well, I am. But I've got to let her think right, I'm well, upset. I'm not. Oh, well, Beth will be sorry she missed you. <laughs> oh, no, she won't. She's here. Yeah, Rita. Right, what can I get you? Gin and tonic, please, Ken. Uh, one gin and tonic, please. So, uh, what were you up to in Manchester, then? I've been seeing a solicitor. Oh, right, well, uh, we won't ask you about that. Well, whether you do or you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. I'm fed up having to lie to folk. Oh, yeah. Yes. Emily? Oh, hello, Gail. Where's Sarah? Oh, nothing to worry about. She called and said she had to go out for an hour and asked if I could babysit Bethany. I, th I think she's helping a friend with his homework. <laughs> Did she say who this friend was? No. No, but I can guess. When was this? Well, um, I say an hour, but it uh, be more like two, actually. Well, I'm sorry you've been put to all this trouble. Oh, perfectly all right. I get more than enough of Norris's company. <laughs> You're very kind, and I'll make sure Sarah appreciates it. Oh. <laughs> You've had fun, haven't you? <laughs> no, I'm a very easy sort of going fella. Take me as you find me. So, you know, if you want to bring a friend back, have some time on your own. It's no problemo. Right, cos I tell you the truth, that's the main reason for wanting me own place. Have you got a girlfriend, then? Yeah. Well, not right now, no. Ah, playing the field. Oh, yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> Me and all. So, er, uh, these rats, how many is there? Nay, I don't know. It's hard to tell them apart. Unless I suppose you're another rat, they must manage it. <laughs> well, the more the merrier. I bring my gun round and bam, 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 bam. We'll blast them and then we'll nail them by the tails to the yard gate. Well, they're all of them. We could, yeah. Philly's called. We got together two years ago. And I thought, that was it. Like you do. And like you swear you'll never do again. Yeah. No, he was a nice bloke. About my age. He had enough money for a comfortable life and I still had a fair bit myself. I like pigs in muck for a while. Then he decided he wanted to open a nightclub, which was the business he'd been in before. So I thought, OK, fine. He knew what he was doing. And did he? He knew enough not to use his own money. Mm, so whose? Yours. He raised £100,000 from different people he knew. And yes, Muggins here was one of them. Because I believed in him. I trusted him. So what happened? Hi, Norbert. Good to here, then. You must like it. I just can't believe it, that's all. So, how's your day been? A long one. And there's more to come this weekend. I had to offer them over time. Right, so you're trying to tell me something. Hmm? Like what? Well, do you want to have time quiet? Oh, no, no, no. I'll do that. Got to do that. That's all that's keeping me going. Any road. It's nice seeing you again. And you. 
No, what happened? One week the nightclub opened, we're all supping champagne. A week later, it's closed. And there's Phil saying he's ever so sorry, but all our money's gone and we've no to show for it. Oh, no. Which I thought was the end of that. Only these friends who'd invested didn't believe him. They told me that they thought he still had most of the money tucked away. Of course, I stood up for him. But after a while, even I started to wonder. Anyway, the upshot is we're taking him to court to try and get our money back. With yours truly, a star witness. Oh, no. So what was so important that you had to get Emily in to babysit and go out for what's been two and a half hours now? I've just been with my friends. And that means aid, does it? Anyway, it's your fault. You said you'd mind, Beth. Which I had been doing. Yeah, you said all day. Which is why I promised my friends that I'd go out and meet them. Anyway, Emily doesn't mind. That's not the point. Oh, no, the point is I'm not supposed to have a you life, am I? You promised me and that I'm not supposed to have any friends. me you behave more responsibly. Yeah, and why? Because otherwise it just go on and on. So you didn't mean it? I'm just fed up with people telling me that I'm different all the time. And why? Because of her. Well, I'm fed up of her as well. And if I could, I'd give her away. Sarah! Well, why shouldn't I? You keep telling me that she's mine. Well, if she is, I can do what I want with her. And I want to give her away. Nah, I think they've done a number on me. Got me down as a soft touch. Yeah, well, I wouldn't fancy having to take them lot on. And Karen, you want to watch her? You see, the trouble is, they know I've got to get this order out on time. So they can call the tune. Won't always be like that, though, will it? Mm-mm. Because when we're over this, it's going to be a different tune altogether, and I'm going to be calling it. So you're still with this, Phil? No. Folk go off you when you start suing them. <laughs> I'm sure they do. In fact, when I see him in court, it's a bit first time in weeks. Still, there is one thing. If it is true, and he has still got your money, you're in with a chance of getting it back. Well, I'm told a good chance. Right. Let's drink to that, then. Same again, please. Yeah, half for me, please, then. Huh? Right, look. I'd better have a good chance. Yeah? Because if I lose this case, and this is for your ears only... Right. I shall be up to my neck in legal fees without a brass farthing to my name. In fact, I'll be worse off than I was 30 years ago when I started working here as a barmaid. Hey, yeah. Uh, hiya. Didn't think you'd bother coming. Good job you did, actually. I've uh, got an idea. Hey? Joe Carter needs us a lot more than we need him this morning. Yeah, that's why he's paying us double time. Uh-uh, correction. Triple time. You are? Uh-oh. Not that he knows that yet. You can't ask him to pay us triple time. Hayley, it's all about knowing what you're worth. No, it's not. It's about sticking to an agreement. Hey, speak for yourself. If she reckons she can get us triple time, then I am all for it. Look, I've got you over a barrel. If you don't get this order finished by the end of tonight, then his bum's in a sling when Mike gets back. That's blackmail. No, it's not. It's good business sense. <laughs> what if he refuses? We're making him an offer that he can't refuse. Time. Oh, we walk? Yep, go home and read the Sunday papers. Hey, I thought we had an agreement. Oh, well, things change. Yeah, so has he. Look, Joe, Sunday's a special. If you wanted Sunday. Yeah, now we changed our mind. Look, we've all decided it's triple time or nothing. Listen, I made you a fair offer. I let you work Sunday instead of Saturday. You got double time. And now we want triple. Have I treated any of you badly? Hmm? Have I been unreasonable? You know this is going to put me in an impossible situation. Yeah, all right, look, it's simple. We'll get it or we go. Well, before you do, just consider this. Your jobs depend on the success of this place. You know, short-term rewards, they're no use to anyone if you kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Ah, but if we were getting golden eggs, we wouldn't really want any more money, would we? No, no, he's right. There's a lot of sense in what Mr Carter's saying. Hayley. No, I'm sorry, Karen, I can't go along with this. Mr Carter's made us a good offer, we've agreed, and we should stick to it. Well, I'm glad you said that, Hayley, because there's no way I can offer you a lot of triple time. 
So you may as well pack your bags and go now. Eh? Well, double time's still on the table, but if your conscience can't let you take it, then... I'm sorry, ladies. It's lights out. Well, hang on a minute. I'm happy with double time. You know, if it's that or nothing. Fizz. Karen, there's no point flogging a dead horse. She's right. Come on, let's get back to work. No, Janice! Karen, get off your eye horse, will you? We've blown it. Good. Well, I'll go and put the kettle on, shall I? Looks like you could all do with the blue. Yeah, hey, while you're at it, go to the cabin, get us a few chucky bars in. Do you know what? I might just do that. Keep you all sweet, eh? <laughs> thanks very much. Tom, thanks. I won't be a minute. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'm just on my way over now oh, to yeah, pick well, David up. He's ready. What are you up to, anyway? Well, Sarah and me were taking Bethany to my mum's for Sunday lunch, but uh, looks like it just might be me and Bethany. Mmm, <sighs> trouble at Mel. Uh, Sarah, she's getting footloose. She dropped Bethany off with Emily and sloped off. Mm. So I had a go at her. I tried to explain about children and responsibility, but got out of hand. Isn't she all right? Oh, she's fine, just threatening to give Bethany away. <laughs> she doesn't mean that. Well, I think she did at the time. And what does Richard say? Just not here. Right. Well, do you want me to have a word with her? Would you? Well, yeah, of course I will. It's just that I've got David all morning, haven't I? Well, you could drop him off at my mum's after lunch when I bring Sarah and Bethany back. Right, and I come on to yours? Yeah, you have a chat in peace, then. That's if you don't mind. Yeah, there's no problem. Right. All right. Thanks. See you in a minute. Bye. You will have a job eating all them yourself. Yeah, not for me, they're for the girls. They're working on a special order today, so I thought I'd give them a bit of a treat. Well, I don't see as Mike would be too pleased to see you pampering his workforce. He might be worried you're setting a precedent. Well, actually, a bit of goodwill goes a long way in our line of business, Rita. Well, if you're sure they're not taking advantage of your good nature. I don't have one. <laughs> Thank you. Have you got any plans for today, Bert? I just thought I'd take it easy, love. Right. Only, as I said, I have got Gail and the kiddies coming over for the Sunday dinner. Oh, yeah, it'd be nice to see kiddies again. I bet they've shot up since I last saw them. Yes, yes, they have. <coughs> um, look, Bet, um, I'm sorry to have to bring this up, and please, I mean, I hope you won't take offence, but, well, would you mind not smoking in the house? Eh? I mean, it's not me, it's just, well, Girl, she can be a bit of a stickler, you know, with her kiddies and, well, all this talk about the dangers of passive smoking. Hey, no problem. You should have said summer before. It never crossed my mind. You see, I'm so used to living on my own. Oh, I bet you think I'm a right ogre now, hey, don't you? That's the last thing I think. <laughs> You're a good mate and I'm grateful for your hospitality. The last thing in the world I'd want to do is abuse it. No. From now on... I shall keep these in my pocket. Oh, look, there's no need to go that far. No, fair's fair. And meanwhile, I'm going to go and get dressed. Don't want your girl catching me out in my nighty, do I? <laughs> it's all right, I'll get it. Hey, up, don't wait me, boss. <laughs> Just mixing up a bit of grub for me and Les. Oh, can I have some? Is that all right, Les? No problem. Now he's here, he might as well make himself useful. Oh, I ain't a good cook, mate. That's OK. Just nip down the shop and get us 20 fags, eh? Yeah, all right. Uh, uh, while it's upstairs, I'll, I'll give you the money later. I can't afford to be shelling out for your fags. You're getting a free breakfast, aren't you? Free? I could get a breakfast at Roy's Rolls cheaper than a packet of fags. I'm only joking. You'll get your money back when you come back, don't worry. Yeah, well, if you're sure... Would I diddle you? OK. Do what else while I'm out? Get some sausages and black pudding if there's any going. But I heck, I'm liking the sound of this, Kirk, lad. It's starting to make me mouth water. Feeling a bit better, then? Perking up, yeah. I'll tell you what, let's have a bit of music. Liven the place up. Well, I hope it's finished by the time I get back. Very impressed. I wouldn't want to stop you working, Karen. And it's just that we all know you've done it before. On the inside. OK, floor show's over. Karen, don't you think it's time we called a truce? 
Do you mind? Look, I don't blame you for trying to get your mates more money. But you've got to accept I'm here to stay, Mum. That's what you're trying to say. I'm trying to say I think you're a good worker, but I'd hate to see you lose your job. And I appreciate you staying on today. Can I please use the ladies? Sure. And uh, just so you're under no illusions, I said I'll have the money today. Not for your benefit. Because you might be able to wait your charms on the likes of Gina Gregory. But it really doesn't wash with me. Gina. Oh, damn. We've got to do something. Why don't we take him for a walk? We shouldn't have to go for a walk. He'll fall asleep in his buggy. Yeah, he'd fall asleep in his cot if it wasn't for that noise coming through the wall. We've been on that less quite a lot recently. Yeah, for good reason. Oh, Emma, can't you just leave it? No, I can't leave it. I'm entitled to a quiet Sunday like anybody else. And I'm just about at the end of my tether with left batters, babe. <laughs> hey, up, listen. Just sit there, go and answer it. Can he help you? Where's Les? Les? Are you, Emma? You know Kirk, my new lodger. And is he responsible for that row? What row's that? The music. Do you really think I choose that to listen to? Somebody did. That's Les. He's decades out of date. One of the best groups ever, that. You are. I'm not here to discuss the relative merits of rock music, Les. I just want you to turn it down. We have done. Yeah, well, make sure you keep it turned down. I've got a baby in there trying to sleep. He's bad enough being plagued by rats, let alone being deafened by that racket. Oh, no, that's not fair. I've done my best with them rats. The council's been on to it and everything. But you still haven't shifted this rubbish. Oh, I can't disturb out. Not till she comes back and declares it a rat-free zone. And when's that going to be? When they stop taking the bait. Oh, uh, they've already done that. Say, Zoo, heard uh, that lady rat catcher. She came around yesterday while you was out. She said that they've gone and it's all right for you to get all your rubbish shifted. I thought Joe was supposed to be taking you for your dinner. So did I. He's never stood you up, has he? Oh, it's starting to look like that, isn't it? I could always take his place if you want. Uh, there's no need for that. Uh, beginning to give up on you. Look, I can't stay. I told you about that job we got on. <laughs> you are joking. I know, it sounds a bit thin, but there's nothing I can do about it. I don't get that job out on time and I'm for the high job when Mike gets back. And can't you at least spur an hour? No one there working their socks off. It's bad management. At least step for a drink. Well. Wow. Such a lovely dinner for you. I hey, love you. you. And nobody told me you'd got an addition to the family. Bet. What a little cracker. What's she called? Bethany. Bethany, yeah. Uh, and you must be Sarah Louise. Yep. Well, you won't remember me. And where's David? I bet he's shot up and all. He's with Martin for the morning. Yeah, your mum did tell me. Still, it's all sorted now, isn't it, love? And congratulations on your engagement. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and this little one and all. Your mum never said out to me about you having her. <laughs> No, Bethany's not mine. Oh, I'm sorry. She's not yours, I hope. Oh, Beth. <laughs> She's mine, actually. Yours? Yeah, Bethany's Sarah's little girl. Surprised me, ma'am, didn't tell you. No, no, she didn't tell me. But she's lovely. You must be very proud of her. Yes, we are. Right, well, uh, I'd best be off. Let you lot get your dinner. No, don't leave on our account. No, I've got one or two people to see, love. Enjoy your meal. Oh, right. Ta-ra, Bye. Bye. Well, we surprised her, didn't we? Right. Stick it all in these bags and then use this to sweep the place up after. Why me? Because you're the one with the big mouth. You're the one who dubbed me in it. I was only telling the truth. Yeah, well, maybe this will teach you there's a time and place to tell the truth. And it's not in front of Emma Watts on my only decent day off. One at a time, old. Give us an hand. Hey, now do with me. Oh, come on. No way. You got yourself into this mess. Come on, don't just stand there like a Jesse. Get on with it. But what if all the rats aren't dead? You have to hope they all are, don't you? But what if some have survived? What if there's still a few under all that lot? Then watch out. Because there's nothing more dangerous than a cornered rat. Hey, where's 
the box? No, there was wondering when someone else had noticed. What do you mean? Well, he's done his ten minutes, I know, hasn't he? Show us all how wonderful he is. What? You mean he's just sloped off? Well, he's not in the office, is he? Maybe he's in the toilet. Well, you get real early. He's skived off. He's got us locked with our noses to the grindstone, and now he's done a runner. He could be out on a call somewhere. On a Sunday! More likely stuff in his face. Why are you so ready to criticise him? He's mucked in on tea, he's made us all a cup of tea. Yeah, and now he's got us doing what he wants. He's disappeared. Right, well, if he's having a break, why don't we? We don't know he's having a break. Yeah, but whether he is or not, I'm still starving. We agreed to work right through it until we finish this. Uh, not without something to eat. Oh, right, but maybe someone could go to the Rovers and pick up some barn cakes and crisps then. Right? That'll be me. Hey. You go over that road, we'll never see you again. Oh, go on then, what does everybody want? What is it? Bed, nice to see you. Fred? GMT? Bye, with a memory like that, you should have been a barmaid. Hey, I've just seen Sarah Platt's little lass, I couldn't believe my eyes. Oh, I look, come on, since you went away, love. Oh, I? Where else should I be knowing about then? Right, i best get off. I'll have another. Uh, no, I shouldn't. Yeah, well, there's plenty of things you shouldn't do, Joe, but I'd be quite happy to do most of them with you. Well, in that case, I'll have just one more. What drink? What? What did you have in mind? Well, say around, you might find out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What's that? <laughs> Excuse me. All right, lovey. Surprised you didn't tell Bet about Sarah and Bethany. Uh, well, it wasn't intentional. Uh, it wasn't good timing, either. What do you mean? We had a big row the other day. She's still got the knock on. Sarah? Mm. Wants to give away Bethany. What? Oh, it was frustration. Gail, did she actually say she wanted to give her away? Yes. Well, shall I have a talk with her? No, I've asked Martin to, so we won't stay too long. He's going to drop David off here in about half an hour, if that's all right. No, 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 that's fine. Yes, I mean, it's best if he's out of the way. Mm. I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, please do, and don't worry. I mean, she has handled things so well up until now. It's bound to be a few blips. What's this? Two for Texas. Hey, I'm taking no chances. Are you trying to get me locked up? There's a copper next door. Listen, I need protection. You never know what you might find under this lot. Yeah? Well, let's hope he can shoot straight, then. Because if out pops up, you're in serious trouble. I've already told him I'm no good. Oh, well, you shouldn't have it, then. Here, let me have a look. Yours, is it? Yeah, I use it down at the kennels. Very nice little rifle. Very nice. Used to have one myself once. Yeah, well, just be careful where you're pointing it, then. It's not a toy. I'll have you know, when I was an army cadet in school, I got my marksman's badge. Really? Not for using pea shooters like this, though. No. We were fighting real 303s, like my dad used to use in the war. What, and you was good, was you? Good! I could knock a gnat off at 300 yards. Hey, well, as long as you stick to gnats, I'll be happy. Don't you worry. You'll be safe with me riding shotgun. And what about me? You. You can give him hand. Oh, well, that's kind of you. I'm all out, me. Yeah, and what are you going to be doing while we're cleaning up your rubbish? I'm going to be sitting here and staying on watch. If a rat so much as shows a whisker, I'll blow its head off. Uh, I don't know if I'm too sure about that. Don't you worry. You just get stuck in. If a rat pops up, get out of the way quick. I'd hate to have you on my conscience. So he's supping beer with his arms around that stuck-up cow while we're here slogging our guts out for double time. Yeah, and he said we were being unreasonable. I don't think we should jump to conclusions. I know what I saw early. And believe me, you'd have no to do with work. Right, if he can spend his Sunday supping, then so can I. Karen, you can't go. We're nowhere near completion. Watch me. Yeah, me and our face. Right, about right, the rest of you. Well. Yeah, well, there's not much point stopping round here now, is there? Johnny, think about this. Remember what he said to us about our jobs. Why should I, Ella? He doesn't seem to go. <sighs> Joe, Gladys. Come on, come on, get a move on. You'll be here all day at this rate. It's all right for you sat there where you can. You can't work and drink. We'll swap places for a bit then. I'll put everyone else's lives in danger. Oh! Oh! Where is it? He's Where dead. is it? He's saying he's dead. So what's all the noise about? 
I thought it was still alive. I thought when you shouted like that, it was still up and running. You're right. It is dead. Oh, well, I'm glad you agree. Well, there you are, then. There's nothing to be frightened of, is there? Sheriff Cafaris was right. They've all <coughs> snuffed it. Yeah, well, at least we know now, don't we? Yeah? Well, stop pussyfooting around and shift that roll of old carpet in the corner. I never really thought there was much chance of her being alive. I always knew it would have wind up. Yeah. Where? Where? There! There! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! It's a cat! Cat! There he goes! Where? I can't see anything! Underneath that roll of carpet! Are you sure it wasn't a rat? I saw it! I don't live under that carpet, and if it is a rat, I'll plug him. On your bike. You can't be frightened of a rat. Not the rat I'm scared of is you and that thing. Kirk! What? Look under that carpet. Oh, I don't know. What are you, a man or a mouse? I'll kick it. Hey, it's kicking or nothing. Right, well, well, kick it when I tell you. Don't shoot me foot. I'm a marksman. All right. Well, when, when I tell you. Ready? One, two, three. It's the cat. You useless thing, I should shoot him. There's no need to not see it again. So, how are you? I feel like Marie Antoinette on the steps of the guillotine. Oh, surely it's not that bad. Oh, I know, Phil. He'll have got a good brief. He'll be sticking my neck under the blade at every opportunity. Yeah, but from what you said, it seems there's a very strong case against him. He's a slippery customer, is our Phil. Yeah, but you're up to it, and if you've got right on your side... I just keep thinking to myself, what's going to happen to me if I don't win? You'll be fine. Now, what can I get you to drink? No, let me. Now, come on, I was first. Thanks, Ken. Another G&T. Shelley, uh, large G&T and a half a bit, please. OK, love. Don't worry. You'll be fine. Well, I just hope you're right. I've been dealt some bad cards in my life. But this time, I'm desperately hoping I come up trumps. If I'd have known I was coming home to a lecture, I would have stayed at my grand's. It's not a lecture. Martin's concerned about you. Only because you told him. Yeah, well, of course I told him. It's simple. I'm 15, not 50. I want to go out and enjoy life. I don't want to be stuck in all night looking after a kid. Look, I'm sorry, Sarah, but you're a mum. That's got to come first, however young or old you are. I mean, have you thought how Bethany might be feeling? She's too young to understand what I'm thinking. Yeah, well... I don't agree. I think she understands more than you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Bethany, where's your mummy? Mummy? Yeah. Of course she knows who I am. Yeah. And if you were to disappear, you think she'd miss you? For a bit, maybe, yeah. Look, Sarah, you're a mum. She loves you. I'm sorry. I want to be a good mum. But that is difficult. We all feel like that sometimes. But I'm 15 and I'm trying, I'm trying really hard. But I just think Bethany would be better off without me. Do you love her? Of course I love her. What kind of question is that? It's the only question that matters, really. Can I have a kiss? Oh. Where is everybody? They've gone home. They can't have. I'm afraid they have. But why? What's happened? I sent Janice over to get some barm cakes for lunch and she saw you and Gina. <laughs> so? I just popped over to tell her I couldn't take her out. That's not how it looked to Janice. What'd she say? That you were drinking. OK, so I had a pint. And that you were canoodling with Gina. She was upset. I was apologising for letting her down. Well, I think the way it looked to the girls is that you were letting them down, especially after what you'd said about the factory and the jobs. I really did not go over there to skive, Hayley. I'm sure you didn't, but it's not me you need to convince, Mr Carter. No, I know. I'm sorry. Look, uh, is there any possibility you could go after them, persuade them to come back, at least, you know, give us a chance to explain what really happened? No, I can't do that. I'm not exactly the favourite person at moments, I... I can't afford to lose this order, Hayley. Look, well, maybe if I stay and you muck in, between us we could still do it. There's no chance on earth we can get this order out on time. We could if we worked all night. No, we couldn't. Thanks, anyway. Listen, you better get off home. What about you? I'm going to stay here and work out what I'm going to tell Mike when he gets back. You've done your best. I'm sure he'll understand. Do you think so? Well, I bet you that by this time tomorrow, I'll be packing my bags. How long have you been here? 
Ooh, a while. All night? Yeah, something like that. I thought so. I had a couple hours on the office floor. Bacon or sausage? Mm -hmm. I love it when a woman talks dirty. <laughs> Don't be soft. <laughs> Which one yeah. have you got? I have no idea. Coffee? Oh, and there's some strong coffee in there. Hmm. Great. Really? Yeah. It's only seven, you're not even due in for another hour and a half. Yeah, but I knew you'd be here and uh, got a bit of... <laughs> and I thought I'd just come and give you an hand. Uh, not that it'll make any difference. Yeah, no. I could go home and just leave it, could I? We could still finish the order by tomorrow, you know, if everybody pulled the finger out. The deadline's lunchtime today, Hayley. And that Mr Richardson doesn't understand the meaning of the word a little bit late. No, neither does Mr Baldwin. What do you think he'll say? Hmm. Apart from, you're fired. I don't know. Well, oh, you wouldn't do that. You and I both know that's exactly what he'd do. What time does his flight you in? Five hours. Bye, I'd never make hairdresser. Not if it means being fully made up with all your slap on at this time. What's up, love? Oh, no, I'm just thinking about an old friend. A fella. That's what usually brings tears to my eyes. No, 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 it's not a fella. It's Alma. It's a year today since she died. Do you know, I walk with this... Holler feeling in my stomach before I even realised what day it was. I'm not sure how long it is since I felt like that about anybody. Not sure whether that's a blessing. You know yourself how lonely it can get. I think I were closer to Alma than anybody, you know, apart from Alpha. Must have been hard for you. She was so full of life right to the end. I don't think I could have been that. She had you. That must have meant a lot to her. <laughs> tea? Or something stronger? No, her tea's valid. Bitter. <laughs> oh, look, look. Hiya. Hello. Morning. Hiya. Long night. Oh, you can say that again. I'm gagging for a couple. Hey. What's the matter with this flipping thing? Ah, childproof locks. I finally got round to fitting them. Well, what have you done that for now? It's going to be ages before he's trying to get into cupboard. No, it's for tomorrow. The mother and baby group. Julie, the organiser, she gave me a list. Yeah. Okay. Childproof locks, covers on the plug sockets, tea, coffee, decaf, three different types of biscuits and baby wipes. So has everyone been given a list then? I don't know, why? You sure it's not just because you're a blank? I never thought. Well, it better not be. All right, she gave me a list. No, I'm not bothered. Oh, so is that why you spent all last night putting locks on the cupboards then? No, it's important I speak to Mr. Richardson in person. Okay, what time? Fine, catch him later. Ah, uh, nearly finished then, have we? You know, if you don't get work as a machinist, you could always do stand up. Right. Would anyone care to tell me what the hell happened yesterday? You know, if you lot had a problem, you should have just talked to me about it instead of walking out. How could we have a conversation with you about it when you practically had your tongue stuck down Gina Gregory's throat? He came back straight after you'd gone. We didn't have to work. I mean, it was voluntary. Hey, we had a deal. You've got to understand how it looked. We thought you were taking the mic. Did it not occur to any of you that while you lot were getting double time, I was getting no one? Now, even if I'd wanted to spend the whole afternoon with Gina, which I sincerely would have loved, it didn't stop you lot making a nice little learner, did it? Hey? Well, what happens now? Well, if it's not too much bother, maybe you'd like to do a bit of work. Is that it? You do know it's not going to be done for dinner, don't you? Karen, the chances of meeting this deadline went out the window the minute you lot walked out the door yesterday. And it was you doubling the order that got us in this mess in the first place. Oh, there we go again. Karen, bang on. Well, I hope you feel a whole lot better when you're signing on, love. Sacking me, are you? There's no need, love. You see, the chances are we'll be penalised by the customer for delivering late. And when Mike gets to find out why, do you think I'm going to be the only one who gets dumped? I'll see you down the job centre, ladies. You're winding us up. His job really is on the line. Don't mean ours is. Do you want to take that chance? Now, listen. 
The only hope we have got of getting anything out of this at all is if I can get the bulk of that order to Richardson's today. Or, if you'd rather stand around pointing the finger of blame, that's entirely up to you. Why does Roy keep looking over here? Yeah, just doing. <laughs> For me? I've always had it. Although the sort I've been attracting haven't half changed over the years. Uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, it's Mrs Gilroy, isn't it? It's Miss Lynch. I don't owe you money, do I? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm chairman of the Historical Society. The boy needs a hobby. Well, yeah, well, quite, yes. I have been researching the history of the Rover's return, it being the centennial this coming August, and your name seems to crop up quite frequently in various documents, uh, photographs and such. Oh, Beth, there you go, a place in history. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was wondering if I could prevail upon you to give a talk to the society, my, my life in the pub, as it were, uh, on that centennial date. I couldn't cock, I'll be long gone by then. Oh, oh dear, well, that, that's a shame. Well, ni nice to meet you, anyway. <laughs> You know you pass your cell by day when some strange-looking bloke wants you to talk to his mates about history, and you nearly say yes. Oh. <laughs> well, I think it's time for something a bit stronger than coffee. Oh, I don't know. Hey, you've got a day of freedom, mate. The most of it. Come on, let's have one for Almery. Oh yeah. Come on. Soon. Hiya. Hiya. No one was wondering if we could borrow some dining chairs for tomorrow. Yeah, sure. You're having a party? Not quite. First I'm being lined up by the Historical Society. Now, a flipping funeral director's taking me measurements. Oh, that's Archie. He's harmless. By my way of thinking, the only harmless bloke's in the back of that hearst. Not the one walking in front of it. I need a strong drink. Are you coming? Mr. Richardson, please. Yep, Joe Carter, Underworld. Have you heard from Mr. Baldwin yet? Yeah, I'm trying to sort Richardson out before he gets back. Let's pray his flight's delayed. Mr. Richardson? Yeah, yeah, everything's fine. Well, we're a bit behind. No? I can get the bulk of it out to you today and the rest of it tomorrow. No, no, no. I, I know that's not what we agreed, but... Tuesday? Uh, well, I'm sorry, I don't understand. No? When? No problem, Mr Richardson. We'll definitely have everything out to you by then. No, that's no problem. And, uh, I'm sorry for wasting your time and ringing you like this. OK, you too. Didn't he go for it, then? He wanted to know why I was bothering him by ringing him. Since the order doesn't have to be delivered till tomorrow. What? Well, apparently he spoke to Mike on Friday and they agreed to put the order back. He thought he was on holiday. Yeah, so did I. Oh, well, then. Panic over it. <laughs> no, Hayley. He should have told me. All this flipping grief for now. I'm going to kill him! <laughs> What they did to me yesterday. You can't be joking, can you? Oi, this order's so important. Why don't you two do something instead of still bake gassy? I'll get that for you. So we'll make you supervise it or what? Oh, are we going to get a dinner break? I'll tell you what. Would you work through double time for me? Hey, there, get that report. <laughs> well, I'm not offering it, so yeah, you may as well knock off now. Right. Is at the airport. I'm busy. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Baldwin. He's um, he's in packing somewhere. Yeah, I'll tell him. Bye. 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 It's a conversation I want to have face to face. All right. Do you know I've been here ten minutes? 
And I've not seen either Laurel or Hardy over there crack a smile. Well, oh, Beck, come on, they rushed off their feet. Fred, when are you going to get them some help? Well, see, in my reckoning, if one of them's going to take over as manager, then they should employ staff, not have someone foisted on them by me. You're putting one of them in charge? Mm hmm. Which one do you reckon? What are you asking me for? I don't know either of them. Well, I could pick you a master butcher out of one of those police lineups. Wouldn't even have to talk to him. I dare say you could do the same with bar staff. Well, they're both pretty enough. Behind that bar, you need more front than Blackpool. These two aren't even Lytham St. Anne's. Oh, Alfie and me talked about moving to Lytham. <laughs> exactly. Lovely place to live. But Blackpool's the place for a holiday. That's what you want in a pub, a show, a break from home. Now, I've got to see a man about a nightclub. See ya. See Bye. ya. Carlo. Oh. How do you do? Oh. <laughs> oh. Is that your uh, house guest who I saw you with this morning? Bet. Do you know, word doesn't have to travel fast. Old woman, isn't she? Oh. Hey, you better not let Blanche hear you talk like that. She's away uh, visiting a friend. Well, even more reason for keeping your eyes firmly fixed to the front during a funeral, not flirting with bystanders. <laughs> now, I wouldn't even have noticed her if she hadn't been standing next to the best-looking hairdressers in <laughs> Weatherfield. <laughs> you can't stop yourself, can you? <laughs> You're also not bad at your job, according to Blanche, and she doesn't give praise that lightly. Yeah, all tips. It was 10p last time. tips. <laughs> anyway, look, we try. I like to think that people leave my salon looking better than when they came in. I'm exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't think you really compare that, actually. Yeah, I don't think I really want to think about this. Oh, it comes to us all, love. And uh, when you think of how much time in your life you spend trying to look your best, well, uh, why should it be any different at the very end? Oh, is that the time? I must be off. See you. I'll see you later. Fred, bar. any idea when we're going to get another pair of hands behind this bar? Well, see, I thought it it uh, it had made more sense to wait until I'd employed a manager, let them do it. Yeah? And when's that going to be? I've made enough mistakes in this job already. What with Michael and good old Douglas and then her. Next decision's got to be right. Yeah, but you know what we can do by now? Yeah, well, see, running a pub's a bit like put it on a show. For one entertaining more Blackpool Tower than having a doors in a rhythm tea shop. Fred, I'm just about to serve an undertaker who's fresh from a funeral. Now, I think he wants a quiet drink or a spot of reflection, even. Not to hear the one about the actress and the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd do better making the undertaker manager. He'd bring a bit of life behind this bar. <laughs> Seating. Sorted. Right, you've got the sherry and vodka in. <laughs> now I'm serious. They might not be on the list, but they're essentials. What are you doing? Uh, my husband and son will be filling the house with like-minded women and babes while I'm trying to sleep upstairs. It's a mother and baby group, and if you think we're going to disturb you, I'll put them off and we'll have it when you're on days. I'll be fine. Mother and baby? Yeah. You wouldn't come, would you? I think he needs a friendly face. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. What do I have to wear? Wear? You can wear anything you want. I don't think Josh has got anything suitable. Hey? Well, he's not been to a party before. Well, it's hardly a party. <sighs> I love going to town when I've been to my mum's. Maxine, really, there's no need, you know. Oh, yes, there is. Can't be letting Benjamin down now, can we? Thanks a lot again, Curly. Yeah, See ya. Right. See ya. Lovely hands you've got, Audrey. You know, you can tell they're creative. <laughs> oh, now, stop that. You know what I've told you, Archie Shuttleworth? You know what we were talking about earlier, the... Similarities in our jobs. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. I didn't see it myself. No, no, no. I'm, I'm being serious. I mean, there's not many people pass over from this veil of tears looking like they'll actually want to when they meet their maker. No. Seeing someone finally at rest, though, is enough for me. Especially when they've been through weeks and months of awful suffering. Yeah, well, uh, that is enough for some, but... Uh, are other times when something more creative is required. Now, let me explain. Now, you're in business because ladies like to look their best, right? <laughs> yes. Well, that doesn't finish when they shuffle off this mortal coil. Making someone look at peace is the least I can do. <laughs> Many's the time I've heard the relatives say, the deceased never looks so well. <laughs> Makes me proud, does that? Oh. 
Yeah, I've never really thought of it like that, actually. And that is why Edwina Levy has been helping me out the past few years. Edwina Levy? Really? Doesn't she have a salon on Balaclava Terrace? That's Edwina, aye. Yeah. The trouble is, uh, she's not been too well of late. In fact, uh, I may be uh, giving her a staff discount before long. Oh, dear, well, that's sad. I was thinking, who could step in to Edwina's shoes, you know, and do my clients a real service with her skill and eye and technique? You don't mean me. <laughs> I do, Audrey Laurie. Oh. Help me help them. Do the hair on a person who's died? Precisely. Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm, no, I can't even think about it. I'm sorry. I mean, I'm hairdresser for living people. I mean, people who go out my salon and, and, and say how proud they are of the way they look. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, no. I'm so, sorry. Can I have a word? We've been talking. <laughs> so what's new? Oh, come on, we're just trying to make up yesterday. OK, well, go on, then. Well, we thought we'd uh, stay on tonight, if you like, and make sure we get that order finished. Yeah, double time, mind. No need, thanks. But you think it was important? Yeah, it was important yesterday. Anyway, the order's been put back. What? When? Well, what does it matter? We've been working ourselves daft, trying to get this work done, and now you tell us it doesn't even matter. You were doing what you get paid for, so what's your problem? The problem is, mate, you're taking the mick. Just leave it, Karen, eh? No, why should I? You know, you give us this big sob story all morning about how we're all going to get the sack if we don't even get this order out. Yeah, well, I didn't know myself then, did I? Oh, and why should we believe that? Because it's true. Ellie, why just give it up? Why are you trying to look dafter than you already are? Oh. Mike, hi. I was hoping I'd see you. Oh, well, I don't often hear that. <laughs> look at you. No need to ask if you've had a good holiday. Uh, I suppose you remembered what day it is. Like I could forget. Oh, yes, since she died, who'd think it? They say it gets easier with time, but they could have fooled me. You know, I still think, oh, I tell Alma when I see her. <laughs> Listen to me trying to explain it to you. You know exactly how I feel. Yeah, of course I do. Anyway, lots happened since then, hasn't there? Especially to you. Yes, you must be able to write, laugh. The mess I got myself in. I doubt that. She never stopped loving you, you know, not deep down. Why is it that it doesn't make me feel better? Look, I was thinking of going to the Garden of Remembrance later. Do you want to come? Oh, are you, well, are you sure you don't want to be on your own? You've known me long enough now, Audrey. The last thing I want to be is on my own. Pick up about seven. Yeah, that's great. Look, I've got a dash. I've left Mrs. Broadbed under the dryer far too long. Look at seven, right? See ya. Oi! Still in women's knickers, Baldwin. Bed! How lovely to see you! Ah. <laughs> and here was me worried about coming back. Oh, what's the story? Care of the community? Have they thrown you out of Brighton? Too quiet. I was desperate for the bright lights of Weatherfield. <laughs> oh, it's lovely to see you. So tell me, life treating you well? Yeah, fine. Not as well as you, though, judging from this town. Slave driving still profitable, then? Yeah, and fun. Talking of which, got to get back. Make sure their noses are still on the grindstone. But I'll tell you what, buy a drink tonight? Sure, what time? Uh, 8.30. Got to be somewhere at 7. Rovers, 8.30. Just like old times, eh? Hey, it's not clocking up time yet. Here's where I'm concerned. I've uh, done my whack for today. I think more than. Well, you go, Karen. But take your things, because you won't be coming back. Go on, then. Sack me. OK. Office now. Get your cards. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> well, he's just sacked me. I haven't even done that wrong. <laughs> I want a word. Look, can't it wait? What's up with him? He's a bit upset. Yeah. What was all that about again? It was Mr Baldwin put that deadline back on me if he didn't tell Joe. Ooh, so much for being Baldwin's right-hand man, eh? 
Come on then, sunshine. Don't play games with me, Mike. The only game I've been playing recently is golf. That Richardson order. Why the hell didn't you tell me that you got the deadline put back? Because I wanted to see how you could cope under pressure. You should have told me! No, you didn't phone the client. You set yourself a deadline that was impossible. Yeah, trying to boost your profits. Yes, and you failed. Have you got any idea what I have been going through the last couple of days? Yeah, like I told you. Pressure? No. You see, pressure I can handle. But those lot out there have been making my life hell thanks to you! How'd you reckon that? Blabbing about me being inside, Mike. Oh, it's a bit of banter. You've got to have a tougher skin if you want to survive. That's what's been going on between you and Karen McDonald, is it? Eh? She's been needling you. Non-stop. And that's not the half of it. Because she was walking out before clocking off, and I sacked her. Without consulting me? You left me in charge! we still got to get that Richardson order out. She's a very good machinist. I suggest you go out there and you make your peace. Oh, no, hang on a minute. You gave me your word when you went away. You gave me your backing on any decision, and that means the hiring and the firing. Yeah, but I'm back now. Not your call anymore. You have no idea what that scheming little mare has been up to. She's a troublemaker. She takes liberties, and she has gone too far. She's got to go, Mike. No, she hasn't. You can't undermine me like this. I can do what I like. It is my business, my factory, my workforce, my decision. OK. It's her or me, Mike. Now you're being silly. No, I'm not. Because I've got principles. And I don't work for anybody who stabs me in the back, all right? So you can stuff your job and stuff you. I don't reckon he's in a position to sack anybody now. See? She's missed it. Oh. Teenagers are hard work. Yeah. Oh, go on, say it. Not that you'd know. Well, let's face it, you were never there, were you? You were more feckless at 35 than I ever was at 15. Gail, okay, love it. Who does she take after, eh? I mean, doing her homework most of the time. Standing by her kid, eh? Hmm. Well, now you put it like that. Hey, oh, hello, young lady. Hiya. You missed your bus? Oh, you noticed. It's a sign. Sarah, would, would a biscuit be permissible? Uh, yeah, whatever. Oh, yeah, thank you. You weren't meant to go into school today. No, what was I meant to be doing? Helping me choose a new pair of trainers. Oh, yeah, because they're at least, what, three weeks old? Six. My dad left his wallet on the landing last night. Oh, is that a sign as well? Yeah. That he shouldn't drink when he's working cash out. Eight? Can't advance some pocket money. So what do you reckon? Are we on or what? Sarah? Oh, um, Bethany was thirsty. I forgot a juice. <laughs> oh, well, I've just seen Ken Barlow ask him to give you a lift to school. I'll take Bethany to the crash. But you'll be late for work. Yeah, well, I... They can't give me detention, can they? I'm all right, Mum, honestly. And, um, I thought if Martin picked her up, you and me could do a bit of shopping. Yeah, straight from school. You fancy it? I could meet you outside. Yeah, cool. That's great. Thanks, Mum. OK. Bye, Bethany. I'm sure Mr Barlow's got room in the back. You've asked him nicely. No, it's right, my dad's dropping me off. I just came in for his bacon balm. Right, I'll leave you to it. Have a nice day. Hey? If it isn't scruffy cow, what's this? Just down Wednesday? Draw dull Wednesday, actually. What? Yeah, Baldwin turned flaky, started playing games. No. Yeah. Then the goblin leg's got a big wooden spoon out. What, Karen McDonald? Yeah, I couldn't stomach it. Anyway, <laughs> we'll be out of work for long, won't I? Fastest mailbag sword in the West, me. Who's was going to turn me down, eh? Bingo. Come on, girls. Pals all round. That's all uh, no, it's only half an hour. He might have an appointment. Yeah, with a DSS. Come on, pay up tight one. What's all this? <laughs> Collection for uh, Joe Carter's leaving prison. Cheers. Why are you chipping in? You don't know that he's gone. I saw him storm out the door early. For good. Mr Baldwin probably talking round. Yeah, that's right. Look, it is half past nine and there ain't nobody here cracking the whip. Well, actually, yeah, we should all be knuckling down now. <laughs> no, see, I can take that from you, Ayla, because you're a pro. 
See, it's been pushed around by amateurs that I can't stand. So come on, girls. Come on, chop, chop. Let's do as the lady says. Oh, I think I'll make us all love. Celebrate Audrey, love. Audrey, how many times have I got to tell you? You may not have regulars in your line of business, but mine are my bread and butter. Look, they come in here for a bit of peace. They do not want to see me talking to the Grim Reaper. Well, look, I'll say I come in for a trim. Come to mention I could no, do with a bit. Stop it! Now, whatever you've got to say, you say it out here, right? Oh, you've got me all wrong, love. Hi, I've just come round about the uh, mother and baby, mother and father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I wonder whether you want me to bring anything, any um, nibbles, drinks, Ashley's pate. These do's, they're very uh, informal. Oh, right. You see, I've got a list here off uh, off Julie. She told me not to go to any trouble. Mm. Well, people say that. Yeah, when they don't really mean it. Yeah, it's a thin line, isn't it? I mean, there's no trouble and then there's no effort. You see, I don't have regulars, Audrey. You're right. I just get one chance to make an impression. I want to make sure it's the right impression. That's why I came to you. It's true, then, about Mr Carter. You saw for yourself? Come on, then, Hayley. Spit it out. I thought you'd have talked him round. Half the way he spoke to me. He had a right to be angry. I mean, I know there are misunderstandings on both sides, but I think it'll be a big loss. I do rate Joe Carter. That's why I took him on. But when it came to the crunch and I dared to contradict him, what did he do? He stamped his foot, picked up his bat and ball and went home. Now, what am I supposed to do? When it came to the crunch, he knuckled down behind a machine and turned out a batch of knickers Janice Battersby would be proud of. Yeah? Working through the night, on his own. <laughs> Not what I'd call management. He cracked jokes and brewed up and kept the girls happy. Most of them. And when he tried to do the decent thing and keep his girlfriend happy, that's when it all went wrong. What's his girlfriend got to do with it? That doesn't matter. The point is he tried. Damn sight harder than his machinists. <laughs> Audrey, what's up? What's up, Audrey? Is Not there a problem? problem? Nothing. No. Oh, well, yes, there is, actually. You're in your pyjamas. So? At lunchtime. I'm a night owl. It's the crack of dawn to me. In the garden. We agreed no smoking in the house. In the front garden? I mean, are you not afraid folks will see you? What folk? Window cleaner? Has he put a complaint in? No. Because if he has, I have a lovely baby doll. Oh, not Beth, to mention come on. It. Now, look, there's no need for this, really. You can smoke in the house. Well, in the lounge. I've got loads of air freshener, really. Is that what you come back home for? Well, oh, no, no, I, I wanted to ask your advice, really. It, it's a bit delicate. Oh, oh window clean. Stop it, please. Hi, Mike. Is she in? Uh, she's in the lounge, love. Right. Where are you? I come in peace, I come in peace. I'm sorry I stood you up. I'll take you to lunch. You too, Audrey, if you fancy it. Uh, no, Mike, it's OK. This is just a flying visit. How are you, pearls of wisdom? Fire away. Uh, it'll keep. Uh, I, I've got to get back to the salon, actually. <laughs> and I'd best get me face on. Give us five minutes. Are you trying to kid? Ten tops. <laughs> uh, uh, there's paper there, love, while you're waiting. <laughs> Just in case. Oh, he's soaking. How long's his nappy been on? What? Oh, I'm sorry, love. I've got to unpack this lot. Right, uh, filter, decaf, ordinary tea, peppermint tea. I've got crackers, three different types of cheeses, and... Don't forget the five loaves and fishes. No, no, there was something else. Norman, it's a baby and parent group. It's not a royal garden party. Unless Daddy sold the exclusive rights to Lardy Da magazine. Oh, yeah, yeah, very funny. I just don't want people to think I'm not making an effort. No, I'm not all want is a cup of tea, a custard cream and a chance to brag about who's the most knackered. Well, it's no skin off your nose. You won't even be here. Too right, I won't. I've been chasing toe rags all morning. I'll be upstairs getting some well-earned kip. What do you reckon, blue or green? It does look so cute in the green. Oh, well, then. But then that colour washes me out. Look, they are both absolutely lovely. I just popped round to say hello, actually, while we were quiet. Oh. Still coping without me? <laughs> well, no traumas to report. Mm -hmm. um, Archie Shuttleworth popped his head round this morning. Mm -hmm. What's up? Are you not keen? No, I'm sure he's very nice in himself. But? Well, he does build his part up a bit, doesn't he? 
How do you mean? Well, all he does is put dead bodies in a box and carries it to the cemetery. I mean, the way he spoke, you think it were rocket science. <laughs> well, I think there's a little more to it than that, sweetheart. Oh, all right, then. He can drive a car dead slow without his accelerating leg shaking. Oh, Maxine! Well, he gets on my nerves. I mean, people go on about hairdressers being space cadets. I mean, you have to know about chemicals, use a till, chat to customers. I mean, you don't get that with stiffs, do you? I mean, because they're past caring. Well, uh, very sensitively put, my darling. <sighs> oh, about time. My stomach thinks my throat's been cut. Not done yet. Didn't have a chance to ask you yesterday. I brought you back. Nostalgia. Oh, getting sentimental in your old age, are you? Nah. The invite came through for Betty's retirement. I thought, to hell with it. Why not? Betty retired? Well, I was only going to stay there one night, but you know how it is. Bit of making up to do, old faces to catch up on, so... Here I am. Yeah, yeah. That's what you're telling people. What's the real reason? You know me too well. I should hope so, after all these years. Mm. I'll tell you in the restaurant over a nice bottle of Chianti. Do you know, I could eat a scabby-headed horse. Wednesdays, they're off. A nice steak will do. Where have you booked us? At this hour, you'll have to settle for the Rovers. The Rovers? You're taking me for my dinner at Rovers? Well, I've been waiting here for nearly an hour. Ah. I've got an order going out tomorrow without a manager to oversee it. You know how I'm fixed. I can't go far from home. Not with the girls in the mood they're in. Why didn't you say? Why? Would you have gone for the natural look? You go. I've lost my appetite. But... Grab yourself a sandwich at the desk. I'll take you for a proper meal over the weekend, I promise. Jam tomorrow? You can choose your own restaurant. La Contessa, that's still good. Oh, and there's a lovely little tapas bar. I'll be washing my hair. Ah, now you are overreacting. You sound just like Phil. Phil? Who's he when he's at home? Phil's the reason that I've had to come back to this godforsaken hole without a penny to my name and my self-respecting shreds. Do you want to tell me about it? Not here. I'm sick of staring at these four walls. Well, where, then? Anywhere. I don't care. Rovers, stuff it. Let's gut at Rovers. Yeah, but... What were you expecting? Logic? <laughs> this is Bert Lynch you're talking to. Oh, that goes without saying. Ben! Lovely to see you. Michael, lovely to see you, money. Hi, posterior. Wait, wait, I'll get it. Yes, Mike? Uh, my usual and a gin and tonic, please, love. Large? Of course. You're looking well. Northern I ever suit you. Mm. <laughs> right, girls, sir. So again. Mm. Bet your fella's full of the joys this morning. You've got a nurse on your face in here. Or uh, is he not your fella no more? Oh, no, I forgot. You see, you like them with uh, flashy jobs, fat wallets. Shelley, when you've got a minute, will you serve this lady? What's wrong? My money not good enough for you. You might have lost Joey's job, but you sure as hell not going to lose me mine. I'm going to take my break, Fred, all right? No, all right. Is uh, she still pretending this is a job? We all know it's her own private dating agency. <laughs> what can I get you, Karen? Well, well. I do apologise. Cats will scratch and all that. Did she handle it right, in your professional opinion? Are you asking me as a landlady? Yeah, not bad. Kept her head. I'll just go and see how she is. Asking me as a barmaid? I would have dragged her outside and lamped her. <laughs> After I'd spat in a pint. <laughs> That's my girl. See, if I'd have taken you for tappers, we'd have missed all the excitement. I've got enough excitement in my life to have very much. Not for long. I'm on the side of your solicitor. I think you've got a very strong case. Made even stronger by the fact there's quite a few of you. See, it's not just your word against Phil's. That's what's keeping me going. Mm. Oh, Dev? Yeah. Let me introduce you to an old mate of mine, Bet Lynch. Surely not that old. You beat me to it. Nice to meet you, Dev. You've got half an hour to spare tomorrow. I've got a business proposition I want to talk to you. Well, sounds good. Morning, afternoon. Suit yourself. You know where I'll be. Sure. Oh, 
glad to hear you booted that sidekick of yours into touch. He wasn't good for credibility. Oh, the jungle drums have been beating at us. Still, scored you a few points with the girls, I'd say. Well, you know, some of them. Yeah, well, I always said popularity mm. was overrated. So I'll see you later. Yeah, you will. Glad to meet you, Bet. Hola. Hello, Ben. Come on in, the gang's Ooh. all here. Everybody, this is Maxine and little Josh. Uh, Joshua. <laughs> Joshua. Say hello, Joshua. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, do you mind if I shut this door? It's just that Emma's been on night. She's trying to get some shut eye. Oh, don't. I worked it out the other day. I can't have had more than 12 hours sleep all week. Oh, no. Lily's teething, aren't you, darling? And I think she's having a growth spurt. She's feeding every couple of hours. Nightmare. Well, can't your husband get up and, like, you know, give you a rest? We haven't all got husbands. Me for what? Besides, I'm breastfeeding. Oh, I don't know what's worse. But, I mean, they say you never recover, you know, up top. <laughs> well, you see, when I did it, it just didn't feel right. I mean, these are for Ashley. Cheesy puffs, anyone? <laughs> How smug is that? Ooh. Look at him with his cigars and his doubles. Gina? One for the road? No chance. I'll phone you. Lightweight. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, if it's round two you're after, I'm not playing. No, look, wait, wait, wait. Things got a bit heated last night, right? You got hasty. I should have listened longer. Oh, well, that's bigger you, isn't it? Yeah, look, come on, sit down. I'll buy you a drink. Sit down. That's good. Look. You dropped the ball. Yeah, and I held my hands up to that mic. And you busted a gut trying to put it right. I'm just hearing how much. You shouldn't need to hear that from the machinists. I know I should have more faith, and I will have next time. Let's put all this behind us, eh? Come back. And what about my faith in you, eh? Oh, we'll put that down to teething trouble, shall we? Come on, start again. Clean slate. Well, what do you want, blood? All right. I'll come back on one condition. Oh, now, don't start playing silly beggars over pay. Oh, I'm not talking about money. If I come back, Karen McDonald goes. Down in the jungle where nobody goes. Uh, little old lady. Aha! Aha! A Debbie and a... Excuse me. Oh, that's oh, that's that's Jake. Oh, dear. She's got no control over that child. Yeah, well, I didn't like to say. No, honestly, it, it, it's all right. That, uh, that dish was cracked anyway. We were just saying, same every week. I mean, what kind of a name's Orla? <laughs> it's Irish. It means golden princess. Wait! Who's going to start us on the Dingle Dangle Scarecrow? <laughs> I'm not defending her. She's caused me a few headaches in the past, I don't mind telling you. She's not even my top machinist. So, what's the problem? The problem is grounds. Clash of personalities won't go down at a tribunal. All right, then. Grounds. She's unprofessional, she's undisciplined, regularly late, undermines the morale of the workforce. Well, it's still a bit woolly. What, do you want it in writing? Dates? Times? No, 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 no. Look, what's the alternative? You can leave her where she is. I can start rejecting her work, denying her bonuses, slowly but surely undermining her. Constructive dismissal. <sighs> That's the snide's way out. It's not how I operate, Mike. Now, I want to do things my way, and I want you to back me up. Oh. Hey. Hi, Audrey. Oh. Oh. I'm sorry. Chatty customer, you know what it's like. No. Oh. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Well, uh, I had to, uh, out of curiosity, if nothing else. <laughs> well, I didn't want to say too much on the phone. Walls have ears and all mm. that, but, uh, well, it's about your business proposal. Oh, I... I'd like to take you up on it. You would? Well, that's wonderful news. Hey, call us for a drink. Uh, well, we are in a pub. <laughs> <laughs> Look, can I ask you, uh, what made you change your mind? Well, it was something you said, uh, and something Maxine said in a roundabout kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen here. I've had somewhat of a brainwave. Look out. Oh, yes. They're about as frequent as Ali's Comet, but twice as brilliant. I'm all ears. I'm a landlord of what's looking for a landlady. 
you're a landlady, was looking for a pub. What do you not see? It's fate. Of all the bars in all the world. Well, what do you say, Bet? I mean, will you, will you come back at Runt Rovers for me? <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> You're not kidding. Oh, I never kid. I say I never kid. Not about business. Oh, I'm sorry, cock. Wild horses wouldn't drag me back behind that poky little bar again. No offence. Don't take them. Mm. Now, uh, there is just one thing, and I hope you won't take this the wrong way, but uh, do you mind if we keep this strictly entre nous? Because my clientele... Oh, message received and understood. Oh. See you now. Well, I'll do the week Bye. after, actually. I'll, 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 I'll get your number off, yeah. Curly. Oh, brilliant. Hey, and if you've got any friends who want to come along, the more the merrier. Ah, oh, that's our motto. <laughs> All right, then. See ya. See, See you ya. now. Thanks, Julie. Oh, it's been great. Oh, just one thing, Norman. You know, for future reference, not everyone in the group can run to such a lavish spread. Oh, well, I wasn't trying to be flat. Oh, no, I know. We just need to be careful, you know, about setting a precedent. Right, it won't happen again. All right. I'll see, see you again. Norman. Bye. See you now. Bye-bye. Listen, bye-bye. Oh, hi. What's he doing back here again? Well, he's uh, come through P45. Obviously. Oh, he looks very chummy, though. Eh? Does, doesn't it? Maybe Baldwin's paying him off. Nah, he's not parting with cash. He's smiling. <laughs> well, kind of stretching his face. Yeah, he's parting with the useless manager. When you smile. Well, what's with the box then? Oh, no, clearing his desk. What am I, mind reader? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ladies! <laughs> Ladies, blame me now. Needs to make the happy pills. Ladies, I know we've had a few ups and downs on the way, but I think you can give yourselves all a pat on the back. Uh, I think a big fat bonus would be better. Yeah, well, being the old school boss that I am, I think the compliment is reward enough in itself. But Joe here, he's more modern, he is. In fact, he's a creep. He thinks we should celebrate it with a glass of wine or two. <laughs> So, Hayley, if you'd like to do us the honours. OK, here we go, ladies. <laughs> and one for you, Cheers. love. Right. Everybody got one? Well, you won't show it here. Right, has everyone got a drink? Yeah. To hard labour. Cheers. Oh, hard hard labour. Hard labour. <laughs> So, uh, you are the great Mr. Bond. Yes, our paths crossed, views were exchanged, and a positive attitude was achieved. I'm very good. Good. There really is no need for all this. Oh, what, Karen? Right, you've made your point. We all know his boss. End of story. Not quite, love. I don't like you. You don't like me. So what? We haven't got to work together. Wrong. I wouldn't give you work if you were the last machinist in Manchester. You're vicious, Karen. And you're clever. But you're not clever enough, all right? Now, I've sanctioned your wages for another month, but you're lucky to get that. I get your things and go. You can't just sack me. We can do this privately, or we can have an audience. Job anyway. Hmm. Consider it a favour then, love. You've eaten it. Hey, Kat, that's another five bottles here. Eh? Fill your boots. What's up with her? Are you going to be late for work? <sighs> you have to shout so loud. How much did you have to drink last night? I don't know, too much. Oh, you snoring like a fog on when I got in. I don't snore. <laughs> you do when you've had a skin full. I'll see you later. Steve, hang on a minute. Oh, babe, look, I've got a school to do. No, this won't take a minute. <sighs> what? I, um... Jack me jobbing at the factory. 
You what? Resigned. What the flaming hell have you done that for? Because I had to. You should have seen the way Joe Cart was treating me. She's just a pig. He started picking on me and making fun of me in front of the other girls. Well, then tell Baldwin, get him to sort it. Baldwin doesn't want to know. He's give full control to Joe so that he can spend more time on the flipping golf course. Yeah, but what do you have to go and resign for? Babe, we need the money. And I'll get another job. Well, what's he picking on you for? Look, I don't know. I mean, I know I can be a bit lippy, but I'm good at my job. Well, why don't you tell me? Because I didn't want you to worry. Well, maybe I should go and see him. No, don't do that, look. I'll get another job in no time. It's really not a problem, right? Don't be mad. It's all right, just get yourself to work. All right. Are you going to be all right? Yeah, I've just got a thick head. I'll see you later. What are you doing here? I came to see if you had a good time with your mum. You don't know what it's like for me. No? What's it like, then? I've got to be careful. Do you think I like shopping with my mum? I don't know, maybe you do. Maybe you like being dull and boring. You've got it wrong. Prove it. I don't have to prove anything. Walk off school with me today. Walk up the precinct. No. Why not? Because I told you I've got to be careful. What? I don't ask twice. Hiya. Bye. Hi. You, uh, are you going out of a Chrisley now? We were just talking. Right, yeah, no, I'm sorry. None of my business. No, it's not. Look, I, uh, it'd be nice if we could be mates again. I mean, we're almost neighbours, and then we don't have to scowl at each other every time we meet in the streets, do we? So, what do you think? Yeah, OK. Cool. You okay? Oh, stand it. Oh, well, were we? Yeah, I know. But before you say anything, she didn't give me any choice, all right? What do you mean she didn't give you any choice? Look, mate, she was pulling every trick in the book, all right? Now, I know she's your wife and that, but she was rude. She was lazy, she was late more often than not. She even pulled the dry belt off a machine to try and get the afternoon off. Yeah, but, I mean, look, I'm sorry. I had to sack her, OK? You sacked her? Yeah. She was winding up all the other girls. Now, you run a business. She was asking for it. And if she's honest, she'll tell you. Do you know that Fresh Goes is totally child-friendly? They've got a mother and baby car parking space right outside the shop. And they also have wide checkouts and they have changing facilities. <laughs> Free nappies. I hear you sorted things out with Mike. Wow. News travels fast round here, doesn't it? Yeah, you better believe it. And um, is it right you've sat Karen McDonald? Yeah, it is. <laughs> You're a brave man. Uh, does this contain nuts? If it's in a peach, Yes, I know, but on some labels they say this product may contain nuts. You've got to be careful. What if, if it says it hasn't got any nuts in it, you've got to be careful, but it hasn't got any nuts in it. I'm glad you got me working around here for a bit longer. Give me a chance to see some more of you. Yeah? Yeah. I've been mucked around by men once too often. At least you've not managed to escape my clutches. Uh. I'll see you in the rovers at lunch. No, you've already got me prescription. Yeah, so I can come and pick up a new pair this afternoon. Yeah, that's great. OK, thanks. Bye-bye. How did you manage to smash him? Well, I heard Ben cry, I got out of bed, I knocked him off the table, and then I stood on him. Well, didn't you look? I didn't have my glasses on, did I? I couldn't see. Anyway, Ben's dressed now. I'm going to have to go to bed, Norman. I'm shattered. All right. Well, look, we're going to a uh, playgroup this morning, so I thought maybe I could put Ben down with you and then I could nip out this afternoon and pick up my new glasses. Well, are you sure you want to go out without them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean I'm fine. I mean, the world's a bit... Uh, Impressionistic. But I quite like it, really. It's kind of misty and romantic. Well, why don't you just wear your old glasses? Oh, because I've got the old prescription in. They give me a headache. All right, then. Well, just make sure you don't wake me up when you drop Ben off, yeah? You won't All even right. know he's there. Hey, yeah, see you later. Yeah. It's like a different factory. Everyone's getting on with their work. No one's chatting. I mean, it's great. <laughs> well, like I told you, that Karen was a disruptive influence. And by second, though, you've scared the rest of them and they're wondering which is the next one to get the job. Yeah, well. It won't hurt them to worry for a while, will it? Hurt them? Done the world of good. It's been a long time since I've had a decent day's work out of that lot. There you go. Take a look at that. Ooh, what's that? That is a list of the best machinists in the area. Where'd you get this? Well, I worked with them all before. What, and you kept all the details? Yeah. You never know when you're going to need them. Why, do we need to take someone else on? Oh, well, we've got to replace Karen, haven't we? And I reckon I can persuade most of them to come over if we needed them. 
On a scale of one to ten, right? On a scale of one to ten, what? How much do you fancy him? Well, who says I fancy him at all? Duh. I think we've already established how smitten you are. I just want to know how serious it is. Well, why does it have to be serious? Why can't it just be fun? Oh, all right then. How much fun was he on a scale of one to ten? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> one, right, is mildly amusing, while ten is whipped cream and fresh fruit. <laughs> what about fresh fruit? Um, just leave it, all right. <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, beer orders. Oh, all right. Yeah, um, I rang the brewery ten minutes ago. It's all sorted. Yeah, and pub's ready for opening. Grand. You're good girls. You do a fine job, both of you. Now, you stop there and I'll get biscuits for that tea. Hey! Hey, Lee. What are you ever doing on Sunday? Maxine? What's happened to your glasses? Oh, it's uh, a long story. I uh, I stood on them. I I'm just off to get a new pair now. Oh, right. Uh, well, did you hear me before? Yeah, I'm not deaf. And I don't know what we're doing on Sunday. Why? Oh, great. I just thought, you know, you could come round with Ben and uh, we could have some nibbles and drinks. Oh, yeah, yeah, that would be lovely. Great. <laughs> are you uh, are you going to the soft play session later? Um, I don't know. He's fast asleep. I might pop in later. It's on till four. OK. I might see you later then. Uh, yeah, I think I'll see you later. That's a nice motor, mate. Cheers. You want something? Hey, I'm just being friendly, passing the time of day. Oh, I hope you didn't think I was planning on nicking it. Only I'm strictly white-collar crime, only me. Right, still, didn't stop Mike being stupid enough to give you a second chance, though, eh? Yeah. Mm. Looks like we're going to be seeing a lot more of each other. Can't wait. You know, Jean is a free agent. She can see whoever she wants, and I'm not twisting her arm. Really? Well, remind me, did I say I cared? You didn't have to, mate. You really didn't have to. Why didn't you just tell him you'd been sacked? Because then he'd say it was my fault. But it was your fault. No, I'm gonna minute. Everything was fine before Joe Carter came along. It's not me who's the problem, mate, it's him. Ah. I've been looking for you all morning. I'd have thought you'd have been at the job centre. Yeah, well, I'm still feeling a little bit rough, actually, babe. Oh, babe. Well, listen, I've been thinking. Maybe she just tried talking to Joe Carter. Happen you just got off on the wrong foot. I could go with you if you like. We could go now. No, I couldn't even go there if I wanted to. I mean, you know what he's like. I mean, he's a thug. It's like power's gone to his head, started winding all the girls up. Janice was on the verge of walking out herself. Really? Yeah. Honestly, you know, he's going to run that place into the ground. What, well, Mike knows nothing about this then, does he not? No, I told you, he's not interested. Look, uh, I'll get you a drink. Hi, please, Shelley. Mike! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Am I too early for a meeting? No, of course not. Joe, give us a minute, will you? Uh, check on that Jackson hall to see it's packed properly. Last time it was a right mess. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Run along now. Bye bye. So, Mike, what's this all about? Making money. Interested? <laughs> Keep talking. Well, when I was in Spain, me and a few lads from the golf club looked at this bit of land, right on the coast. Superb beach, half an hour from the airport, an absolutely perfect spot to build some holiday apartments. <laughs> you want me to invest in timeshare villas? No, luxury apartments. But it's early stages yet. I mean, uh, we're just looking around who so might be interested. So uh, go through the bump, look at the pictures and think about it. But I think it could be a fantastic deal. Yeah? You do realise you played right into his hands. <sighs> and how'd you figure that out? Well, if you really did have it in fear, then presumably he was going to give you the sack anyway. Well, you resigned. You did it for him. Steve, the guy's a bully. I mean, you don't just stand there, do you, mate, for bullies to it, yeah? And you stand up to him. I mean, I had to stand up to him. I'm going to have a word with Baldwin when he comes in. I told you he's not interested. Well, you said he was going to run his company into the ground. <sighs> Surely Mike's got a right to know what's happening. Can we please talk about something else? Because this is really starting to do my head in now. See? I ain't seen you like this. Like what? Beaten. Beaten? I'm not beaten. Well, look at what he's reduced you to. You don't even want to talk about it. You used to be a fighter. I resigned, didn't I? I'm going to have a word with him. Look, I told him where to get off, so you don't need to worry. He was picking on you. Yes, he was. Well, I'm not going to stand for that. You're my wife. If someone in here was picking on you, I'd do something about it, wouldn't I? Well, this is no different. 
You know, I've got half a mind to go over there and punch his lights out. Steve, it really isn't worth it. Yeah, well, you are worth it. I'm not letting him get away with this. He disrespects my wife. He disrespects me. Steve. No, you stay here. I'm going to go over there and give Joe Carter a damn good thrashing. <laughs> You or Steve's going to go over there and give Joe Carter a thumb. Yeah, well, maybe he deserves it, John. <sighs> yep. Always up to me to sort everything out. Off, Kev. Joe's still inside. Steve! Yeah, in a minute. No, don't try and stop me. He's got this coming to him. The way he's treated you. Hi, Steve. Lovely. Steve, let's just go back in the pub because I really don't think no, you need no, to do No, no, no. I'm sick of people picking on you. Calling your names behind your back. The way they treat you round here, it's not on. You're my wife. It's about time I showed them. They mess with my wife and they mess with me. I'm doing this for you, babe. I know, babe, but it's not all Joe's fault. What? Well, I didn't resign exactly. What do you mean he didn't resign exactly? Well, he sacked me. He sacked you? Yes. Well, that's even worse. I'm going. Steve, look, it might have been a bit my fault. What? Well, I was just winding him up, you know, just giving him an hard time like you do. Well, it took you long enough. What? Tell the truth. I mean, I nearly knocked the guy's block off. What are you talking about? I already knew he sacked you. Hmm. Yeah, he told me this morning. Felt like a right fool, not knowing what my own wife was on. You already knew! Yeah. I mean, what is it with you? I mean, are you incapable of telling the truth? Is there some kind of disease? And is this some kind of sick game? Yes. I wanted to see how long you keep lying for. I reckon another two minutes and the guy will be flying on the deck. Is there a problem? No, uh, everything's fine. Right. Would you want something? No. No, you carry on. I can't believe you've been playing games with me! Me playing games? Let's not forget who started this! I was trying to be sensitive because I didn't want you worrying! You were lying through your teeth! I mean, what's wrong with you? You tell me the lies that often, I may as well believe the opposite of everything you say. It'd be more reliable. Where are you going? I'm gonna go and give Kevin his spanner back. And you're going to be a good boy, aren't you? Yes, you are. Cos Mummy's been up all night, she's very tired. She's been chasing robbers. And you're very tired too. So now we're going to tiptoe upstairs and you have a long sleep with Mummy while Daddy goes and gets his new glasses. Yes, he is. There you go, love. Tell us, What's up? Nothing. Why should anything be up? Oh, no, no reason. Uh, now things between you and Gina. Yeah, things are all right. Hey, look, I'm sorry for being interested, but, you know, I feel partly responsible for you two getting together, Joe, you know. Yeah, look, I'm sorry. My head's still in work. According to Shelley, Gina's dead chuffed that you're staying around here, mate. Right. Yeah. You'll end up fighting off with a stick, believe me. What are you doing here? Thought I'd come and rub your nose, innit? I thought you'd want to know what an ace day I've had while you've been stuck in school. Oh, yes. What have you been up to, then? Been up the precinct, the red wreck, had a game of footy, did some sunbathing, had some chips and been down the shops. Oh, I'm so jealous. Where's the kid? Mum's picking her up from the crash. Right. So, she's going to be out for a bit if you fancy coming round. Yeah, go on, twist me out. Hello, Sarah Platt. Hiya. What a lovely, clear, bright day. Yeah. And where's our baby? That's not Ben. No, I know that, Norman. What have you done with him? I've left him at soft play. You've left him at soft play? I 
picked up the wrong baby. How could you do that? Well, I didn't have my glasses, did it? And there's all these multicoloured balls and that. It's, it's very confusing. And they all look alike, don't they? When the, when the world's all misty. Shall we ring the police? Norman, I am the police. I better ring the soft play thing. Shh. Obviously, someone's lost their baby and gained ours. All right, I'll, I'll just try and find the number. What are you doing? Just looking. What's this? My maths book. How come it's got a picture of Robbie Williams on the front? Because I like Robbie Williams. Do you get maths homework today? Yeah. Told you you should have come with me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on, then. Go on what? Do your homework. I'll do it later. Why not do it now? Because I don't want to do it now. Go on. Open your book. <sighs> me. So keen, you can do it. Ah, no. That'd be cheating. And I'm trying to be a good influence on you. Maybe I don't need a good influence. Oh, really? Teenage schoolgirl, single mother? Is that right? Yeah, it is. In that case, maybe you need a bad influence. Maybe I don't need any influence. That was nice. Yeah, it was. Question is, should we do it again or should I go on for my tea? I don't know, maybe we should do... I think it's tea time. Cade, what are you doing? I'm going home. What, what was all that about? Oh, hello. Ah, oh, Mrs Platt, thank goodness. You got here just in time. Really? Yeah, I was just helping Sarah with her homework, but I've got to go on for my tea now, so you can take over now. It must be so difficult these days keeping these young girls on the straight and narrow. <laughs> See ya. Look, Norman, why don't you try direct inquiries? It's run by one of the women from the mother and toddler group. Yeah, and her name is? Uh, uh, Rachel. Rachel what? I don't know. It's not nothing official. It's just a group of people getting together and, and doing something for the kids. Yeah, a group of people getting together and swapping their kids. I think I should go back down there. I thought you said it finished at four. Yeah, but someone might be still there. Oh, yeah, hopefully with our son. Oh, I'll get that. Anyone lost a baby? Oh, thank <laughs> God he's all right. He is all right, isn't he? He's fine. I take it you've got Lily. Uh, yeah, yeah, she's here. Look, come in. I'm so sorry. I just oh. I just don't know how this could have happened. I do. Oh. His bind is about without your specs. Anyway, no harm done, eh? No what? stop panicking. Oh, yeah, no thanks to Mr Magoo. I'm sorry about my husband. He's dim of sight and he's a bit dim all round. You must have been worried sick. Yeah. I mean, it didn't take me long to work out what had happened, but you always think the worst, don't you? Yeah. When I woke up with a strange baby in my bed, my first thought was that the aliens had landed and performed a sex change on my son. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm truly sorry. I can't tell you how stupid I feel. Oh, it's all right. No real harm done. Although I reckon I might have aged a few years. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not letting you out the house again. First thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to ring with the optician and I'm going to order three, no, four pairs of spare glasses. Yeah, so you should. I think you should ask him to bolt them to your head and all. <laughs> Why are you sulking? Who's sulking? I'm not sulking. Yes, you are. You haven't said a word all afternoon. So? This got something to do with Dev. Dev who? You're miffed because I sent you out of the office to talk about business, aren't you? Do you want to know what we were talking about? None of my business. Right. You're still miffed, though, aren't you? Look, I like to know where I stand, that's all, Mike. Well, I thought we sorted all that out with that business over Karen. Watch these lips. I do trust you. And what I was talking to Dev about had nothing to do with Underworld. Mm. Listen, the only reason I wanted to talk to Dev was to set out a new project, right? And the only reason I could do that was because I had someone I could trust running my business. Now, if you've got 50 grand hidden away that you want to invest, we could be having a completely different conversation. No, I haven't. Look, it's, it's fine. Right, come on in. Finish that, I'll buy you a pint. No. Uh, Go on, then. Oh, by the way, how are you getting on with that Gina? Yeah, it's all right. Well, I'd be careful of her if I was you. She'll have a ring on your finger as soon as look at you. You what? <laughs> she had Dev book at that church before he could catch his breath. Look, can we talk about something else? Well, that's what I always talk about, work and women. All right, let's talk about work, shall we? So what was all that about? Nothing. Don't tell me there's something going on between you and Aid. Why don't you like him? Well, I don't know why you fell out with Todd. He seemed like a nice lad. Mum, I'm not discussing my boyfriends with you. Oh, so age your new boyfriend. Did I say that? No. You just jumped 
to conclusions. I can't talk to you about it. It's against nature. You don't have to talk about it. Just tell me whether he's your new boyfriend or not. No, he's not, OK? OK. What's this? Well, what does it look like? I made us some tea. What for? Well, we needed something to eat, so I made us something to eat. We never make tea. I make tea as often as you make tea. Yeah, which is never. We usually make our own or we go and get some chips. What is your problem? I've made us something to eat. Is this supposed to be an apology? What? Is this your way of saying sorry? Sorry for what? You know what? I have got nothing to say sorry for. In fact, if any one of us should be saying sorry, then it's you. I know how'd you work that out? Look, I didn't tell you the truth because I didn't want to get you upset. I didn't want us to have a big row, but you! You have to start playing games with me and trying to humiliate me. You know what's something that I wanted to keep a lid on? You had to make into a big flaming row. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise that all this was my fault. Well, why don't you try and be a little bit more understanding? Oh, why don't you try and take the blame for once in your life? The blame for what? For this! You didn't have to lie to me. You could have told me the truth. I pushed my luck. I lost my job. I'm sorry. See, it's not that difficult, is it? Steve, remind me exactly whose side you are on. You know what? If you were working for me and done half the things that Joe said you'd done, I'd have sacked you in all! Ah. That could have hit me! You know what? It was meant to! Well, it's a good job you're as good a throw as you are a cock! And I'm not cleaning it up! What even am I? Well, fine! Fine! You were star for all I care! <sighs> I think it's about time you clean that mess up. Why should I? It's your tea. You threw it. You made me. Look, why don't you just go and have a word with Joe? You might have had time... Love that, wouldn't you, eh? Watching me grovel. Well, I would if it meant you got your job back. No, Steve, no way. I mean, that is just what he's waiting for. All right, fine. Just as long as you realise it's going to be very difficult to get another job if you haven't got a reference. Really? There's no rush there, is there? In fact, I might like being a kept woman for a change. <sighs> Morning. I've done us some toast. It's on table, love. Uh, yes, I thought I heard scraping. And the tea's freshly brewed, if you want some. What are you up to today, then, love? Oh, nothing much. But I said I, I might meet Gail in the Rovers for lunch, but, you know, I don't think I'd be bothered. I think I'll stop home and read the papers. Oh, no, you don't want to go letting her down. No, it's nothing definite. Well, all the same, if you've got family... Make the most of them, that's what I always say. Cos you never know how long you've got, do you? And Sunday's a... a family sort of day, isn't it? No, I reckon you should go. Do you know anybody think you're trying to get me out of the house? <laughs> Why ever should I want to do that, eh? Come on, no, if you fancy keeping me company, that's fine by me. I'll tell you what, I'll have the glosses, you can have the heavy stuff. Perhaps you're right, yes. Maybe I should make the effort to go and see you. Whatever. Have you got any plans of your own, then? Mm. Chance would be a fine thing. No, I'm just going to flop about on couch, watch a bit of telly, you know. I think I might go and have my bath before breakfast. Yeah, you do that, Petal. If you can't treat yourself on a Sunday, when can you? Mm. Right. Eddie, love, it's me. Listen, how do you fancy popping round about one o'clock? Only we'll have the place to ourselves then. I thought we could make the most of it. <laughs> you cheeky monkey. Right, I'll see you then. Look forward to it. Should have cleared all this out on bonfire night. Oh, no, when are we ever going to use this again? <laughs> well, thanks for helping me. I got it done in half the time. That's all right. Oh, look. Do you remember? It used to be Beth's favourite. Well, it's a good job she's at Martin's. We'd never get it back off her. Oh. You know, I think I'm going to clean some of these up and give them to Maxine. Seems a shame to throw them all out. I'll do it if you like. I'll put the kettle on while I'm at it. Hiya. I'm not really working today, has it? Hey, I have got a mountain of paperwork to do. Mm, what, while Baldwin's off playing golf? Yeah, well, that's the perks of being a gaffer, isn't it? Oh, never mind. Your turn will come. Do you reckon? Oh, why? Well, an old bloke with prospects when I see one. Any road, play your cards, right? You might get a few perks of your own tonight. I'm not working, so if you fancy meeting up. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Great. 
fancy letter. Is Audrey in? She's upstairs. Hey, and I thought you'd come to see me. I did. I just wondered if we could talk in peace. Mm. Come now. What's this I hear about Frid offering you a job? Do you know, you've just reminded me of one of the reasons I left. You've as much chance of keeping a secret round here as you have of keeping a tan. <laughs> Aye, he did. I suppose you heard I turned him down. Yeah, he was very disappointed. You'd have been a godsend. Well, God can send him another mug. I've done my pen and star very much. <laughs> I've got the car outside. I wondered if you fancy coming for that meal I promised you. Well, I would, only I've got what you might call a prior engagement. Oh, yeah. He was a lucky fella. Hiya, um, we brought some of Beth's old toys around. Thought you might be able to use them. All right, go through. Oh, uh, Curly and Emma are coming around for some drinks later. Thought to do something a bit different. Oh, what is it? Well, that one's supposed to be a Caribbean martini, but I don't think it's worked out. I'll try it if you like. Uh, thanks for the offer, and I think that's more than my life's worth if your mum found out. Yeah, it probably would be. She went mad the other week when she found out I'd been drinking. It wasn't much. Oh, well, I got drunk once when I was your age. Snuck out when my mum and dad were asleep. I was sick as a dog. My mum still hasn't found out. Hey, don't tell Gail either. I bet you've had loads of boyfriends, haven't you? I don't know how to take that. No, well, I mean, you're dead attractive, aren't you? You must have. Well, yes. I've had a few admirers, yeah. How do you tell if a lad really fancies you or he's just having you on? How do you mean? Well, there's this lad I know, and he tried to kiss me the other day, but, well, he's always just having a joke, you know, and Candice reckons he's just winding me up. <laughs> Candice is jealous. Do you reckon? No boy kisses a girl unless he fancies her. Is he good looking? Yeah, and he's different from the other lads, and he's clever, and he makes me laugh, and I don't know, he's he's exciting. Mmm, sounds like you're smitten. Yeah, but up till now we've just been mates. Well, he made the first move. You go for it. There you go, love. Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh pint of bitter and ham sandwich, please, Gina, love. All right, darling. So? You two are still seeing each other, then? What's it to you? Nothing, nothing. I wish you both the best of luck. You're gonna need it. Meaning? Well, I take it you haven't met the mother yet. Hmm? Well, don't worry, you soon will. As soon as she hears that her precious daughter's uh, seeing somebody, she'll be around like a shot, sussing you out. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, very fussy about who Gina sees is our Mrs Gregory. Bit of a control freak. You know what they say? If you want to get to know the daughter, just take a good look at the mother. Cheers. It won't be long now, love. Right, uh, there you go, then. Oh, tough. Right. Right, please, Jean. Right, love. <sighs> well, it looks like I'm on my own today, then. <laughs> Try to drag the wife out, but she's not feeling up to it. Oh. No, she's not getting a lot of sleep, you know, worried about money and that. And also, uh, she feels awful about the way she acted. What, bolshy and ill manager, you mean? Um, yeah. Not to mention stirring it with the others. Yeah, yeah, that was right. Anyway, listen, uh, I was wondering whether any possibility she could get her own. Well, put it this way. Would you employ her? I did employ her once, actually. To my cost. Yeah, well, there you go, then. Right, fair enough. I just thought I'd give it a whirl. So when are you in court? Wednesday. Nervous? <sighs> Tell you the truth, I'll be glad when it's done and dusted so I can oh, get on with... Right, no. Oh, sorry, I didn't know you were here, Mike. Matter of fact, I was just going. Well, I... Hope not on my account. No, no, not at all. I was going to grab something to eat, the Rovers. Oh. Audrey's going to the Rovers to meet Gail. Maybe Mike can give you a lift. Yeah, I'll be happy to. Oh, well, actually, I don't think I'm quite ready to be... But you to... changed, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. Well, there you go, then. It'll save you calling a cab. Here's your bag. Right. Off you go. Have a good time. You have a good time yourself. To yes. I will. I thought you said you weren't doing anything. I'm not. That's the point. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Audrey. <laughs> Oh, hi. No sprog. No. Her name's Bethany. Mine's looking after her today. And your mum actually let you out of the house? Well, I helped her clean out the loft this morning, so she thinks I'm a reformed character. It's a pity you couldn't stay long the other day. Why, well, are you enjoying yourself? I might have been. Why were you? 
all kidding. Yeah, that's the trouble with you. You never know if you're joking or not. So, did you then? Enjoy yourself. What do you think? Well, I don't know. You left so quickly, anyone would have thought I'd been eating garlic. I quite like garlic. Are you ever going to give me a straight answer? Probably not. I don't know why I bother with you sometimes. It's because you fancy me. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you can't deny it. Does this mean we're going out together, then? Well, we're out when we're together, so it must do, eh? Telling me about this club owner that she's been having meetings with. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe she's seen him this afternoon, eh? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't know. Ma'am, you're just in time. Fancy a drink? Oh, G and T, love, please. I'll leave you to it then. Oh, right, I'll. Oh, Talk to you more about that Spanish deal? Yeah, I have, yeah. And? I'm going to have to turn you down. What, cash flow problem? Me? <laughs> no, no, no. I just don't want to go out on a limb for a bunch of people I don't even know. I'll take you down the golf club and introduce you to the other investors. Nice bunch of fellas. Yeah, are they? You're saying you don't trust me? I trust you. I'm just not sure I trust your judgment, not when it comes to people anyway. I mean, anyone who leaves their business in the hands of an ex con Come on. Ah, so that's what it's all about, is it? Well, here's my judgment of you for what it's worth. Seems to me you're letting a bit of jealousy get in the way of a good business deal. Well, let's just uh, agree to differ, then. No hard feelings, I hope. Ah, none at all. Okay. It's your loss. Eddie Love. <laughs> ah. You're looking as gorgeous as ever. Oh, you're not looking so bad yourself. Whiskey? Yeah, please. And then we'll get straight down to it, eh? Bye, Eck. You don't waste much time, do you? <laughs> All oh, right. So you just mates, are you? What's it got to do with you? I just want to know why you lied to me. I didn't. Yeah, right. Anyway, I can see who I like. I thought it'd have better taste than that, though. Come on. She has. That's why she's going out with me and not you. You know what? Next time I go out some of my own age, not a stupid little kid like you. You're the kid sulking over what you can't have. You all right, kid? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. And it's Mr Barlow, if you don't mind. Sorry, Ken, I keep forgetting. Come on, you. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to take the books into the account in the morning, so do you fancy coming over tonight and going through? Wait, well, you haven't got anything else on, have you? No. Nah. No, that's fine. Oh, good. Yeah, I'd want another drink. Mm -hmm. I'm fine, thanks. Audrey, do you want a top one? Uh, no, I'm all right, look, thanks. No, no. What's the matter with you today, ma'am? You've hardly listened to a word I've said. Ah, I'm sorry, love. It's Bet. I'm sure she's up to summit. How do you mean? Well, the more I think about it, the more I feel she was trying to get the house to herself today. And then Mike said, have a nice afternoon. That sounds innocent enough to me. Yeah, well, it wasn't the way Mike said it. And then, whatever they were talking about, they just clammed up the minute I came into the room. I mean, come on, it's a bit much, isn't it, if she's starting hiding things from me? I mean, I am putting her up after all. Don't you think you're getting things a bit out of proportion? No, I don't. Where are you going? Home. Come on, it is my home. After all, I think I've a right to know what's going on in it. I'll see you later. Aye, aye, right, here we go. You know, if you wanted your job back, you should have just told me yourself and not sent your husband to do it for you. Sorry? Oh, don't come, the innocent. He was in earlier asking Joe to give you your job back. Yeah, well, I never sent him. <laughs> yeah, right. She was getting Stevie to clean up after her. Oi. Right, you butt out. Look, I'm telling you, I know nothing about this. That's so what you say to him anyway. I'd rather do the job myself, for free. <laughs> really? Well, I'd sooner live in the gutter than work for you again. It's where she belongs, anywhere. You're right, Tom. 
Yeah. I suppose you heard all that before, did you? Yes, I did. Yes, I'm sorry. If there's any consolation, I agree with you. I thought Sarah would have had better taste, too. Yeah, well, obviously I'm not exciting enough for her. Maybe I should start bunking off, eh? No, oh, I hope not. Don't worry. I'm not about to chuck my future away. Even if she is. Okay. What? Trying to embarrass me. Make me look desperate. Would you mind telling me what the hell you're talking about? Yeah, all right. I've just been down the pub to be told by Joe Carter that you've been in there asking for my job back. And they reckon that I sent you. I never said that. No, but you asked for my flipping job back, though, didn't you? Well, I might have mentioned something, yeah. Well, great, Steve. I mean, thanks a bunch. All right, how does that make me look? Well, I wasn't trying to show you up. I was trying to sort things out, considering you can't be bothered. I have told you that I don't want to work there anymore. Fair enough. It's your decision. Well, yeah, actually, it is. It's a shame, though, isn't it? What? Well, we're not going to be able to afford one of those flats from Richard now. I know you're really looking forward to that as well. Still, we'll uh, manage. Posh flat's not everything, is it? Hang on a minute. I'm not losing that flat for anything. So, if this is your way of looking for an excuse to back out, then forget it. I'll get myself another job. Even if it means cleaning the fucking streets. Oh, these are great, Maxine. Are you sure you don't want them? Yeah, I don't like it, Joshua, having second hands. Cocktails, anyone? Oh, no, thanks. I'm all right with my beer. Yeah, me and all thanks. <laughs> well, Max has made a special thought of making a nice change. Oh, go on, then. You've twisted me arm. <laughs> They're uh, orange margaritas. <clears throat> Dripping heck. There's not much orange in that. Well, it's in all the right proportions. More or less. I mean, it's not an exact science, is it? Good job I'm not driving. Good job I'm not breastfeeding. He'd be sozzled. <coughs> I thought we'd sit out in the garden. You know, it would have been nice for Ben, seeing you've only got a yard. <coughs> oh! Well, don't mind me. Audrey, this is Edward, a mate of mine. Edward Audrey. Well, I'd better be getting off. I'll see you... Uh... Oh, yes. Yes. You're back early. Yes, it seems. Sorry to interrupt your little sweary. You are. Oh, it didn't take you long to get over wonderful Bruce, did it? Do you know, if I'd known you were going to take advantage of my hospitality, I would have never invited you to stop here. I beg your pardon? Getting up to all sorts, using my house to entertain your rich boyfriends. You'll take that back. Why should I? Because he's not my boyfriend, you daft bat. He's my solicitor. And you may as well know the rest of it while we're at it. Um, I'm sorry to bother you. My name's Sally Webster. It's just... I couldn't help overhearing what you were talking about before, about Karen, and... Well, I just wondered if you were looking for a new machinist. You're quick off the mark, aren't you? Oh, you have to be these days, don't you, when there's ten people all after the same job? Yeah, that's true. Well, uh, I am, as it happens. Have you got any experience? Well, I have, yeah. I used to work at the factory. Really? So, uh, why'd you leave, then? Well, I decided to start a business on my own. Didn't work out, then? No, it didn't. Well, at least you tried. That takes guts. I'll tell you what. Why don't you come across to the factory tomorrow, say, about two? We'll make the chat a bit more formal, shall we? See how things go, eh? Yeah, great. All right. Thanks. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, listen. I'm thinking, instead of going out tonight, why don't you come round to mine and I'll cook us a meal? Uh, we're going to have to put it on hold, I'm afraid. Oh, well, you said this morning, Yeah, but... I know, but, uh, well, summer's come up since then. Sorry. Like what? <laughs> Got a better offer? <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's work, actually. We'll fix another time, eh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, OK. Um, my next night off's Tuesday. It's great. That's, great. That's something gosh. Oh, oh, I do hope so, yeah. I think I'm going to nip back and tell Kevin and the girls. A bit of good news for a change. <laughs> See, See you yeah. later. See you later. Mind if I join you? Oh, I'd be pleased to have the company. Well, you might not be, actually. The thing is, I wanted to have a word with you about Sarah. She's not been missing your lessons again. No, 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 no. No, it told me to mind my own business, but I was just wondering how well you knew Sarah's boyfriend. Oh, she hasn't got a boyfriend at the moment. Ah. Has she? Well, I couldn't help overhearing her and Aidan talking to Todd a bit earlier. They made it pretty clear they were going out together. Aidan Critchley. Yeah. She told me they were just friends. Well, no wonder she was keeping that quiet. She knows I didn't take to the lad. 
In fact, it's since he started turning up that she started missing school. Caught them drinking the other week. And he's a cheeky young lad. He has an answer to everything. Well, I've been on the receiving end of that as well, but I think you're right to be worried. He can be a very disruptive influence. I've had a couple of run-ins with him, one of about my car, which was vandalised. Well, thank you for telling me. And don't worry. When I've got through with her, she'll not be seeing him for much longer. So he's not your dad, then? No, he's my mum's boyfriend. My real dad died when I was about two. How? Took on some blokes outside a club and got stabbed. Cool. No, it's not. No, I just meant, well, that's the way it go out, isn't it? Out with a bang, doing something exciting. I'd rather die young like that than uh, grow old and boring like my old fella. You're weird, do you know that? Yeah. do you think you're doing? So you see, there is no club. In fact, I've not even got a penny to my name. At least, not till the court case is over. And even that's going begging. So when is the court case? Starts Wednesday. And if I hadn't come back just then, I'd still be in the dark, eh? I didn't want to worry you, that's all. I wanted to come clean. But the longer I left it, the harder it got. It's not easy having to admit to folk that you've not learned out in seven years. That you're still like some stupid, dizzy teenager who gets duped by every fella she meets. But you're right. I should have been honest with you. And I know I've outstayed me welcome. I'll get me bags packed and I'll be out of here quicker than you can do that crossword. Don't be daft. It's silly you're going now, it's all out in the open. Sure, Audrey. I wouldn't blame you. Bet I wouldn't say it otherwise. You're a pal, Audrey. Do you know that? Come on. Don't worry. Listen, a few weeks' time, you'll have all your money back. And that Phil of Gary's come up once. Hmm? Hi, Phil. You're probably right. You're nothing but an insolent young layabout whose idea of fun is to bunk off school and get drunk. Well, you can ruin your own life, that's up to you. But you're not ruining hers. Now go on, get out and don't bother coming back. Mum! Go on, you've not to see her again. It's a bit difficult when we go to the same school, isn't it? Don't you try and get smart with me. Get out! See you tomorrow, Sarah. How could you embarrass me like that? We weren't even doing no, anything. No, but you would have been by the looks of things. Oh, so you're saying you don't trust me? No, Sarah, I don't trust you. You've already made one mistake and now you're heading towards another. Well, I won't have it. Maybe I've been too trusting with you. Maybe that's the problem, but there's an end to it now, OK? You have not to see him again. Oh, so what are you going to do? Are you going to lock me in my bedroom? Stop me going to school? You might as well face it, Mum. Me and Aidan are going out together and there's nothing you can do about it. And I hate you for what you just did! It's going to go all around school. I'm in mental. Mum went off on one. Do you expect me to stand there and do nothing where you two were carrying on? Uh, you're all right. Have you had your breakfast? Yeah. Sarah, Hayley's coming to fit you for your dress today. Oh, hang on. What's all this rowing about? Uh, where do I start? Oh, I'm sick of this. Yeah, me and all. Are you playing up again? Just what is it that's not getting through this time? Mm, you've been seeing that aid. Oh, shut up. Uh, who's aid? He's a troublemaker from school. Sarah brought back to the house. Mm, that they were snogging. Shut up! Told you. Just go and get ready. Oh, so it's this lad we've got to thank, is it? He's the one that's been making your mum's life a misery. Oh, well. You just leave it. He'll dump her anyway. It's basic, is it? Go! That? You can't tell me who I can and can't go out with, and neither can she. Uh, listen to she, you. Look, this is your mum's yeah. house, and your mum decides who Stop. comes and goes. Yeah, all, all right, right, Martin. I don't want you seeing him, whether it's here, school, or anywhere else. Oh, okay. what are you going to do? Are you going to go around school asking the head teacher to sleep yeah. on me? If I thought you'd have stopped you seeing him, I would. Mum, you're going on like he's some kind of monster and he protect him from. Well, your mum's got a point, judging by your behaviour. Oh, well, you would say that. You're just as p 
he get it as she? Uh, Sarah, go on, down these stairs now. Sarah! Quite a welcoming party. Hi. Right. Well, I'll leave you to have some quiet time. Oh, I missed you. Me too. Oh. <laughs> Did you have a good trip? Good, yeah, yeah. How's things? Mm. They're OK. Nice try, Cale. They are, love. Cheers, Vera. So you're going to go and look for some work, then? Yeah. I'll see what's out there, but you don't just click your heels and land yourself a job, you know. I didn't say you do. <sighs> what are you saying, Steve? It's just no excuse to be an idle mare. That's all. <sighs> right, so now I'm an idle mare. Just because Joe Carter took a dislike to me. Hey, I'm sorry to put in. Oh, you're fine, love. This is a bit awkward, but I just don't want you finding out from somebody else. And not what? Well, they want someone for your job at Underworld. And I really need the work. Be ideal for me, because it has to be local to fit in with girls. You're going to go for it, eh? Yeah, I've got an interview today. I just didn't want to go behind your back. No, you're all right. Look, uh, place is not to do with me. Wouldn't even if you paid me. Well, I just wanted to tell you. Yeah, cheers. Um, I'd uh, watch out for Joe Carter, though, seriously. That's all right. I'll work for some augers in my time. Oof, nah, not like him you haven't loved. What? Ah. You like the sound of doors slamming shut, do you? Look, she can have the place with ribbons on. I've told you I can do better. That's the spirit. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Uh, why didn't you try telling that to me, husband? Well, now the roof caved in, I think. You know, I'd much rather be sat with my wife to be. As far as me and those flats are concerned, the fat lady's sung. I've done my job, I'm finished. And what's this? Your gaffer's fee, as promised. My ten grand. I thought you had to sell first. One of my home reversion plans paid out. Not before time. Are you telling me the only reason you've got this is because somebody snuffed it? Well, that's nice. Don't let that take the sparkle off. No. Cheers, mate. You're a gent. They say what goes around comes around. Just make sure it comes around sooner, not later, eh? Hey. Eh? There's the deposit for your flat. Take my advice. Use it before you get used to having it. Or before Karen does. Would you like something while you're waiting? Tea, coffee? No, I'm fine, thank you. Oh, let's sit down. Mm. Shall be a moment? It's hit her rather hard, actually. Tough time for everybody. Mm. But, I mean, it's a good chance of her getting all the money back, isn't there? Well, that's what she's paying us for. Ultimately, it's down to the judge. Oh. It just seems so awful for her, with it being someone so close, someone she trusted. I mean, well, they were husband and wife in all but name, were they? Cases like this, generally they are. Oh, obviously. I mean, have you any idea how long he'd been dipping into her money behind her back, eh? I have an idea, certainly. Like all the other investors who lost money. I take it you're a friend. Oh, go back donkey's ears, better than that. Then I think you'd be better off hearing it from Miss Lynch herself. There we go. There Where's David? Your mum told me about this aid business. Oh, did she? Thing is, I want us all to enjoy the run-up to the wedding, especially your mum. I don't want her looking at the photos, only to remember the stress she went through to get there. Nor do I. So it'd be a shame if this lad spoiled it all. You haven't even met him? So you won't take it the wrong way when I tell you that your mum's got pretty sharp instincts when it comes to people. Yeah, well, she's got it wrong this time. Sad truth is, Sarah, there's a lot of lads out there that are not worthy of your trust. Where do you think Bethany came from? Aid isn't like that. Not mind me. Are you ready? Sorry, uh, I'm doing the food shopping after work, so either warm something up or wait till I get back, okay? Well, I'll be at Simon's. Okay. Can we go? See you at dinner time, Ross. See ya. See ya. So, how do you leave with Joe then? He said we'd fix something. There you go. You're not working later. Why don't you see what he's doing tonight? Yeah, but that'll be twice in a row. So, morning, Fred. Aye, and a busy one at that. Well, I just think it's his turn. Yeah, I'll get you a cup, love. No, Tart. 
Listen, he knows you're thinking that, doesn't he? So if you make the first move, then it shows you've got something about you. You reckon? Yeah. Morning. Looks like we're going to be flat out for the next few weeks. Yep, could be worse. Yeah? And it has been judged by these books. You were uh, struggling a few months back, weren't you? And what do you want? A pat on the back? Actually, I was hoping for something a bit more useful. I seem to remember we said we'd talk about my salary once you'd see what I could do for you. And after a decent length of service, I will. So basically, you're saying I should be grateful and shut it, yeah? Uh, basically, yeah. I mean, you started off all right, I'll uh, not deny that. And you carry on as you are, and you will get your just rewards. Thanks. Did your girlfriend put you up to this, has she? You what? Oh, it's just a hunch. When someone tries to screw me for some money, there's normally a woman behind it somewhere. I am asking you to pay me what I am worth, Mike. It's got nothing to do with Gina. All right, calm down, calm down. It's a nerve, did I? Tell you what, we won't look so clever unless we get some new hands on deck and pretty soon. Yeah, well, don't worry about it. It's sorted. Oh, you found someone, have you? Yeah, and she's good. She's got the right attitude, and she's got kids to feed, so it should stay that way. Oh. Where's she from? She's worked here before. I'm seeing her this afternoon. Worked here before? What's her name? Sally Webster. Oh. And what did she tell you? Well, what's to tell? I thought you said you weren't going to worry yourself with the hiring and firing, Mike. So there was no mention of how she tried to make off with our database of clients, then? You are. When was this? Does it matter when? Now, you wouldn't be trying to remind me who's boss around here, would you? <laughs> would I be so petty? <laughs> no. I just think you should let me make the decisions you're paying me to make. I am. And I'm trusting you to make the right one. They're all nice, aren't they? Yeah, it's just a bit nerve-wracking, though. I mean, girls Sarah's age, they tend to know what they like, don't they? Oh, I know. When I was that age, our Jack said I would spit a Jane Mansfield. Oh. Copied all her frocks, you know, at picture post. Mind you, needed a bit of padding. <laughs> <laughs> I took up smoking so I could stub out my cigarette like Olivia Newton-John. Oh, yeah. <laughs> With John Travolta. Yeah. Would that be for uh, Yeah, long before, but I had my dreams, didn't I? Yeah. See you later. See you, love. Hey. Hey. Hi, Vera. Uh, a cheese balm, please, to take to little Maria. Right, love. Oh, dear. Hi. Hello, look. Oh, Archie, uh, hello. Yeah. Um, how's work? Oh, well, I've got two under the dryer as we speak, but it's OK, cos little Maria's man in the controls. Oh, right. The uh, reason I ask, uh, you recall that favour I asked of you? Yeah. I need your services today, if, if at all possible. Today. Is that all right? Well, it's just a bit sudden. <laughs> Nature of the beast, I'm afraid. You you did say you'd be willing. I know, I know. It's just that, well, now it's come to the cruncher. Oh, gee, you, I'm the last person that's going to be of use to you. Well, just come along, and if you can't manage it, well, there's no harm done, eh? Yeah, OK. Look, I've just got to go and find Mike, but, um... Now, you sworn you haven't told anybody, especially not Blanche. Not a murmur. OK. Well, you'd best pick me up outside the salon. Oh, right. Hey, don't go tooting your own. I can't even believe I stayed sweating in that dump for this long. I mean, I'm worth more than that. Mm. <laughs> Fine, next hand's on you, then. You got any idea what it's like ringing round asking for work? Yes. What well, shall I tell you? Cos it's humiliating. <laughs> well, that's the way the world works, my sensitive flower. I don't let that get in the way of the task in hand. Oh, you'd have me drawing on flags for pennies, you. No, well, Ken will have some chalk if you ask him nicely. So, any more thoughts on the flat? Uh, thoughts, yeah, but that's about it. The discount still stands. You do still want it? Well, uh, not really a case of wanting, really, Richard. It's about having. And we haven't, so... Uh... Steve not told you about his gaffer fit? Uh, listen, I've got to go airport run. It's slipped my mind. Steve! Uh, later, babe. 
So, uh, how, how much is this fee? Well, you are his wife, so... Yeah, just tell me. Ten grand. Oh, I'll give him a proper run. Hey, Audrey, Jean T. Yes, well, please, and uh, a single malt for this one. Will do. Oh, what's this you need of then? Don't worry, it's not a bribe for information. Because I know as much as you do now, finally. Oh, I take it we're talking about Bet. Oh, she's told me the whole sorry story. At least I assume it is. Well, if the villain of the piece is named Phil, that's all you need. And that's it, is it? Well, who don't you believe, her or me? Oh, Mike, I don't know what to believe. There you go, love. Oh, that's, um... No, it's okay, love. Keep the change. Oh, thanks. I think she's more worried about it getting to Rita than anybody else. I mean, I don't know how she's kept all this bottled up. Very proud woman, is Ben. Well, I wonder how far that's going to get her in a court case. I mean, it's not the same as a ding-dong over the Rover's bar, is it? Oh, I take it we've had words, have we? <sighs> Look, I want to help her, Mike. But, I mean, I know if I push her too far, she's just going to walk out. And then she really will be on her own. Let her do it her way. She usually does in the end. <sighs> Cheers. All right. Cheers, love. <laughs> Mum's gone shopping. She won't be back for ages. Hey, are uh, four, you know what that means? What? The cocktail hour. You got any ice? Oh, I don't want a drink. And what'd you bring me back for then? I thought you wanted to come. You got any better ideas? Whatever you want. Big love, Tara. Oh, look at me. It's only the factory and my heart's going ten to the dozen. If there's any sense, they won't even let you home for your comfy shoes. Come and join us. No, thanks, girl. I've got to get off in a minute. Right, best of luck. Let me know. I will. Here. Oh, thanks, Bob. I tried speaking with Sarah this morning. She's still sat on seeing this aid. See what I mean? I just wonder if the attraction won't fizzle out if we back off slightly. By which time she'll be in with all his mates, who get up to, who knows what, if they're anything like him. I agree with what he's saying, Gail, but I can hear her now. You're only saying this because I'm a mum. Yeah, so am I. And I wouldn't be much of one if I let that put me on. Hey, don't look now. Hey, love. Hi, yeah. Can I have a word? Yeah, I was just coming across to see you. Yeah, well, don't bother. I don't know why you approached me in the first place. I'm sorry? Well, if Mike can remember, I'm sure you can. I see. Don't Mike tell you how we got to that point? What happened to me? What my family went through? Look, I'm all for giving second chances and oh, that, Maybe if but... I'd gone to jail, I would have got one. I'm not going to get into this. I hope you find something else, all right? I bet you do. Are you fixed? Go on, put you out of your misery. Let's do it. Yeah, before you were with him. Yeah, since then, obviously. No. Any message? <laughs> oh, uh, that was work, in case you're wondering. He's getting his money's worth, isn't he, Baldwin? Working again tonight? Mm -mm. Don't think so. Oh, well, we said we'd try and coincide, didn't we? What about tonight? Do you fancy getting a takeaway or something? Uh, no. I've uh, got a really early start tomorrow. I'm gonna crash out. Well, don't worry, I won't keep you up past your bedtime. Well, I've been dead busy lately. Like I say, I'm just going to crash out, sorry. Well, so do something about it. I mean, I'm not off every night, am I? Yeah, we'll sort something out, all right? It's fine here, Archie, right. thank you. Do you know, when the family came out with these, I thought I was done for. You won't, though. Take spirit, does that? Actually... I feel very badly about the song and dance I made before. This has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done. I mean that. Will he consider doing it again? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But I don't know why you didn't tell me it was Edwina Levy herself. Well, what with her having done the job so long, <laughs> you were nervous enough as it was. Oh, true, yeah. Poor Edwina. You know she had to sell on Balaclava Terrace. <laughs> oh, stories I've heard. Well, <laughs> I was going to say they'd make your hair curl, <laughs> but, but she had so many failed perms to her name, God yeah. rest her. <laughs> <laughs> ah, she, uh, she could be a fiery little devil. <gasps> Tell me about <laughs> it. I mean, if you crossed her, we'll be tied you. I mean, you'd come out with a pudding basin fringe just for hogging the my weekly. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be saying all this. No, thing. no, it's true. <sighs> You're a wonderful, compassionate woman. Oh. No, I'm, I know it wasn't easy. After Alma. But uh, I'm sure she'd have been just as proud of you as I am. Oh, I've 
Thank you, Archer. Thanks. No way, who's that? I don't know, do I? Go in the kitchen. You've had your thinking cap on. Hello, Bethany. Em, um, this will help you if you haven't got your eyes set on anything in particular. They're not all meringues. Well, some of them are actually. Oh, well, I'm kind of doing an essay. Oh, well, two ticks and I'll be over your hair. Oh, well, I'm sort of in the middle of it right now. Oh, I see. Well, I want you to lose your thread. Hi, Amy. Bill, I'll pop round tomorrow. Sarah's just in the middle of doing her homework. She's not normally that keen. Yeah, it's got to be in first thing. What do you think you're doing? Oh, hi. I was just going to see the rabbit. Out of the house, now. See you, Sarah. Bye, Mrs Platt. You weren't slow, were you? First chance you got. We wasn't doing anything. I think you owe Haley an apology. Why? What have I done? What do you think? She came round to do you a favour. Yeah, well, I never asked her to come poking her nose in, did I? Sarah! I'll come back. It's no bother. I'm sorry, Amy. Oh, it's, it's no bother. See you. You! Stay right where you are. Tell you what, you got it made. You and Kevin. Oh, yeah. Oh, freedom. No women keeping tabs on you. Oh, yeah, it's great. Spending half your life thinking about your family down the road. Feeling like a spare part because you can't be there for your own kids. Great, Steve. Anyway, best be off then. Hey, Steve. Your missus wasn't here before looking for you. Second thoughts, better not leave Martin on his own. Save again, please. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, you didn't need to come round, Mike. Well, you didn't sound too clever at lunchtime. Oh, no, I'm all right. I know it sounds silly, but I just feel so responsible for Beth that she's having a lie down. Oh, all right. Uh, I asked her how she got on with the solicitor, but I just got the brave face. So, in other words, she's already playing this game. Makes sense to me. Oh, listen, I don't think sense has ever had a look in with Bettina Fellas. I don't know how she's going to cope when she has to face that Phil chap in court. Mm, I don't envy her that. I mean, do you think she stands a chance, be honest? Of course she has. As long as there's an ounce of blood in him, he's going to keep fighting. The closer they were, the harder he's going to fight. It's the rules. Mm, right. Anyway, Wednesday. I've cleared it with Maria, so I've got my whole day free and I can go to court with her. And she'll have one friendly face anyway. Oh, she'll be glad about that. Oh, will she, Eck? Well, I'm going like it or not. Do you know, I think she's her own worst enemy half the time. Mm, I bet she wishes that was true. You out with Gina, then? No, we're uh, just keeping things light for now, you know. All right, I see. So who's letting her down gently, then? Well, neither of us. Why? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, look, if you're sat here with a face like a wet weekend, you can bet Gina's doing the same. Look, the thing is, I really like her. It's just the way everyone goes on like she's after so much serious. <clears throat> and I can't give it to her, not right now. Listen, mate, when I left the Navy, I thought every single woman wanted my slippers on that rug. And that comes with not spending enough time with the real thing. You just got to tell Gina what you told me. All right, well, that's one way of blowing it sky high, isn't it? Yeah, well, if you don't mind me saying this, mate, I think you're doing that already. <sighs> yeah, well, might as well do it sooner rather than later, eh? Oi, you. Hey. No, don't hire me. When was you going to tell me about this ten grand? Don't pipe down, will you? You're going to keep it from me, won't you, you rotten conniving git? No. And when was you going to tell me about it? Look, this isn't pennies from heaven, you know. I sweated blood. Well, have you got it? Come on, oh, let's see it. Karen, eh? Get it off. Oh, let me see it. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, this is like... This is the flat furniture and everything. <laughs> we can do it now, baby. Oh. <laughs> we weren't even messing about. There's not one thing that you can... You had him in my house again after everything I said. And you lied to Hayley. How do you think she felt? Now, just calm down. You want to explain to Richard what all this is about? Why should I? You're the only one that's got a problem. I think I get the gist. Now, your mum's supposed to Oh, you weren't you even to... here! It seems to me that ever since you've hung around with him, you've been spoiling for a fight. No. Then why did you do it after everything Because said... that's what you do when you've got a boyfriend. I'm sorry, mum, but you might as well face it, because that's what he is. Oh, grow up. He's a show-off with a fast mouth. Beyond that, you hardly know him. Hardly know him? How well do you know him? Hardly. Never stopped you. I know that I trust him. 
And we care for each other. Oh, of course you do. Because you're allowed another chance of happiness, aren't you? All I get is to choose Bethany's meals. You pick up a bloke, you move him in, never mind that none of us can stand him. You don't mean that. Oh, don't I? I thought we were getting on fire. You apologise to Rick. Why should I? I don't want you living here, and neither does David. You want to get married? Fine. Just find someone else to smile and hold your flowers for you, because me and Bethany aren't going to be there. Me? No, it was meant to be a surprise. Go back to bed. Mmm, chocolate banoffee muffins. I can't have any bubbly, though, babe. Why not? I've got work to go to. Oh, why can't you just take the day off? It's your birthday. Because we've got a load of account work on and we're a driver sure. Aww. I had it all planned. I thought, breakfast in bed, mm. followed by more bed. I could get Vernon to do the factory now. And then I thought we could uh, have a look at that show flat. Second thoughts, I better go in. Steve. I want that flat. We can't afford it. Especially not with one wage coming in. Oh, but we can afford it. In fact, we could go right down there now and put a deposit on it in cash. A deposit? Yes. But then we're going to be saddled with a huge mortgage. There's no way. Now, come on. I want me muffins. I knew it wouldn't be all plain sailing, me moving in. Nothing in this family ever is. Well, I thought it was David's job to give me our time, not Sarah. Well, maybe they're doing a swap. Maybe David's going to start being nice to you. <laughs> Actually, we've been getting on well for months. I know, and I'm really glad. But all the time, Sarah, who I thought I got along with, hates me guts. She doesn't hate your guts. Well, she said she don't like me and she don't want to come to the wedding. She's doing it to get at me. It's just plain nastiness. And I think I know where it's coming from. Where? That smart Alec boyfriend of hers. It's totally out of character for Sarah to talk like that. Unless that's what she's been thinking all along. And it's only just coming out now. No, Richard, no. Don't start thinking like that. Where are you going? Where do you think I'm going? I'm going to school. You don't just walk out without saying a word. I have nothing to say to you. And what about Richard? Have you got something to say to oh, him? Leave it, eh, girl? No, I won't. She owes you an apology. I don't think I have to say sorry for telling the truth. I don't care if I have to stand here all day. I've tried being reasonable. Yeah, reasonable, that's a joke. And I'll tell you something else. You'll stop seeing Aidan Critchley if I have to walk you to school. No, I mean it, Steve. I mean, you might be living in a dump, but I'm not. Besides, it's the best time to invest in property. That's what that uh, Richard Ullman said. <laughs> well, he would do, he sells them. Yeah, and it's a bargain, so you should be snatching his hand off. It's out of our league. Do you know what, I married you? I thought you had ambition. You know, uh, what is to go places. Oh, what, by living it up? Getting up to my eyes in debt, been there, Karen. Yeah, and that was a long time ago. I mean, you didn't have me then. Oh, and you're the sensible one, are you? Huh? Gonna keep me on the straight and narrow? Getting a mortgage on a two-bedroom flat does not make us Bonnie and Clyde. Well, it's not gonna stop there, though, is it? You're gonna want the new car to go with it. All the designer clobber. Now, stop acting like we've won the flipping lottery. Go out and get a job. Oh, uh, I'm glad I bumped into you. Um, I'm not working tonight. Just wondering if you fancy doing something. Uh, well, tonight? You're busy. Yeah, I, um, uh, well, I told Mike I worked late for him. How late? Oh, I don't know, 10, well, 11 maybe. Well, 12 even. It's hard to say, you know, I'm there till I go home, aren't I? Lucky Mike. No one else gets a look in, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Better social life when I was in a nick. Some of the time, you know. Right, OK, I'd like that. You win. Yeah, well, I was hardly going to tell her on the street where you were standing there, was I? Well, you've got to do it sometime. Yeah, I know, I know. It's not something I'm looking forward to, is it? Hey, Bernie. Uh, take me to Chester, please. Hello. You know, actually, it was really quite lively to begin with, wasn't it, when Bet and that Phil came face to face? Oh, why? What happened? Well, a fingernail seemed to grow longer and smoke started coming out of her ears. <laughs> Since then, it's been very low-key. Quite relaxed, really. So has Bet been called to the stand yet? Nope, and by the look of it, I don't think she will be today. Let her be. If you see her this afternoon, give her my best, will you? Tell her we're thinking about it. Ken, yeah, we will, thanks. And I think she'll be pleased to hear that. Didn't take Karen long to get used to the high life. Oh, she's not been going on about that blooming flat, has she? No, but she was in 20 minutes ago, booking a cab to Chester. 
Chester on account? Well, maybe she's got a job interview. <laughs> I don't think so. She has to be where all the post shops were. What? Get me on the switch. Who's the driver? Bernie. Bernie, this is Steve. Do not take my wife to Chester. Return to base. Repeat. Return to base. Over. Hey, babe. Uh, it's too late. We're already on the motorway. Uh, over. Karen, what the hell do you think you're playing at? You're supposed to be job hunting. Yeah, uh, hunting for shoes, maybe. Uh, see you later, babe. Oh, uh, over. Karen. Karen! It's not a bit like I expected. Who? Oh. Um, the accused. Oh, too normal looking, you mean? What, do you expect him to have dark glasses and a scar down his face? <laughs> no, I thought he were quite charming. I mean, I can quite see why women are drawn to him, you know. Well, it just shows you how different men are to women, doesn't it? I took one look at him and thought, oof, right crook. Did you? Yeah. Oh. He could have had con man tattooed across his forehead. Oh, do you think so, Mike? Yeah. And it's a good job that the judge is a man. Otherwise, she'd stand no chance. Come on, we better get back. All right. I mean it, Richard. I'm going to nip this in the bud right now. Don't be too hard, though, eh? She's really got to you, hasn't she? I don't know. I just think that all this shouting and screaming, it doesn't get us anywhere. What can I do if she doesn't listen to reason? Why don't I have another word with her? You think it'll do any good? Worth a try. 50 peas. Thank you. I suddenly sprouted two heads or something. No. But they'd both be very lovely heads if you did. No, oh, Joe doesn't seem to think so, because he keeps giving me the brush off. Well, I thought you didn't want to get serious. I don't. I didn't want him back off altogether. Well, maybe he's playing out to get. I'm quite a bit out with him. As if I ever see him again. Hi. Hiya. Where's Mum? I'd uh, gone out with David and Bethany. Uh, I asked her to go. I thought you and me could do with a little chat. I've got loads of homework. It'll only take a couple of minutes, please. Sit down. Did you mean what you said the other night? Thing is, Sarah, if you really don't like me, and you really don't want to come to the wedding, then maybe there shouldn't be a wedding. What do you mean? I'm not going to force myself on this family. Not if I'm not wanted. It's not fair. Of course I like you. I didn't mean what I said. I, I just didn't think it was very fair that my mum can see who she likes, but I can't. You're 15, Sarah. And this lad, Aid, I mean, he sounds as though he's a bit of a handful. Only because he says what he thinks. I really like him. I can see that. And I feel... I feel like my mum's trying to control me like I'm still a little girl. Well, to her, you still are a little girl. Yeah, well, I'm old enough to make my own decisions. I am a mum myself. And what about Bethany? What about when she's a teenager? You gonna let her do what she wants, are you? Well, I hope I'll be a bit more laid back than mum is. You'll worry about her, though, won't you? You worry about her now, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. I mean, if she's knocking about with a bloke you don't particularly like, You'll probably say so, won't you? Yeah. But she's got Aid all wrong. He's not like that. He's not a thug. He's, he's intelligent. And I'm not going to stop seeing him just because she says so. She probably just needs a bit more time to get used to him. Sure, give him a chance. Maybe I'll have a word with her. Will you? Well, I'm not promising I'll get anywhere. But I'll have a word. Oh, thank you. Don't mention it. And I am really sorry. I do really like you. Well, that's a relief. Come here. <laughs> there you go, love. Oh, I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. How do, Jan? How are you, Les? You all right? Not so bad. Have any of your girls been in shell? Been and gone, love. Have they? Did they say they were going anywhere after? Well, they didn't say how. But... More on their mind. Stood you up, have they? No, we hadn't arranged out. I just fancied a quick drink and a bit of an atter. I've been working late. You could uh, have a drink and an atter with me if you like. I'm still here doing now. I should get a bite, really. I have a pile of iron in. Don't talk soft. Surely me and you can have a drink together. For old time's sake. Les, 
that is the last reason I'd have a drink with you. Well, do it because neither of us has got anyone else to drink with then. Go on then, I'll have a pint, thanks. Good girl. <laughs> Eli! Well, twice in one day, eh? It's the only way we're going to see each other, isn't it? By accident. I was coming to find you, actually. What, Michael, I you out early? Yeah. Look, I think me and you need to have a chat. You better come through. Uh-oh, I smell trouble. Well, uh, this is nice. It's weird. How do you mean? After everything that's happened. There's no point of living in the past, Jan. I thought me and you would never have a civil conversation again. We can't stay away from each other forever. Right, here, a toast. What's it? The day me and you decided to put the past behind us and get back on an even keel. Cheers. Cheers. You're right, though. It's best that we rub along, even if it's only for our tyres, so... We both live in the same street, drinking the same pub. Exactly. I don't want to feel like I've got to avoid you. Well, if we do meet, we'll just act civil. Well, Les, are you on Prozac or something? Hey? Some mind-altering drug that's turned you all reasonable. I'm just my normal, easy-going self. Are you getting on with that Kirk all right? Ah, he's a good lad. That's the house of pigsty, like. All oh, right. And you've got to run round after him, no doubt. Oh, aye. I'm very domesticated, me. Les, don't make me laugh. You had the rat catcher in a couple of weeks ago. A vacuum. Empty bins. Reggae meals in the oven. You? Vac? Oh, this I must see. You're welcome to come any time. Anyway. I wasn't all that bad around the house when you were living with me, was I? Nah, don't suppose so. Actually, what am I saying? Yeah, you were. You were a complete slob. Do you know, I don't reckon you were in so much as a pot in all that time we were together. I'm an alpha male. A what? A leader. I was the man of the house, wasn't I? The breadwinner. You were the housewife. That's what we did. No, 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 Les. What I did was cooked, cleaned, washed, shops and worked. I mean, you occasionally worked, but most of the time you just sat on your big fat backside. You never used to complain. I did. Every single day. But you didn't take a blind bit of notice. It is a scientific fact that men switch off when nagged. It's also a scientific fact that women, when treated like dirt, leave. Do you want another pint in there? All right, go on. Right, well, I'll nip to the bar and get it then, shall I? Excuse me. <laughs> Can't just sit here all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Well, shall I start? No, no, look. I'm the one who owes you an explanation now. I know I've been acting funny. You got another woman? No. No, of course I'm not. Uh, are you sure? I'm just not good at relationships. I, I'm out of practice. Luke, if this is your way of trying to let me down gently or whatever, I don't mind. I mean, you're a nice guy, Joe, but I mean, we've only seen each other a couple of times. It's no big deal. Isn't it? Well, no. I, mean, I don't want you to think I don't care, but I mean, I've done all the heavy relationship stuff with Dev and frankly, it was boring. I just want to have a laugh. What, really? Well, that's exactly how I feel. I mean, I've only just come out of prison and I don't want to get into anything heavy, not yet. Well, great. So, what's the problem? <laughs> well, there ain't one. But you have been avoiding me. Yeah. Look, uh, cards on the table. I really like you, Gina, but I can't promise anything, all right? I mean, I don't know where I'll be in six months, let alone where you and I are going to be. 
Look, what's the point in trying to see into the future? Why can't we just enjoy ourselves I, I, now? I don't want to let you down. As long as you're straight with me and you don't muck me around, me and you will get along just fine. All right. So are you still free tonight, then? I don't want to dredge up the past. What's done is done. Yeah. But... Oh, here we go. I can't allow what you said to just go by. Les, you treated me like dirt. You did. So what are you saying? Hey, That because I didn't do the washing up, that entitled you to run off with my best mate? It wasn't like that. I'm not being horrible here, Jan. I am just trying to state the facts. Look, I put up with a lot for years. Then when Dennis come along, I realised that I couldn't put up with you any longer. Then why didn't you just put your marriage first instead of jumping in bed with my mates? Listen, have you got any idea what it was like living with you? Have you? All them nights when I stayed in and cried, yeah, wept, and you were out, supping all my housekeeping money away, chatting up anybody in a skirt and pulling all your daft stunts. But it were always me, weren't it, eh? Always me that had to clear up your mess every time you whacked one at neighbours who feed summit. All marriages have their ups and downs, Jan. Yeah, well, it were mostly downs, were you, like? Yeah, you're just saying that to justify what you did. What I did? I should have done a long time ago. Oh, yeah? Then tell me this, then. In all the years we were together, did I ever, ever lay a hand on you? No. But that doesn't mean that we had a happy marriage. Did I have affairs? No, but that wasn't for one to try in. No! The answer is no! I might have made mistakes. I am no angel, but nothing I did comes anywhere near what you did to me. Oh, well, our happy truce lasted all of 15 minutes. You've wrecked our marriage. And for what, eh? Tell me, what have you got with it now, eh? I knew this was a bad idea. So, what did he say, then? No. Anyway, even if he did, I wouldn't tell you. It's confidential. It's man-to-man, -man like, you know. But you reckon he's going to finish with her? Well, I don't think he's about to get down on one knee. Let's just say that, shall we? Oh, she's going to be really upset, you know. Uh, we're going out for a meal. See you tomorrow. Oh, right. Enjoy yourselves. See you later. Yeah. Then again, I could have got it all totally wrong. Janice! I'm sorry. Oh, just forget it. Just hearing you talk like that, as if we were never, ever happy. It breaks my heart. Well, I can't pretend it was good if it wasn't. I know. I know. And I was a lousy husband. I didn't deserve you. But there were some good times, weren't there? You've got to tell me there were good times, because that's all I've got to hold on to. Yeah. Yeah, there were good times. Come and have another drink with me at the house. No, I really don't think that's a good idea. Come on. One drink. We were doing fine until we got onto the subjects of you know what. Don't go yet, Jack. Don't go on. <clears throat> so, what do we think? It's horrible. Makes you look fat. You're so just saying that. So how much did it cost them? In fact, no, don't tell me. I don't want to know. Hey, that one you got off Richard is as much mine as it is yours. Uh, and how'd you work that out? Because you wouldn't have even took the flipping job if I hadn't made you. Besides, we're married. What's yours is mine. All oh, right, so you think that gives you the right to go out and blow money I've worked my butt off for? Hey, all right. I went out and got you some nice things for your birthday and all. I don't want them. I don't want anything from you. Oh, why? You've been such a stick in the mud. We're loaded. No, we are not. Well, we are by our standards. I mean, we're young, and we should be out enjoying ourselves. Not like we've got anything sensible to spend our money on, is it? Oh, OK, I get it. We don't buy the flat, you blow the money. You do know this is blackmail, don't you? Ah, oh, you know me, Steve. I'd like to get me on way. No, Kirk. He's gone to some pot festival. Here. I'm sorry about the mug. What's this? My taxa. It's Greek. I got it off some punter at the airport. Oh, it's nice, that, isn't it? Four quid for a big bottle. <laughs> I am, uh, I'm sorry about what I said in the pub. No, I provoked you. 
I asked for it. It's funny, isn't it? No matter how many times you promise yourself that you won't say no, you always do. No raking over the past, day. Eh? Can't help it, can you? It's like having some big scab that you can't stop picking. You used to love to pick my scabs. Les, that's disgusting. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, it must have been some kinky replacement for sex, then. Hey, we never needed a replacement for sex. No. Shall I put a record on? Go on, then. As long as it's not some maudlin. I'll tell you what, why don't you put that 10cc one on? Do you remember when you sang to me in that street? <laughs> that got made into an ashtray when you went. Sorry. Sorry, uh, no raking over the past day. Well? Quite good, actually. I think we cleared the air. She doesn't hate me. Good. Where is she now? In her room doing her homework. Oh, yeah, I've made an impact. Oh, well, she always does her homework. Most of the time. No, you're right. Mustn't be unfair. In fact, all things considered, she's a pretty good kid, really. Especially when you think she's got to bring Bethany up. It's because she's a good kid that I don't want to get her into the clutches of a bad lad. The more you try and stop her, the more determined she'll be to be with him. In fact, you're making him a more attractive proposition. I'm just so worried he'll get her into trouble. And I don't mean pregnant. I mean trouble. He may not. And there's no point in worrying about it. You obviously think I should let her go out with him. Well, I just can't help thinking that there's a compromise, if you both put your minds to it. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe I have overreacted. Let me think about it. You do that. Hmm. Right, well, I've got to be getting home. Oh, wait. Have another drink. Well, it's a can't, can I? I've got work in the morning, and so have you. Come on. Be a gentleman and show me to the door. Pull us up. Oh. I don't have Miss Eugene. Come on. Let's go on. I've got to get to work, Les, me. Oh, no, must you? Can't you take the morning off? No, I can't. Well, I'm taking the day off. And if anybody asks, I'm going to tell them why. Because I'm getting my life back together again. I'm getting my life, my marriage, my home. I'm getting them all back the way they should be. Les, I I've really got to go. <laughs> oh, must you? Mm. But what are we, we going to do, then? Sh shall I see you at dinner time? Probably, yeah. And I'll tell you what. Last night... It was the best ever. And you know why? Because I'd given up hoping. I had, honest. I thought me and you had had it. No chance. Well, now, well, I can't tell you how I feel. It's fantastic. Les, Les, I've got to get back home and get changed and then go to work, so I've got to go. Well, I'll see you later. All right, then. Yeah. See you later. See you later. <clears throat> Sarah, love. As a chief witness for the prosecution this morning. <laughs> She's already on a third cigarette. <laughs> Oi! Hey! Factory's that way. Yeah, I know. And I'll be there. <sighs> Amazing. I've been thinking, actually. I mean, assuming Bet does win her case. She will. Well, do you think we should have a little celebration? You, me and her. What do you think? What, you mean go out somewhere? No, I don't mind cooking if you want to come round to us. I'll be delighted. Tell you what, I'll supply the wine. Oh, yes, please. See you later. All right, love. Bye. Bye. I'm not saying that I like Aid, or that I ever will. Oh, really? No. But I can't stop you seeing him, can I? Well, short of following you around all day, which isn't very practical, and anyway, it would only make you hate the sight of me. Shut up, you. In bother again, is she? No, she isn't. Yeah, but you will be. It's half for me as well, you know, living in the same house. Go and clean your teeth, David. Won't be surprised if I will let her stray. The last thing I want is us falling out. So? I'm going to trust you. If you want to see Aid, you can. 
If you want to bring him back here, then you can. And you're not going to chuck him out? No. But I am going to be trusting you. Trusting you to make your own mind up, not just do everything he says. Okay? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well done. I'm not so sure. Well, I am. You've not met Aid. He's only, what, 15? Yeah, but he's smart. Thinks he knows it all. Compared to Sarah, he probably does. So, uh, have you got him a card? What's the point if he's not here? Yeah, well, I thought he would be. I thought the reason he hadn't been in touch was he was going to surprise us and turn up on his birthday today. Yeah, well, surprises. He's not going to surprise us. So what am I supposed to do with this? Open it myself, I suppose. Right. I'm off. See you tonight. See you, love. Happy birthday, Jason. Lots of love, Mum. Kiss, kiss, kiss. I even promise not to kiss you if you just come back. Hiya. Oh, hiya. Haven't seen you for a bit. No, I've been busy looking after Bethany. Right. Only I thought I'd been spending most of your time with Aiden. What are you saying that for? Because it's true. But just leave off, can't you? You sound like my mum. Steve! Can we just go and have a look at it? How can I when I'm working? And go and put some clothes on. Oh, come on, you can take some time off. I've already seen it. I helped build it. No, you haven't seen it with all the proper furniture in that. Get back inside. No! No. In fact, I'm going to walk all the way down the street to the office and I'm going to stick with you until you say we can go and see that show flat. Fine. Right. Oh, come on! What? Get inside! When you say we can see the flat! Right, right, we'll go. Would you promise? Yes. Now go and put some clothes on. Maybe I'll leave you when I get my own way. Hiya. Why am I smiling? Don't you know? No, you asked me. Why am I smiling? Why are you smiling? Me and your mum's got back together. Honest? Yep. Oh, well, 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 that's great. You're telling me. I still can't believe it. So how did it happen? I didn't even know you were seeing each other. No, we weren't till last night. Then we both happened to be in the Rovers. Got together over a drink. Well, a few drinks. Then it was back home, and Bob's your uncle. So you mean she's actually moved back in? Yeah. Well, she's gone to work now, so we haven't had time to talk about that sort of stuff, but that's the general idea, yeah. Wow. Well, I honestly never thought it'd happen. Me neither, but it has. Anyway... I haven't come in for out. I thought I'd just bring you the good news. Oh, and unless there's, uh, there's one of the Meckles cakes coming spare. Just this one. Special occasion. Hey, it is an all, isn't it, eh? And I mean that. Well, I'm really pleased for you both. Me and all, kid. Me and all. Oh. Tea's up. Oh, thanks, love. I'll just finish bar off first. All right. Oh, actually, um, in case you're wondering what happened with me and Joe. No, it wasn't actually. That's your business. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, we've decided we'll just see each other when we feel like it, you know, no ever. And you're happy about that? Yeah, I'm delighted. I mean, neither of us wants commitment, you know, behaving like a proper couple and all that rubbish. What, like me and Petey mean? Well, yeah, exactly. Anyway, it turns out it's not what he wants, and it's certainly not what I want. <laughs> nice. I just think it's more grown up, you know, than all that couple's stuff. Let's the Tommy Bench, Debra, who? Yes, love. See you in a minute. Actually, Fred, um, do you think I could have a word? Oh, it's not more problems, is it? I say, it's not more problems. I thought we could have a period of harmony, us getting on together. Yeah, well, that's what I want to know, but I know you're thinking of appointing a new bar manager, aren't you? Still thinking about it, I. Just, I just thought it was fair to say that if it's going to be Gina, then I won't be stopping. No? No. Well, don't get me wrong, I think she's a lovely girl. I mean, even she's one of my best friends, but I just won't want to work for her. And I thought it'd be best to tell you now before it's too late. Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Hey, uh, congratulations. Les has been in and told me. Oh, no. Oh, yes, Nazzy. Yeah? Tell me how you'd got back together. Why, what's up? Well, um... He's wrong, because we haven't. 
But he said... Yeah, I know that I stayed round there last night. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not denying that. More's the pity. But the reason why I stayed round there were because... I'm stupid. And mainly because I was drunk. And that's all. And he seems to think that because of that, we're getting back together. Well, we're not. Oh, no. What was he like? Practically dancing on the ceiling. <laughs> I've never seen him so pleased. Oh, well, you know, I'm sorry. No, but I mean, well, you were there with him this morning, weren't you? Why didn't you just tell him then? Because I didn't know how to. I mean, why do you think I'm in here? I'm trying to keep out of his way. But you can't just leave him like he is, thinking what he's thinking. Mum, that's cruel. I know that. Happen if you were to. What? Well, can you tell him for me? No, no, I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. No, you're the one who's letting him think you're getting back together. You're the one who's got to tell him he's got it wrong. Mm. Richard, all right, we're uh, going to go down and see one of your shelf lights. Really? Yeah, we can see what we think, eh? Two pints, please, Shelley. Well, why don't I come on down there with you? Give you the guided tour. Well, what do we want that for? I do know the place. No, no, I'd like to. You know, be a dry one for me, nothing else. So, you haven't sold it to anyone else then, no? No, no, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you and Steve, you've got first refusal on whichever one of those flats you choose. Well, don't you worry, cos we're not going to keep you hanging around, are we? We're just going to have a look. Yeah, of course we are. Hiya. Which is it? Please, yeah. And how are you? Well, I was thinking, what we were saying the other night about not seeing one another too often? Yeah. Does that mean... You wouldn't mind if I went out with other lasses? Um. Well, it, it doesn't, no. Good. Because it's not that I wanted to, it's just that I thought you might have expected it. <laughs> I think by the look on her face, she can be pretty sure she did. Thank you. <laughs> no, it was a joke. <laughs> now then, sit down. You workers need your rest. What can I get you? No, I'm all right, actually. I don't want to... Um, there's something we need to talk about. There's all sorts we need to talk about. Of course there is. Only hang on while I get myself a drink. Cos I'm still celebrating, even if you're not. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've told our toy what's happened. That's all right, isn't it? Blaze, can you just listen to me? I'm listening, yeah, go on. Last night, I were drunk. <laughs> I'd had a few myself. Yeah, well, I know it's no excuse, but I were. And because I was drunk, that's why what happened happened. <sighs> Who cares why? So long as it did. What I'm trying to say to you is it doesn't mean what you think it means. What I think you mean. Oh, I don't want us getting back together. I don't want to move back in here. I don't want to start all over again. I don't want out like that. I'm sorry. I, I really, really am sorry, Les. Oh, c c come on, though. Look, it's all my fault anyway, because I should have been straight with you. Look, even if you was a bit drunk... I was absolutely leathered! Yeah, all right. You might have been. But it doesn't mean that what happened wasn't genuine. That it, it wasn't what you were wanting deep down. I mean, come on, they, they say, don't they? Drink really brings out what you're thinking. It also makes you do stuff that you regret, which, in my case, I am going to regret for the rest of my life. Maybe it's my fault. Oh. Maybe I rushed it. No. What if we take it a step at a time? Liz! It's not your fault! It's not out that you did. You know, you are a really lovely bloke, and you don't deserve this. I'm sorry. One day you might be able to forgive me, but I won't blame you if you don't. Don't, Jan! Wait, come on, love! Here we are. This is your living room. All right. I'll agree with that. Stop it. <clears throat> I want to be shown around even if you don't. And, of course, it goes without saying that you've got central heating, double glazing, video security phone, and a fully fitted kitchen and bathroom. Workmanship is of the high standard and carries a ten-year guarantee. Just don't look at the small print. Have you seen this kitchen? What do you want to look at the kitchen for? 
I'm thinking of starting cooking are you? Well, you never know. I uh, might start doing lots of things. If we live somewhere decent. All units fully fitted. Discreet lighting. Uh, is there a dishwasher? A dishwasher and a washing machine. Steve, will you just look? I mean, there's everything. Well, there should be for the price. Would you like to see the master bedroom? Uh, yeah. It has an ensuite bathroom, which I think you'll find very attractive. I want this. Oh, it doesn't mean you're going to get it. I suppose you can't blame him for asking, really. Blame him. Joe, what he said about would you mind if he went out with other women? It were a joke. Yeah, but if it hadn't been, I mean, you said you don't want the two of you to be a proper couple. What do you have to keep going on about it for? Because I can't forget the look on your face when he said it, that's all. <laughs> Calm down, since dinner time, then. All done and dusted, are we? Yeah. My word. <laughs> We'd love to see him come in and spend, but we'd like to see him go again and leave us in peace. Can I just say something, Fred? Yeah, what's up? Um, I don't want you to think I'm being nasty out, cos, you know, I, I like Shelley, you know, and I, I like working with her. Glad to hear it. But... <clears throat> Well, I wouldn't want her as my boss. In fact, I couldn't stand that. So I'm just saying, you know, just in case you were thinking of making a manager, I'd have to go if you did. I see. I hope you don't mind me being honest. No, we welcome honesty in this establishment. Good job we do and all. There's a lot of it about. So, I'll leave you alone for a little chat. Let me know what you decide. Will do. Yeah, thanks. Bye now. Yeah. Well, I want it. You wanted it before you even saw it. Yep. And I've seen it, I still want it. Got the money for it, have you? So, have I? Oh, didn't realise I was moving in on my own. Well, you're going to expect me to pay for it, aren't you? Well, of course I am. All right, so do you not think I should have a say in whether we buy it or not? Yes, as long as you're not going to be negative and boring and saying no all the time. All right, so I do get a say, so long as I agree with you. So you're saying no? No, I'm not. But you're saying no! Just like you say no to everything that I want! Well, why can't you just say it, eh? Then we'd have to waste no time looking at stuff and me getting all my hopes up! No, why don't you just tell me that we're going to stay in that poxy rented flat for the rest of our lives because then I'll know where I stand it! didn't say no! Right, well, what if I promise to get a job? Well, that'd help. And then it's a deal, baby. If you agree to us buying this place, I promise I will go out there and I will get myself a job. Well, let's see you get a job first, sure. That's not a problem. I think Richard's still outside. Why? Because I'm going to tell him we want the place. Uh, no, you're not. Job first, and then we'll talk. <laughs> but Steve, he might sell it to somebody else. He won't. <laughs> Audrey, what do you want? Oh, gin and tonic. Gin and tonic. Oh, Mike, listen, I've got someone to tell you. She's lost. Who's lost? Bet. What, lost her? The court case, yes. Oh, no. The judge said that they had failed to establish that there'd been any fraud, that they knew they were investing their money in something like a risky business and that they had given it to Bet's fella, Phil, whatever, of their own free will. He'd gone and lost it tough. But I thought the whole point was he hadn't lost it, he kept it. Well, the judge didn't think so. Oh, well, he's a silly old coot. The last time I saw him, he looked half asleep. Yes, there you go. Keep the change. Thanks. Bet's in a right state. Well, she would be, wouldn't she? I tried to persuade her to come back here, but no. She seems to think that everybody's going to laugh at her. No. I said, of course they won't come on, but no, she wouldn't listen anyway. So then it's been a taxi back to my place where she's packed up all her stuff. And now she's going to get a train to Brighton. What, already? <sighs> Honestly, Mike, I mean, she was desperate. She didn't want to see anybody, she just wanted to get away. There you go, love. Thanks. I might have known where you'd be. You know what's happened, then? Turns out I'd got it all wrong. You both of you did. Reckon she was drunk. Didn't know what she was doing. Hey, it weren't on purpose, though. No, she's really upset about it. Is she? You're more upset, though, aren't you? I think of her right to be, don't you? See, if you'd have come to me yesterday, and if you'd have asked me then, did I want your mum back, I'd have said I don't know. I'm not sure I do. Because I've got used to things. 
being on my own. But after this morning, waking up next to her, I can't say that anymore, can I? Because now, I know how much I do want her back. And how much I always will. Actually, she absolutely shattered Mike, just like she wanted to go away and hide. Well, didn't you tell her about the celebration dinner? No, because it was supposed to be a surprise. Well, I've done all the cooking now, actually. I've got a kitchen full of food. I've got all the wine in the car. Well, we can't let that go to waste, can we? OK, might not be a celebration, but uh, at least we can cheer ourselves up a bit, huh? Mm. Do you to come in my house? You are joking. Mum says it's OK. OK, so long as I wipe my feet and don't sweat. I think I'd sooner stop here, thanks. Oh, no, keep talking, just keep talking to me. Why? Talk to Rimshaw, he keeps following me, he won't leave me alone. Oh, I'll just tell him. I tried, it's not as easy as that. Maybe we should try a bit harder, then. Oh, are you jealous? Still haven't heard out from your brother. Who cares? Yeah, well, I do, actually. And seeing as I've only got two sons, I'd rather think I hadn't lost one of them in Blackpool. Be honest, you must miss him a bit. Well, don't get chance, do I? Since you keep going on about him. Oh, well, excuse me, let's talk about you. How's Sarah? Did you see her today? I haven't, no. Well, I thought you rushed out after her this morning. What would I do that for? I wouldn't rush after her. Hiya. Hi, oh, Sarah, I'll be in a minute. Hey, yeah, you. Hey, dear. That's my name. Yeah, well, I'm Sarah's stepfather. If I don't know. That. What? Giving smart answers. Acting clever, which you do quite a lot of, I hear. Do I? Do you know I hadn't noticed? Ooh. You're a cool customer, aren't you? Yeah. No. What do you want me to say? What I want is for you to promise me that you're going to be a real gentleman where Sarah's concerned. Treat her nicely, show her some respect. Now, there are two reasons for this. One is that I hope you think something of her and that you want to behave properly towards her anyway. The other is that if you don't, then I'm going to come looking for you. Now, before you smirk at that or say something clever, let me just explain that it won't be to complain to your dad or your teachers or to give you a telling off. I'll be coming looking for you to put you in hospital. Now, this is a very serious warning, the most serious you've ever had. And the only one you're going to get from me. Nice talking to you. You never take someone to court unless you know you're going to win. Well, she thought she was. Yeah, but she was wrong. Well, we know that now. So she's got all her legal expenses on top of not getting her money back. I mean, what's she going to do? Well... She'll have had all of the train journey back to Brighton by now. Hey, <laughs> maybe she sat next to a millionaire widower and they got chatting. <laughs> now, knowing her, she'd have got off with a ticket collector. Find out he's got a wife, two kids, and he's more in debt than she is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I mean, uh, what do you make a bet, eh? What do you mean? Well, all the years I've known her, she's been on the verge of getting her life put right, but it never happens. Something always happens to knock her back to square one. Now, is she unlucky? Is it her? Or is it, I don't know, something to do with where the planets were when she was born and she's always going to be like this? I'd say it would bet more than the planets. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Sarah seemed happier tonight. Yeah, talking to us, chatting to us about school. I love. Left me gone down all right. Yeah, she's flat out. That's good. Um, you know what I said about not wanting to come to the wedding? Yes, I do. Well, I didn't mean it, not really. Sounded like you did. We've given your invitation to somebody else, love. You haven't. <laughs> of course we haven't, silly. You don't honestly think I get married without you, do you? Well, I wouldn't blame <laughs> you after what I said. Mm. Can't even remember what it was. Thanks. Well, that's a relief. I think she's growing up a bit. Uh, I'd still be happier if this aide weren't around. Oh, I don't think you need worry. You haven't met him. Even so, I think this family can go. I've got to get moving. Really? It's the only relaxed breakfast we got all week. I mean, with the wedding plans, there's lots of things I haven't done yet. Oh, yeah, I meant to tell you. I confirmed the venue and agreed to catering with those people. Are 
Richard? Well, sorry, I thought it'd help. Well, it has. It's fantastic, but I didn't know. Oh, sorry, I should have told you. But anything else? Yeah. Roger's agreed to be best man, me old college mate. And I was just wondering... Morning. Morning, love. Hi. You OK? Yeah, thanks. Sorry, you were saying... Oh, just about best man. And, uh, well, I was just wondering... Go on. Well, Martin. How do you mean? Well, I know he's very close to you and the kids. You mean, should we invite him? Yeah. What do you want? Well, if I'm frank, I wouldn't be as happy as I'd like to be. But I realise it could be awkward for you, so... Are you inviting Patricia? No. So? No ex-spouses it is, then. Now all we have to do is enjoy the rest of the day. You're working. Not much. Just got to see some clients late on. Won't take long, promise. Better not. We've some serious planning to catch up on. Hello. How am I? No, no, not a word. Mind you, I can't say I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah, well, that's bet, isn't it? Mm. She's, uh, oh, what's that word? An enigma in her own lifetime. <laughs> She'll get in touch when she's good and ready. Well, I wouldn't love, but uh, it's up to you. I mean, the way she went off, I don't think she wants to talk to anybody. Yeah, we'll leave it to her, OK. OK, love, yeah. See you later. Yeah, bye-bye. Good night, Well, there you are. Sneaking out on me. No. Look, I just want us to think about it. Look, I think about moving flats when you think about getting a job. And I've told you, I'm looking. But I've got to think about practicalities first. Like? I don't know. But, but like, how much notice does Alec need? Are you moving? No. Yeah. Well, thinking about it. So, uh, how much notice do we need to give? A month should do it. Right. So this is not a month for you to do now. No job, no move. All right. Come on at me. You all right, love? Uh, yes, thanks. If you want anything, just ask. Do you stock poetry today? No. Is that a new one? No. Morning, Eileen. How was Jason's birthday? Oh, I haven't got a clue he didn't turn up. What, from Lightpool? Oh, I thought you were expecting him. Yeah, well, I had hopes, but then, I mean, what's a child's birthday? It's only the anniversary of the day that you lay in bed sweating, screaming and praying for it to end. Hey, probably best forgotten. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, he's done you. <sighs> I'll see you later, babe. Are you giving me notice? Nope. So, should you buy back old cards? Janice? Jan? Oh, it's you. Hiya. Who do you think it was? Eh? Hey? Oh, no one. So come on then. Hi, Kirk. How have you been? You missed me? Not exactly. Oh. Hey, I had a great time. I tell you, life at them unis is brilliant. My mate, right, he's got a shared house. 33 of them together. They have a great laugh. I'm thinking of going uni. Oh, I. How many GCSEs have you got? None. But I thought I could go as one of them mature students. So what have been up to, then? Loads of chicks. Look, Kirk. Go and unpack your bag and go away. All right. You coming down the rovers later? Maybe. Thanks, Eileen. I really owe you one. Yeah, right. No, I mean it. I know you said you could have the weekend off for Jason's birthday, but... Yeah, but as he hasn't turned up, I may as well be bored out in school here as well. Steve. What? Look, I'm really serious about this. It means everything to me. Well, then you know what you've got to do then, don't you? Well, can we just go and have another look? I can't stop thinking about it. No. Why not? Because I'm working, that's why not. And I'm especially not going to come after I've persuaded Eileen to give up her time off. Now, you start working as well, and then we can have a serious conversation about it. Can we just go and have a look at No! Right. Well, thank you for working and keeping Steve busy. And, oh, yeah, sorry, kids have got more interesting places to go than home. Can't think why. <laughs> can we cross them off? Yeah. Hello? Mrs Platt? This is, uh, Aid. One of Sarah's friends. I suppose Aid's short for Aiden, is it? Um, yeah, that's right. Didn't like it? 
friends, they started and it sort of stuck. And it's usually the way. This is Richard. Hello, Aid. You all right? Right, we'll be in the garden. Uh, I thought you might like these. Oh, thank you, eh? That's lovely. Wonders will never cease. Maybe I've misjudged the lad. Well, she told me he'd never look smarter. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Well, she'd never seen his hair without that tuft at the back sticking up. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Well, he had a little bit of a double crown, you see, ah. so... I noticed that his hair had never really been cut properly before. Well, there you are, you see. Some had only a, a true professional good spot. <laughs> well done. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Morning, young man. How's the world of speculation? Oh, not so bad, Fred. They're speculating and you're accumulating. Oh, uh, yeah, somewhat like that. Yeah. Good. What is it, a pint? Yes, please. Yeah. Where's your young lady? Oh, she's uh, she'll be along. She's just getting changed. Grand. An asset is that one, I believe me. Oh, you reckon? When you're as experienced in man management as I am, you know when you've got a good one. I say, you know when you've got a good one. I'll tell you something else she said, I know. Oh, yeah. If she'd have known you could have made him so good looking, she'd never have put the arsenic in his tea. What? <laughs> Joking. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, you. Hey, oh. Jason's coming back. Says so he's going to meet us in here later. Good. About time he got around in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it is. How you doing, mate? Yeah, good, the new lads. Yeah, great. Been out of any more geriatrics? Yeah, yeah, very funny. The old place hasn't changed much. You've only been gone a month. Hey, listen, Sonny, where I've been, that is a lifetime. Come on, I'll get you a drink. So, tonight, mm. anything as long as you don't include old age pensioners. <laughs> Will you drop it? Well, we ought to do something. Yeah, especially as I miss my birthday. You haven't? I have. Well, that's it then. Party. Brilliant. Where? This? Well, yeah, OK. I'll just go to the bog and we'll sort it. Results. Results. I do, you all right? Uh, Martin. Yeah? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Uh, the wedding. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've been unable to invite Patricia. And my ex-wife. Oh, right, yeah. So we kind of thought that we wouldn't invite exes. Oh, OK, fine. Sorry, is that all right? Well, yeah. Never occurred to me I'd be on the list anyway. No hard feelings, then. Huh? Cheers, mate. Right. No way. Yeah, straight up. Singing your praises like you were the barmaid of the year, love. <laughs> He's up to sort. <clears throat> Pint, please. OK, OK. I was just trying to play me and Gina off against each other. Internal politics. Ah, uh, yeah, of course. Oh, if it gets any busier in here, I shall have to take my business elsewhere. What are you having, Blanche? Oh, that's very kind. A port and lemon, a small one. I only popped in to see if Archie were here. Well, he was here, yeah. And? Oh, no, nothing. Oh. Hmm. He was sat in that booth with, uh, with someone. Who? Some other woman, eh? Yes, Martin, now you mention it, I think it, I think it was another woman, yeah. Well, who? Well, it could be one of a number of women, not an Archie. Oh, come mm. on. Audrey. Huh. Well, that's no competition. Well, from where I was standing, Blanche, they look more than just good friends to me. Oh, Eileen, um, do us a favour. Oh, sure, I'm Mother Teresa. Bog off. Please. Look, I'll get you double time. Can I join you? Listen, I just want to say... Don't, Les. What? We've been over all this already. Yeah, but friends. Friends who can go out for a drink together. No. Why? Because that's how it all started in the first place, and I don't want it to happen again. Never. Steve, are you there? Oh, come on, I know you are. 
Alpha Delta to control zero. I'm receiving you loud and clear. Over. Yeah, right. I've got a fare for you. I'm tied up. No, you're not. Put your paper down. What paper? The one I know you're reading. No, I'm not. No. Do you want this fare or not? Go on, then. Ride it. It's Crimea Street. Can't be. Why? Because that's Richard Hillman's new development. Yeah, well, I just take the calls. I don't give them the third degree. OK. Later. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Yes, isn't it? Do you fancy it? For me, I was thinking for you. Oh, don't be daft. Oh, Mum, that's really nice honeymoon gear, that. You'd look great in it. No, I'm too old. No, you're not. You've got a young woman's figure, therefore you can wear young women's clothes. <laughs> Richard, what do you think for Mum for the honeymoon? Very nice. See, there you go. Order it. I've a lot to thank you for. Well, don't thank me. You're buying it. No, I mean, Sarah. She's really calmed down. You're a natural parent. Oh, I don't think it's that. Maybe I'm just good with people. <laughs> You're very good with people. I thought Martin were going to be difficult, but you handled him. You handled Sarah. Well, I'm just about to show some people around the flat, so let's hope I can handle them. Are you sure about this address? I told you to call at flat number two. Well, that can't be. Because this is the show flat, that's why. Oh, how many more times? I just do the switch and I wouldn't be doing that if some people had a bit more respect for their mothers. All right, all right, I'm going. Yo, Shazza, it's Kirk. When you get this, call me and I'll let you know where the air popping out, thumping action is tonight. Oh, uh, uh, hello, Mr Thomas. Is she having there? Oh, 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 right, thanks. Any luck? No, she's at Sunday school. But plenty more yet. You know what I don't understand? Why they build these big boxes for phones and people would much rather use these things? Land, innit? You are? The price of land. You know, property. How do you mean? Well, think about it. The land these boxes are on, increasing in value the old time. Good investment property. <laughs> yeah, but it's only two foot square. Yeah, but how many of them are there? Thousands, probably millions of phone boxes all over Britain. Now, when I pull them two foot squares, smart investment, that. The phone company's probably the biggest landowners in the country. Oh, why? Well, carry on phoning then. <laughs> no, 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 Steve, no. Don't go yet. Just. Just come in. Just come on, sit down. Uh, get your drink. Uh, beer. <gasps> Karen! Oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Just uh, please just stay there. I, I got your dinner. I'm sorry. Ta-da! It's your favourite. Um, two 18s, there's a 22, um, a 19, uh, and a 27 with an extra chilli sauce. Karen, calm down. You know we shouldn't be here. I know. Straight up. We'll be right, Blast. Get here for eight. Kirk! What the flaming hell's going on? Jason's birthday. What about it? We're having a party. He's not here, he's in Blackpool. No, he's not. He's down the office getting the drink with Tyrone. Is he? Yeah. Uh, surprise, eh? Is it okay? Not bad. Nope. You know, um, if we moved in here, this is what it'd always be like. What, next door to a takeaway? Oh, stop it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, what do you reckon? I reckon I'm being won over. Really? And, uh, you've still got your afters to look forward to. 
Oh, wow, what we have? Well, I'll show you. I just hope you're still hungry. We can't. Really? Well, eight bags of cheese and onion be enough? Seven. Oh, do me a favour. I was starving. Er, uh, lads. Well, don't just stand there. Get some of these beers in the fridge. No, lads, er, uh, there's been a slight problem. Problem? What problem? Me. Oh, hiya, Mum. You all right? Yeah, I'm well, thanks, now that you deign to ask. And how about yourself, Jason? Well, I hope, planning a little party. Yeah. Do you want to go out for the night? Do I what? Do I echoes like? Uh, right, we'll be off then, eh? Yeah, er, uh, bye. Uh, nice seeing you, Mrs Grimshaw. <clears throat> right. To bed. Absent friends, love. Oh, she gone off again. Honestly, you never know where you are with that one. Whoa. It's a long story. Have you made your mind up or what? It's not that easy, I said. It's not that easy. Well, it's dead simple from where I'm stood. It's either me or Gina. Nee, nee. See, how can I choose one without offending to other? You're both grand lasses. I don't want a favour either. Well, you'll have to do it sooner or later, and it's fairer doing it quick rather than stringing us both along like this, Fred. Michael! So it's been all go today, then? Oh, aye, it has a bit. <laughs> I came in earlier. I think I just missed you. Oh, aye. <laughs> right, well, I, uh, I popped in. <laughs> See anyone? <laughs> Not to speak of. <laughs> oh, there's Audrey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Was she in earlier? Uh, well, I, I can't, can't recall the... <laughs> I think I fancy some crisps. Mm. I had no idea. Not many people did. So the case went against her. She must have spent a bit in legal fees. I imagine so. They don't come cheap. Yeah, that didn't help. So she's gone back to Brighton. Mm, broke and fed up. Well, I am sorry. Are you? I am, actually. I mean, I know we weren't bosom buddies or anything, but if I'd have known what were going on, I might have been a bit more sympathetic. To bet. Bet. I was telling Rita what it was like giving birth to you. Painful. It's not half as painful as this. I haven't known where you've been. I haven't known how to contact you. Have you any idea what a worry that is? I had the faint hope that you might come home for your birthday, but your brother was right. How? He said not to get me hopes up. That's why he hasn't bothered hanging around today. I never thought. I know. There's a big universe out there, Jason, and you're the centre of it. Well, that's how kids behave, five-year-olds. I think the whole world revolves around them. A mark of growing up is when you recognise the responsibility you have to the other folk in your life, them that love you. You can't go through life treating them like they're rubbish or like they don't exist. We deserve more than that. You're right. I'm sorry. Oh, happy birthday, son. Oh, thanks, Mum. Hey. <laughs> And uh, this came for you in the post. Who's it from? Well, I recall the writing from various scribbled notes, usually apologies. My dad. No, pillock. What? It's from 18. He can't even get my birthday right. No, well, he never was very good at thinking of others, and when he did, he was usually too late. Hurts, doesn't it? Mr. and Mrs. Lorden, good to meet you. Welcome to the Ridings. Richard Hillman. Hello, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Right, well, as you can see, it's a select area and this development's been designed to complement it. The clientele are mainly young professionals who work hard and expect a home to be a reflection of that. A statement of style to complement your aspirations. If you'd like to go in. I gather from what you said on the phone, that you don't have a property to sell? No, we've just returned from Saudi. Three-year contract, so we're cash buyers. Oh, right. Well, that, uh, that saves on the paperwork, doesn't it? Uh, the show flat's just upstairs, if you'd like to follow me. Can't get over those chocolates. Yeah, nice touch, eh? Yeah, I should think so. My mum will be well into you from now on. Yeah, right. No, seriously, she was well impressed. Well, that was the point. Yeah, but spending money. What money? The money on the chocolates you bought. You never on the chocolates you nicked. That's better. My mum's eating nicked hazelnut whales. Why not? They're the best kind. <sighs> All right. Yeah. 
Is she mad? No. Oh, good. Are we off, then? Uh, no. I'm going to stay in for a bit. I haven't seen my man for ages, you know, catch up on family stuff and that. Right. Pub? Pub. Right, see ya. I might pop in later with my man. All right. See ya. Shame about the party, eh? It's the women I feel sorry for. What women? The ones I would have pulled tonight. <laughs> I think you're going to like this. Uh, the designer's put in a lot of nice touches. Uh, concealed lighting, stone and wood floors, the kitchen's fully fitted, and the bathroom has a spa bath as well as a power shower. What on earth? I'm... I, I, I'm really sorry. I, I don't know what to say. I, I'm very, very embarrassed. Hmm. I can only think that it's the, um, it's the builders. Uh, they must have had a, uh, a last-minute job. Uh, um, they've had some food and, and been called away. I see. Uh, anyway, uh, I, I hope it doesn't detract from the fundamentals of the flat. I, in fact, you could imagine that you've, uh, you've just had your, your first dinner party. <laughs> A Chinese takeaway? Uh, no, no, of course not. Um, right, well, I'll just show you the rest of the flat. Um, the master bed bedroom is just through here. Uh, fitted wardrobes, concealed lighting and en suite. <laughs>